Monday. You know what that means. It's another episode of Tales from the Dork Side. Hosted by me, yours truly, Stupenzo. Welcome. Be sure to leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. Now, without any further ado, let's get this started. Hello! What's up, guys? It's Sunday. I know you want your live streams. I am out of town. I'm in San Antonio, soaking up rays, getting drunk at a pool party, surrounded by Bettys. You know how it is. Um, been having a good weekend. Hope you guys are, too. But I thought uh, the show must go on, so instead of not doing a show, I thought I'd dust off an old show from the Facebook days, and not just any old show. I'm talking about the very first dork side tales from the dork side prime this is from january 20th 2020 just a couple months before the uh unknown origin virus of unspecified uh creation right that one uh how naive we were this is a month after rise of skywalker came came out and uh thought me and a couple homies should test out Streamyard for the very first time and just do a big old group chat and it was uh, f- almost five hours long so I'm uploading it right now it's a premiere feel free to leave some comments in the chat and uh, yeah it should be done by the time Gucci's show is over so uh, that being said glad you guys are here um, feel free to watch this at your own convenience uh, and yeah I'll see y'all next week for sure and uh, of course this Wednesday uh, we've got a very special uh, we watch Brain Scan featuring myself and Sammy Three Pete, who is not on this episode, by the way. You're going to see a bunch of unfamiliar faces. So, also, I'm apologizing for having a crappy mic, having crappy camera. Uh, you're going to notice the production quality has uh, improved greatly in the past four plus years. So, yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, see you all soon and have a great week. Now, let's see how little and how much has changed. Uh, the past four years and eight months. <laughs> oh, that was easy. Bang. Oh, okay. All right. Ooh, I get it. I get it now. Let's see here. Uh, let's share this link. Let's go over here. Oh, hmm. Well, I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I wanted to have people come in here and talk about Star Wars, uh, or you can listen to me rant about it. I don't know what you prefer, but. Basically, I've had some serious issues with Star Wars for the past several years. Disney Star Wars, it's really bad. I think it's really bad. And I'd rather do something like this, film this, talk about all the things. Because it's, it's a pretty big list of problems. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a, a good part of the evening to talk about everything. So I feel rather than discussing this over and over and over with people or repeating these stories or picking up these this conversation from when we left last uh you know i'd rather just get it all out so it's been a month it's been about a month since star wars came out um yeah i think it's time we have gone through the grieving process the shock has worn off uh the 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 box office is kind of painting a solid picture here um and uh i would say uh i think it's time to get it all off the chest um you know i got a lot on my chest so does dolly parton uh so if anyone wants to you know write a comment 
or join in, feel free. There should be a link. It should be a simple click here. Uh, sign in with Facebook. Allow your camera to turn on. And that should be it. Um, I wanted to do uh, StreamYard. I'm trying the StreamYard software because apparently, you know, you can have other people join in the chat if you are on an iPhone or uh, if you download some third-party software. And it seems it's StreamYard right here. I guess right there, StreamYard. It seems to be the best way to get anyone in. So uh, basically, I mean, where to begin? I mean, we can just talk specifically about Rise of Skywalker for now and why that was a terrible movie. Um, I would say right off the bat that I definitely hated The Last Jedi more. The Last Jedi broke the entire billion-dollar franchise. Um, Ryan Johnson single-handedly destroyed one of the most valuable American intellectual properties of all time. And that is impressive. That's very impressive. In, in only two and a half hours, he did it. Now, I know Kathleen Kennedy, she's the one who basically, you know, George Lucas thought about selling Star Wars to Fox. And then they decided to sell it to Disney for, um, I believe it was four point something billion dollars. Uh, since then, they put Kathleen Kennedy in charge of that property, kind of like how Kevin Feig was in charge of the Marvel movies. Um, and you know, it's, I can't believe the same studio brought, made both of these movie franchises because on one side you have Marvel, which, you know, love them or hate them. All those movies are very consistent and they all have been making a lot of money and, you know, the most money, basically Marvel Avengers Endgame was quite a spectacle. And, uh, even though the last two Avengers movies were not I wouldn't even call them movies. I would agree with Martin Scorsese. They're more like theme park rides. They don't have your standard uh, beginning, middle, and end, your standard three act. They just, you know, we've, we've already established all these characters long ago, so we're just going to throw you right in the thick of it. Uh, it's kind of like X-Men 2, like X Spider-Man 2. All these sequels are great. The first movie is usually the roughest because you got to introduce everybody, explain how the powers work. Um <laughs> But, uh, yeah, obviously there was a plan with Marvel. Obviously they had a, uh, a grand vision. They had everything figured out from the beginning, more or less. They also had so much material to draw from. Uh, there's so many comic books. Um, and, you know, unfortunately it seems like they're already kind of moving on to uh, the new stuff rather than keep on dwelling on the old stuff, the Captain America and the – you know, Iron Man, all those comics, those guys are gone now. I don't know. We'll see what they do. But for the most part, those 20-something movies, Avengers Endgame, that's something, you know, no other studio did that. And uh, Disney also put Kathleen Kennedy in charge of Star Wars, and it's the exact opposite. There's no, there's absolutely uh, no vision at all. It was all kind of just made up. Uh Where's R-E-D? Oh. Take two shots. Oh, my God. We're getting comments here. I'm, uh, how do I see these comments live in the stream? Hmm. Let's see here. Uh, learn more. Uh, Facebook page, blah, blah, blah. Group, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to look into this uh, other window. Uh. Well, yeah, Knives Out is also terrible. Yes, I'd agree. I wouldn't say it's as bad. I mean, all of his movies are very pretentious, Ryan Johnson. Uh, we got the Bean Lord in here. <laughs> Let's, uh, let me, uh, I'll get Bean Lord in here in a second. We actually have a guest coming. All right, cool. Uh, this will get interesting, hopefully. Hopefully, I can never leave my house again. That's the goal, is to just have talks with people about movies and have some beverages and just do it from here. That would be awesome. But yeah, uh, as far as the whole thing I was saying about Kathleen Kennedy and Star Wars, it's just like there's no vision at all, and it, it just really is so obvious. And people are giving it, you know, getting, uh, you know, letting it, uh, letting it go. Okay, well let's see here. We got a couple. We got oh, let's get Bean Lord in here. Uh, Bean Lord, I think you're muted. Uh, 
is there you might have a way there's there should be a little button here at the bottom of your screen that allows you to unmute it uh but i guess uh we could just leave the beans in uh let's see if uh, zach is this working yo yo that was pretty easy to join right can you hear me yeah i can hear you oh it's high yeah it wasn't that bad yeah there's no delay or nothing it's pretty good what's up with the bean guy I don't know. I, I, let's just keep it here. I, I'm down with it. Uh, it's some muted bean it was Somebody inside of my kitchen, but I looked in my kitchen. And it's not. I here, assume so. it's Brit in his room. Oh, he might be. <laughs> yeah, he might be in his room. Yeah, yeah he's baiting, uh, baiting and watching beans. Hey, Vince is here. We got an all-star. Oh. We already got some heavy hitters in here. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to talk more about Star Wars <laughs> all night, basically. That's good. I'm in the um, middle of a. Oh, I'm in the middle of a band meeting, but I had to join for a second. Yeah, you can just say something and then come back in and out. You know, you don't need to be here all the whole <laughs> evening. Uh, You're gonna be going yeah. all night. I mean, I'll go as long as it takes. Basically, uh, let me let Rex outside real quick. Star Wars dog. Look, my it's my twins. Twins, twins though. Twins though. Star Wars. Oh man, I just hated who. Who am I talking to? Oh, it's your brother. <laughs> and, uh, you got lol. Yeah, is uh, your brother. Is your brother in the band now too? Yeah, yeah he's in. I am the band. What's up, everybody? Everybody is all. We only got three people watching, and I think it's you two. And uh, <laughs> well, I'm not watching on Facebook. Okay. Wow. Well. Well, know. you know, it's one of those things where it'll be here forever for solidarity. So from now on, when I go to parties and people say, "Hey, you hated Star Wars," I can just like send them this link. Just be like, Watch <laughs> yeah, this. There you go. So I don't have to just keep. T Every time I run into Dominic, I keep like. Let's let's pick it up where we left off. You know? You're gonna have to annotate the uh, video though, like timestamp it so you, you can like highlight certain points that you make. Yeah, if I make any. Yeah, you know, true. Maybe maybe I'll come in here and by the end of the stream I'll be a, a believer that these movies were good. Maybe some people will come in and. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. It's all of trade, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you you liked it, right? You thought it was okay. I thought it was fine. It is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's basically where we're at. We're Show him himself. Kick him. No, it's fine. That was good. But yeah, as far as uh, Bean Lord, can you film the can of beans from your camera too? Can you find the can of beans? <laughs> yeah. we'll get double beans in here <laughs> should we get some hot double bean action yeah let's film the guy filming the beans oh dude it's like inception oh you can see my face if you move it a little bit to the left and then there's a delay oh, oh. all right oh feedback loop <laughs> i know all right um yeah, basically, what I was gonna say is, it seems like um, you know the the average layman who is not too involved in Star Wars would like Star Wars. Hold up, I'm muting this. There we go. Yeah, I kind of like the God voice, but it was fine. Um, <laughs> as far as as far as yeah, like your average moviegoer, your average general audience member, I feel like they would like these sequel movies. Definitely more than the prequels. The prequels were weird and boring. I but, thought it uh, was. Uh, who is that? That's Beans. Oh, I mean, even Steven. Oh, okay, I never watched <laughs> that show. Um, I thought it was better than eight, but that's not saying a lot. But that's I mean, an improvement. At least it wasn't worse, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, it is it is a worse movie. It is a worse movie. There are way more problems with it. There are way more um, inconsistencies and plot holes. But it's coming from a place of, um, you know, The Last Jedi feels like it was made by someone who hated Star Wars and doesn't really like the fan base and just kind of wanted to just be a dick. This new one feels like it was made by a fucking corporation, by a whole, by a board meeting. <laughs> oh, man, we got double beans. <laughs> But the thing is, 
there's even though there are more errors in this movie and it's technically a worse movie, um, it comes from a place of just trying to pick up the pieces of the last one. What do you mean, like, like light speed skipping? Light speed sp skipping has a lot of issues, man. That's the thing, is like if you're into the Star Wars lore, if you're aware of the um, the way the force works and the way all of this stuff works and the world building, um, it's it really it makes no sense. This whole trilogy is so bizarre. And also in terms of like what do we uh, what do we get from what do we get from this story? Like, what was the purpose of the story? What were they trying to tell? It, you know, what were, what, I, it's just such a weird, such a weird, weird, weird situation. Because it's like, how do you fumble it so bad? Uh, but basically, the new one is. Uh, well, we're getting more people in here. But nice. the thing is, this none of the other eight Star Wars films had Babu Frick. Yeah, Babu Frick is. Uh, I think we both agreed uh, <laughs> that um, Babu Frick was. Did he the save the movie? Could he have saved the movie if he was in it more? I feel like they could have easily overused him. Uh, but Babu Frick is great because he reminds me of uh, little Yoda, not baby Yoda, but actual Yoda. Uh, Yoda was the whole point about Star Wars: the Force. You don't need to be this big, strong, superimposing uh, warrior to have the Force and to be powerful with the Force. And Yoda kind of challenges your preconceived notions of what a, a great warrior should look like. Meanwhile, Babu Frick is also the same thing. Like, I think a tiny little, a little guy like this big could have very, very advantageous with being a droid operator. He can get in those little nits and crannies and use tiny little screwdrivers. And it seemed like it made sense that he was very little. But yeah, I just love I like him. That weird little shit. He's just such a <laughs> <laughs> and hey, like my oldest and, friend. Yeah, him and C three PO were the best part of the of the movie, which is sad. Seriously, like as great as they were, C fucking three PO should not be the best part of a Star Wars movie. We got Do you think uh, that they should have killed Chewbacca. Uh, I mean, at that point, I mean, I feel like, I mean, the main three are all dead. They all got killed by the new one. So I, I don't know, you know, I don't understand the point of murdering all of them. Leia, Luke, and Han, all dead. And I don't understand what, <laughs> you know, killing Chewbacca would just be uh, rude at that, like overkill at that point, for, you know, for lack of a better word. But here, we got Max in here. Max is coming in all the way from California. I'm here. I gotta put my mask on. Oh, yeah, so that no. Nobody knows who I am. Oh <laughs> shit! I was about to say your whole full name. <laughs> That's me, Dan. And I dox your and I dox your your location. So, oh well, somewhere <laughs> we in Mexico. Got another can of beans in here. So we've got three cans of beans and three <laughs> three people chatting about Star Wars. Max, did you wow, watch Star Wars? How many people can join this? Yes. This yeah, kind of so this is why I wanted to do the StreamYard stuff because a anyone can join from any device, and you don't have to download some app. Because I tried this Be Live thing, but you actually have to install the app on your thing. And no, no, no. So yeah, this is actually pretty easy. Man. I'm hoping we can only get five guests max, so it's six people total. Oh, but damn. if if more people start joining, I'll just kick these cans of beans. <laughs> yeah. um, kick the cans, everybody. Uh, what uh, you saw the movie, Max? I guess everyone saw it, right? Yes. Uh, wh which one are we talking good. about again? A New Hope? We're talking about Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> the Star Disney Star Wars franchise. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess, unfortunately, I have to click back and forth to the um, my Facebook page to actually read some of these comments as they're coming in because it's not coming in on the stream properly. Read them on uh, your phone. Oh, I guess I could view them on my phone. That's actually a good call. Um so, very smart. So a few things on the uh, the new Star Wars movie, and yeah, uh, what's you're, uh, you're a little emotional on that one, and uh, and that's okay. Yeah, but I <laughs> I will say that I thought it was pretty good. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, how how invested are you in the original Star Wars movies? Extremely invested, and I do think that those ones are better from a story standpoint, and I do think that a lot of the more recent Star Wars movies after the episode one, two, and three came out, have just been rinse and repeat of the same storyline as the other ones. Do you like the prequels better than the new ones? Mm. It's a tough call. <laughs> Dude, that is a tough call. The fact that it's a tough call is bad, right? It should be obvious the prequels are shit, but 
<laughs> the problem the problem is the prequels as as boring and incoherent as they are and just overkill with the visual effects and just um, over reliance on special effects um at least they came from george lucas and he had a vision the whole story is basically the bureaucracy of the galactic empire causes senator palpatine to become a tyrant and Luke Sky or uh, Anakin Skywalker becomes Darth Vader. I feel like the whole Darth Vader thing should have been a much smaller aspect of it. But yeah, I mean those movies are so bad. They're fucking Episode Two is one of the worst movies ever made. Dude, I and, just watched Episode Two recently and I forgot okay. how bad it was. Dude, dude uh, it's so George much like stupid shit. politics oh. shit. That no on the What's going on, y'all? All right. What I miss? Yeah. We're talking about how um, George Lucas. <laughs> Someone's echoing. I think it's uh, <laughs> the background. Mute your mic. Someone's mute on your phone. It's pick up the feedback off your phone. Uh, yeah, if you sometimes you mute headphones, but it doesn't seem to be right, echoing. Mute your mic on your phone. Oh, he left. He'll come back though. But anyway, I was gonna say the whole point about episode two is George Lucas does not understand women at all. Um, he he thinks that just telling a girl that you hate sand is enough to get her to fall in love with you, especially when you spent the previous like day and a half just bitching about your boss, uh, whining to her about your job, about basically everything, talking back, back to her. Uh, she's keep in mind, keep in mind, she's a um, like a senator, and you are her chaperone slash bodyguard. Uh, you're not impressing her, but apparently you are. Apparently because. Luke Sky, uh, Anakin Skywalker and uh, Padme are not allowed to be in love. They are now going to be in love because it's like some Romeo and Juliet thing. But uh, it's so bizarre because logic of, and physics just totally go out of the window in this, those prequels. What I was mean, dumber, their relationship or Rey and Kylo kissing at the end of the movie? Rey and Kylo was... Uh, Absolutely flabbergasting. The problem is it like how <laughs> like you can see how someone that sat it. next to you the first time you saw that moment. That was totally worth the experience of going to that movie with you and yeah. listening to you audibly groan over and yeah, over. Yeah, I remember at one point I remember at one point I like slapped my face like this and put my head down in my mouth. Like it was it was bad. I think that was the part where she said her last name was Skywalker. I was like, oh, oh my yeah. god. Yeah, that it's, was it's, it's there's a lot there's a, there's just so much to talk about with that movie. Um, but we'll talk about the the general strokes first. I mean, what was My worse? Ray... It, his favorite part was when uh, Luke grabbed the saber. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. There's wait, a, part? No, yeah. Oh oh, where no no. His favorite part was where uh, she reached behind her back and handed Kylo the saber. So I actually and, didn't mind that. And the galactic. The teleporting thing was interesting, but it's just there's a lot, you know. I I didn't mind that as much. I did hate it when Luke Skywalker physically catches the lightsaber and then comes <laughs> out and says, uh, "A Jedi should never uh, disrespect his weapon like that," or whatever he says. <sighs> because a huge problem with the original was, uh, or Episode Eight, huge problem with Episode Eight was uh, Luke Skywalker throwing that lightsaber in such a like goofy manner just yeah. so out of character like i said like everyone said everyone said if you if you just grabbed the lightsaber and just kind of dropped it that would have been so much better but the fact that luke skywalker is just gonna kind of eh, you know in episode eight is just like i said it comes from a place of hatred you know that's why it's worse even though episode nine has way more problems i feel like, I should like for instance it. ray and, and and kylo kissing that is rough because you're appealing to a very toxic fan base, the Raylos. I don't know if you're familiar. I don't know if you're familiar with the Raylos, but there's a whole subsection of fans, and it's basically like they're trying to attract these Twilight style fans, who you know I don't understand why. Um, like you, or you're not a Twilight guy? Not really. No, I uh, <laughs> I've seen them. They're bad. Uh, that little freaky animatronic baby in the third final movie is a sight to behold. Let's get down to the real stuff. Are we team Edward or Jacob? Are we what? Team Edward or Jacob? Is that the, the name? On Twilight? It's been a little while. I'm I would say I'm team Edward at this point because Robert Pattinson <laughs> has gone off to make really good movies. Uh, he was oh, in that movie. Oh, time. 
a couple years ago that was awesome. And then he was also in uh, The Lighthouse recently, which was really good. He was uh, also in um, some weird David Cronenberg movie a few years ago. He's the, he's the one that's actually making some good stuff, apparently. That little so Jacob is, is the peak what? of uh, Star Wars, the third trilogy, when Luke squeezes the titty milk out of that alien? Ooh. Uh, yeah, I mean, that pretty much that whole scene when you meet Luke Skywalker and find out <laughs> he's totally gone bitch made. And um, like the idea that he would abandon his family and his friends in a time of need and uh, totally cut himself off from the force. It's just so out of character, and it's like you would have to have a really good reason to do so, you know. But uh, he was extremely senile through that whole entire process, too. Okay, let's see here, dude. What about uh, how Ray just masters the force? I got to get into this one now. Yeah, I mean that's the biggest problem with the whole trilogy is. Um, All right, I got to sign off, Enzo. All right, man. Yeah, come back later later if you want. yeah, I think the biggest problem with the uh, trilogy is Ray being so overpowered. And the reason is uh, it's it's just a total lack of awareness on what would make – because the idea is it is – dre- the agenda is get more female viewers. We want – when you look at your typical Star Wars fan demographic, it's, it's a lot of dudes for sure. And I know plenty of girls who just have not seen Star Wars and really don't have – uh, a reason a reason to watch star wars but you know trying to appeal to the female demographic is something that you know this these disney movies are trying to do and they failed really badly because apparently making your main protagonist a female and extremely overpowered and extremely like no she has no hardships whatsoever she doesn't have anything wrong go with her everyone likes her it's just not entertaining. And um, the problem is, if you call it out for being what it is, it's a Mary Sue. Uh, you know, you get, you know, that apparently you're you're wrong if, if, if Ray is a Mary Sue. And this last movie just really throws that argument right out the window. She's absolutely 100% uh, Mary Sue. And, and a Mary Sue is basically an, an old literary uh, screenwriting term. And it's from... It comes from Star Wars or Star Trek fan fiction back in the 60s and 70s. You know, people would write uh fan fiction and one of the big tropes of a beginner novice writer um one of the big problems that a lot of them do is they write these self-insertion characters which are basically they imagine themselves in the for in the in the lore and rather than like i would imagine myself join the enterprise and all of a sudden i'm the best at everything i show up i show i show uh picard how to lead i show warp how to how to fight I show data, you know, new new uh, calculations he's never heard of, uh, and I just keep getting – everyone loves me, and that's basically what these Mary Sue characters do, and they say the day at the end, and it's just really boring. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of these things where people enjoy conflict. Oh, you doxed yourself, Max. Oh, shit. <laughs> you can turn your camera off if you want. No. <laughs> As far as why she's so powerful, they really don't explain it. And it's funny because there would be a simple reason to fix it. All you would have to do is instead of Ray in The Force Awakens, she's waiting for her parents. She's been orphaned by her parents. It should have been like she's waiting for the Jedi Master that, that adopted her. You know, like she was raised by a Jedi Master. That's all you would need to know. And that would explain some of why she's so powerful. But also it could give this mystery to like who trained her. And then you can find out at the end, maybe it was like Snoke or Palpatine or someone evil. And, you know, and the other thing is the fact that she's so powerful would have made her a much more compelling villain. Because if she basically like woulda, coulda, shoulda, I think one of the better things to do with the new trilogy would have been if you had made Finn the central protagonist because he's the stormtrooper, he's the deflector, and you have him go where he finds out he's force sensitive. And he, at first, tries to fight Kylo Ren with that lightsaber, gets his ass whooped. Ray easily defeats him. And Ray beats his ass every time, like in the movies. It's so, it's not, there's no question if she's going to win. But it would have been so much more interesting at the end of Last Jedi, she just turned sides. She had killed Kylo Ren and became the new villain. And now Finn has to, you know, that would have been uh, very um, uh, interesting. But... It just goes against what Kathleen Kennedy was trying to do, which was like basically appease to female viewers by having this kind of Barbie doll style 
female character, uh, Ray, just like Bella from Twilight, she's very bland, very easy to project your own personality onto her. And it's very easy to, um, you know, just kind of, you know, you want to be her because she's so badass at everything. But there's no lessons to learn at all in these movies. The original movies are all about growing up, accepting responsibility, uh, facing, uh, you know, getting out of your comfort zone. Those whole, there's, you know, that's what all these, all movies, all stories, that, you know, pretty much tell like five or six stories. And I'll probably visit into um, how Leia becomes a Jedi as well towards the end. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. you know, she wasn't very Jedi ish in the, uh, in a new hope. That's oh, what we call a, a retcon where, you know, at the beginning of force awakens, we don't have any kind of, and the thing is in some of the books, like the books that she does become, she does train as a Jedi, but the idea that she would become a better <coughs> uh, trainer than Luke, like it would have been interesting to see force ghost, force ghost Luke training gray instead of yeah. um, Leia. And the thing is Leia, sure. She can, the idea is it doesn't really matter because by the, by the rise of Skywalker, she's already so powerful. Like, what point does she even need to train? Like, when yeah. she's training, it's actually, because the thing is, they do show a training montage in Rise of Skywalker because a big complaint is she doesn't train. How does she have so much proficient skill in the Force when we've been demonstrated yeah. that not only does it take a lot of training to master the Force, but when you do these Force maneuvers, like floating things, and and it takes a lot out of you physically. It's, it's literally uh, hard to do. But... The idea that you're gonna um, take Ray, and you know she's she's training, yeah, but she's like she's blindfolded, she's like <laughs> on a log and she's shooting, shooting uh, lasers. I think it's very funny that when she cuts down that tree, the tree falls on BB-8, yeah, and then she's trying to physically lift up the tree. It's like you have you were just floating all these rocks and shit with your mind, like just lift it with your force. I don't a lot of a lot of problems like that throughout the movie. Tons of inconsistencies where they set up these rules but then immediately disregard them. Um, and a lot of it, I think one of the big reasons why I do like Rise of Skywalker more than Last Jedi is Rise of Skywalker literally does give the finger to Last Jedi several times. Um, this idea that the holdover the hold maneuver is a one in a million type thing. Uh, the idea that uh, a, a Jedi should always respect his lightsaber. That's something that... Uh, is a is a fu to the light last uh the last jedi ryan johnson man and like austin was saying in the chat uh knives out was meh it was it was pretty i mean i liked it all right i thought it was okay i didn't think it was terrible but the problem with ryan johnson is he's been quoted saying that his he'd rather make a movie that that um, divides an audience he'd rather make a movie that half of them love it half of them hate it uh, because that's like his idea of a good movie an interesting movie and it's like that's fine but you don't do that shit for star wars especially the middle movie of a of a planned trilogy uh the problem with the last jedi is it sets up so many it sets it's it resolves so many issues so many conundrums without uh replacing them with others so by the time the next one's coming around we don't even know what's at stake really we don't even really know where our characters are in this uh war and it's just so um, you know, like I said, there's just no world building whatsoever. Yeah, just I don't like understand. The like, there's what's the actual continuity between the movies besides like Kylo Ren? You know, yeah, it's just well, it's saying, I don't know. Well, it's interesting because the uh, the Last Jedi is all the all the Star Wars movies take place a few years later. You know, there's usually several years or maybe a couple years or one year a gap between each movie, except the Last Jedi. It picks up right where. Force Awakens uh, uh, leaves off, and yet somehow in that time, the 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 they they don't really explain how the First Order becomes so powerful. They basically become the new Galactic Empire, um, even though the whole point is the Galactic Empire is defeated by the Rebellion. The Rebellion becomes the Republic. Now it's thirty years later. Um, how is the First Order so huge? How is the First Order? Where do they get these resources? Got to you know the, uh, those acolyte homies out there chanting whenever they uh you know whenever they brought back yeah. Palpatine. What's been those homies? It's the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Bohemian Grove of Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> People in the chat calling us nerds, saying their new uh, nicknames are Bean Lord. Uh, uh, Paul Chris Paul Cortoza. I think with Lucas helming 
at, uh, at least he brought in an element of old classic movies. Yeah, the new writers are leaning too heavily on the current Marvel technology. Yeah, dude, the last, the, the fucking new one, Rise of Skywalker, with the big Avengers Endgame assemble. Remember in Avengers, uh, Avengers Endgame, when all the Avengers show up from all the movies, you're like, Jesus Christ, this is insane, this is amazing. Um, when all the ships show up at the end of Rise of Skywalker, everyone's kind of like, what? Who, who are, where has this come from? What? I, I, you feel nothing, really. It does. It feels unearned. Um, and it's just so funny because, like, just a few seconds ago, Poe is mourning the death of that fat dude, and all of his friends are dying. And then suddenly, it's like, oh, the ships are here. We're saved. How about you should be like, yeah, watch out. Thanks for coming, but be careful. Everyone's dying. Um, and it's yeah. just that whole last battle so dumb. You're telling me the ships. Okay, so let's get let's break it down. Uh, Palpatine's alive. How is he alive? It doesn't matter. It's the Force. Is he a clone? Is he surviving? Did he survive the Death Star explosion? It, it really isn't answered. Then on top of that, he's on Exegol. He has an entire fleet of hundreds of thousands of Battle Stars destroyers, which, you know, in turn have hundreds of thousands of crew members in each one. They're, they're underground. How are they built? Like, is it is he manifesting it with the Force? He basically pulls them out of the ground, has them do this, and then they spend the whole movie just floating in the atmosphere. And then they make it a point to say, "Okay, so when they're in the atmosphere, the ships have no, uh, they have no shields." Okay, that's that's fortunate. When the ships are in the atmosphere, they need a, a beacon to tell them to go up. They need yeah. they need help to go up. It's like, how about you just go? The whole point of the fight is destroy this beacon so the ships can't go up, and then you shoot them in the uh, Death Star cannon, and then the ship blows up. And it's just so dumb because now you put Death Star cannons on the battle star, <laughs> on the battle star ships. Like, what happens if someone steals one of those? What happens if you lose one? You know, it's a fucking Death Star cannon on that thing. Just one of those is is enough to. Well, and, why is there no redundancy? You can just take out this whole fucking lethal fleet with one attempt, you know? Like, yeah. you don't have a spare oh, key, bro? Come on. With horses! You could take out one of these ships with some horses! I mean, like, that's a very valid point because every single movie, there's a stolen shuttle in every single movie. It's like the whole premise oh, of it. Well, yeah, it's like, a, it's like nuclear warheads. Like, <laughs> what do we do if a bad guy gets a hold of this? You have to have contingency plans for this. Uh, and that's the whole thing about what the Death Star represented. It represented like the atom bomb. But the idea is the Death Star needed to be the size of the moon in order to have such a huge weapon. The idea that you can just like add an attachment to your standard ship. Like, what do we? What's next? Like, X wings have Death Stars on them, and fucking handgun has a Death Star on it. You just blow up the planet with your pistol. Like, it's just stupid. And the problem is, you've raised the stakes so high that they've just like collapsed on themselves, and now there's just really no no point about it or like uh, what's the point of like destroying a shit ton of planets like you that's no exactly crazy. like what's the end game in the originals the galactic empire wants to control the universe and they blow up alderaan to just kind of send a message like don't fuck with us but the idea that you're going to blow up all these planets with all these resources and all these like isn't it easier to just control them and i guess the idea is like we're going to basically station a, a cruiser outside of every planet and if you fucking get out of line, we're going to blow up your planet. It's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's just uh, some porn and dank memes. And they'll yeah. do whatever. Well, come on. I, at this point, just live on your ship in outer space. Like, don't even, like, living on a planet, it's a death sentence, you know? You just constantly have this axe hanging over your head. But, yeah, what is the Emperor trying to do other than just be evil? Like, in the new, in the old ones, it's about having this galactic empire under control it's about, you know, no no opposition. But in this new one, it just seems like the plan is to rain terror and death on everybody because it's evil and it's super strange. I don't, you know. <laughs> um, but anybody joining in watching, if you want to join in the chat, you can. If you want to leave some comments, I'm trying to read some. I know, um, uh, yeah, Austin was saying Knives Out was terrible. Um, I thought it was meh, meh. Uh, that's the thing, though, is is Ryan Johnson's capable of making a pretty decent movie, but like I said, he wants to make a divisive movie, and that's why Last Jedi was worse, because it just came off as like, oh, you want Luke Skywalker to be Luke Skywalker? Well, <laughs> thank you. Like, we're going to turn him into a, you know, Jake Skywalker. That's what Mark Hamill calls him. Mark Hamill was so vocal and so trying to warn us, because 
the thing is, The Force Awakens was a decent film. We all, we all left The Force Awakens like, hey, I can't wait for the next one. That was, even though it was a soft reboot, but l- knowing where it leads, it just kind of, you realize it, uh, it, it, was, it was all for bullshit. <laughs> and like I said earlier, like I was saying, the thing is, you're trying to get female audiences involved Rather than having their boyfriends drag them to these movies, they want you know women to want to see these Star Wars movies. So they think putting Ray in in the Star Wars movies, they think having uh, that other girl, Ursa Minor, what her name was in Rogue One. Um, it seems like audience members don't care about that. Well, you know what the girls do like? They fucking like Baby Yoda. They want they want so much Baby Yoda stuff, and it's just hilarious because that's all you had to do the whole time is just make some cute aliens <laughs> and. Uh, as far as the Mandalorian in general, oh, just it's, aliens, man, come on, dude. I mean, everyone loves Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda is the first thing in any of these Disney Star Wars movies that feels like Star Wars because everyone likes it. Everyone wants more of it. Everyone's interested in it. Um, it's just one of those great designs. It's just one of those. It's so interesting. And the Mandalorian itself is just a great example of less is more. But even then, like, I feel like the new Star Wars trilogy has just been like straight member berry. And like yeah. I kind of feel the same way with Baby Yoda. Like they're just using oh, yeah. that card, you know. Like, well, oh, they, just make fucking Yoda cute. Boom. Well, the thing about Baby Yoda is he is an infant, and the idea is, you know, again, it's like we want female viewers. Well, it seems like the female viewers are resonating more with the Mandalorian because he's like this big, tough, gruff, soft, like, you know, hardly speaks man with no face, man with no name type bounty hunter. He's rugged and hard. But the idea of seeing him want to take care of this little baby, that like that makes, you know, men and women see that. They're like, this is cool. I like this. But the idea about baby Yoda, you know, he could have been any kind of infant. I guess the idea is it's a it's an infant. It's absolutely helpless. But yeah, making it a baby Yoda, he's super cute. And it is like it it's like it would be interesting. It's all about what they do with it. Like, where does Yoda come from? What is he? Like they're about to answer some big questions, and it's easy to fuck it up because the best characters are mysterious. You know, Boba Fett, Wolverine. Uh, these characters are great because you don't know anything about them and you kind of just imagine where they're from. But when you start explaining it, like fucking Wolverine, Wolverine Origins, his real name is James and he was a fucking, you know, lumberjack and he had a yeah, sickly he was disease. A drunk piece of shit. Left yeah. his baby, you know. This- yeah, it just kind of ruins it. Unless it's a really good story. You know, very rare does a prequel you know is a prequel necessary and very rare is a prequel like better than the original it's 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 hard to do because also like it's the same thing with this fucking solo movie there's a part where they're trying to like make us think that Chewie's about to die falling off a train which is funny because it's like why the hell are they on a train anyway the idea is that the galactic empire uses these trains they have these fucking spaceships you know they can move whatever they want with a spaceship but anyway they're on a train and you think Chewie's gonna die and it's like he's not gonna die he's alive for another 70 years or whatever like <laughs> he's basically invincible but then of course they kill all the other you meet all these characters just so they can all be killed off in a few minutes uh, later in a scene but as far as um you know solo wasn't great um han solo was kind of a mary sue too a gary stew or whatever they call him it's just like he does everything great <laughs> they don't explain they don't explain how he's such a good pilot they don't explain why he's so good at these uh gambling games or um you know why it's just he's just so good at everything, and it's just kind of boring. Um, can, I like. Can we visit um, Benicio del Toro's character in Rogue One? I thought. That yeah, was nice. um, I thought his character was fine, except for the fact that his whole message to Finn was like, you know, there are good guys and there are bad guys, and it's all it's like war is hell, and it's like yeah, we we know that's how real war is, but Star Wars is a lot simpler than that. Star Wars is good, evil. Rebellion, Empire, uh, the Force, the Sith, like the Jedi, the Sith. It's it, it, you know, and when you get uh, with the gray areas, moral conundrums, it's like okay, you can get real interesting with it if you want, uh, but the idea is <laughs> you don't want it, comedian. huh? He's just trying like an imitation of the comedian from Watchmen, you know? Mm. Yeah, and also the fact that he's like you know backstabbing everybody and he breaks out every and also is he actually the, the thing about Benicio del Toro character is he's not even the one they're looking for because they're looking for a guy with this flower thing they actually show him I think 
And then they're in jail with him, and he luckily just busts them out and helps them do this thing. And then he betrays them, and he's got this, like, interesting, like, snake hiss stutter thing he does, which I guess makes him quirky. But the problem is it's just like, you know, you have these great actors, and you just make them do shit. Uh, you just, I, I, you know, Ryan Johnson, he was, he said first thing, like, I want to work with Adam Driver. The first thing we're going to do is get that mask off his head and so he doesn't have the mask. He needed that mask big time because when I watched The Force Awakens, the first one, I'll never forget this. When Hans, like Kylo Ren shows up, it's a great entrance. He's he's intimidating. He's scary. He's got this cool voice and this cool look. And then later he takes off his mask. And I'm not even joking. The four or five kids sitting right in front of me just started laughing. <laughs> not even like snickering, like full blown, like <laughs> at his face. Because he just looks, you know, he doesn't look threatening. He looks like a nerd. He looks like a dork or something. I don't know. <laughs> But it Maybe was interesting. For yeah, I mean, it was interesting seeing a bad guy who was um, rambunctious and didn't control his emotions and was, uh, you know, that was interesting. But, of course, like, Last Jedi just fucked up everything. It really did. And uh, as far as The Rise of Skywalker goes, it was just picking up the pieces. But the problem with The Rise of Skywalker is it felt like it was made by – by a, uh, a a board meeting, you know, it feels like it was made by a corporation. It was manufactured the film, and everything about it is just like it's either member berries or trying to retcon problems with the Last Jedi, or just trying to appease to everybody. Like they want they want the women to like it, they want the Chinese to like it. The Chinese are not; they don't care about this new Star Wars movie. They're doing terrible. <laughs> And, you know, this new one, it's been a month. The movie's barely made a billion dollars. Like, all of these Star Wars movies are making less and less money, which is terrible. And a billion dollars sounds like a lot. But when you're saying you have a billion dollar disappointment, like, that's it's unbelievable how you can mess it up that bad. <clears throat> it's just like when you, you know, you're going to mess up Superman three times in a row. You have so yeah. much source material to draw from. And this idea that you're going to... Just ignore it and think you can come up with something better. And then when everyone, the fans are telling you it's shit, what are you doing? You just ignore them. You tell them that they're all being toxic man babies. They're being sexist. You don't like Ray because she's a woman. It's like, I'm fine with a woman. The problem, like if Rose, here's the thing, Rose Tico, Kelly Marie Tran. She's a lovely Asian actress. If she had played the Hux character, that, you know, second in command evil person, like that would have not changed anything. That would have made yeah. like Huck would have still been an interesting character, yeah. um, no matter who played her. You know, it's the problem is Rose Tico is a, is a shit character. She's she's unfortunately just extremely grating, um, and you know the idea that she's going to sabotage Finn from sacrificing himself and make this ridiculous statement that we're gonna you know saving the things we love is what's gonna win the war, as as the fucking Death Star cannon blowing up their rebel base and all their friends are about to die uh there's just you know there's just so much and poor kelly marie tran this idea that she was like bullied off social networks because <laughs> of toxic fans that has not once been proven in fact most people are pretty sure that she was uh, told to get off social media because of the nda because you're forced to sign all these really strict ndas and the thing is, they've been constantly interviewing her, asking her about the bullies and stuff. And every time they talk, they ask her about it, she either breezes over the question or she talks about how much pressure it is because of the casting. Because of the casting, the people in Hollywood are their actual racists and stuff. And, you know, she wrote this big co-op piece about how um, she felt, uh, you know, kind of hurt about how she was cast specifically because of, of her... Uh, gender and her nationality and it's just one of those things where like the news runs with that and spins it that like this is confirmation that she was bullied off social network and it's like i you know i don't know a single person that hates that actress um rose tico is definitely a area of contempt for fans like i said just because she's a a boring and the thing with these new movies is you're introducing too many characters and you're not doing anything with them by the end of yeah, Rise of Skywalker, by Rise of Skywalker, it's like, who are all these people, and really, what have they done in this movie? Like, what are, you know, besides Rey and C-3PO, and, like, Finn does nothing in that whole movie. He, I, he almost sacrifices himself. He blows up that tower. But it's like, realistically, um, 
they could have done so much with Finn as a detractor, as the person who left the storm troopers, as a person who had knowledge of the inner workings of the empire or the first order or whatever. But instead it turns out, Oh no, he's actually just a janitor and he doesn't, he doesn't he's not good at anything. And he's just a coward. And it's like, man, you could have done a lot with him. Uh, anyway, but well, see, we got- to that point. So, so do you think that Disney, since they've been integrated in with George Lucas and George Lucas's, you know, ultimate vision from the beginning, has it, gotten more to the point where it's just all about selling tickets and less about you know you can well, let's be real. that's yeah. always what it's about it's always about selling tickets but the problem is um for some reason kathleen kennedy and the company at disney felt that like because i mean when i talk about fans and normies when i say normies i mean like general audiences the thing about star wars is it already attracts general audiences you don't need to do anything special because everyone's just going to go see Star Wars. The fans are the ones that are going to go multiple times. They're going to buy all the merchandise. They're going to they're gonna play the video games. They're going to go to the theme parks. So that's what fans do. And everyone, every fan starts out as a normie until they're exposed to the IP that makes them a fan of it. And then you go die hard. You go hard in the paint. You start wanting all the stuff. This movie is not generating... These movies are not generating fans like they used to. Like the average uh, layman... You know, I'm sure they're fun popcorn films, and that's the thing. is like if you're not that exposed to Star Wars, I, I would see you not really having any problems with the new ones. If you really didn't know too much about it, you just thought it was like a, movie, a kid's movie about space wizards, you know? It's whatever. Because the thing about all these Star Wars movies is they look great. They, they're always going to look great. The best. John Williams does a great job. I liked how John Williams did have a cameo in this last one. He's like the bartender with the weird thing on his head. That was, that was cool. There are things that I did like about the movie, obviously. It looks great. Um, I like the whole way Exegol looked, the cool, you know, Emperor Planet. Why the Emperor's alive, that's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did like, to, like IVs and all kinds of crazy shit. I mean, the thing is, you're thrown down a hypershaft and then exploded in a Death Star. And apparently all that happened was you singed off your irises and your fingertips. And <laughs> you know, what's up? Vincent Antone. We've got like all these all-star casts in here. Super How's super practice going? Are you guys practicing or having a, a band meeting? Oh, uh, it's over now. We're uh, taking off. Okay. Well, if you want to... Thumbs up, thumbs down on the movie. Oh, I mean, big thumbs down. For, <laughs> for the camera. Thumbs down on the red <laughs> cover. The problem I, is we've been streaming for 50 minutes. Though. We're streaming for 50 minutes, and I still really haven't uh, touched too much on the actual well, movie. You made itself. the mistake of letting all the shitheads in here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy to get in, apparently, which I, I like about it. I'll Those are good uh, people uh, into it, you know. Got Top Hat Zach, Mr. Bean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's my two cents. Yeah, see, that's the thing. It's like if you. Um, you know, if you hear me saying anything that you think is total bullshit, you know, come on in and, and you know, come disagree with me. Or if you just want to talk about how you think I'm a weirdo for even doing this and, you know, caring too much about it. Uh, like I said earlier, it's like I'm just tired of uh, repeating myself everywhere I go and talking about it all the time. I'd rather just do this big, long four hour thing and just like send people the link. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think the verdict for me is uh, it's terrible. Uh, because I think the big problem is the fact that you bring back the Emperor, it just make, it negates the entire original trilogy. Like, all of the stuff Luke did, all that the stuff... Point. Did. I'm out. All right, man. I agree, uh, though. 100%. It's like, what's the point of the original trilogy? And that's the saddest part, is when you watch Return of the Jedi, they, Darth Vader sacrifices himself and kills uh, the Emperor, and the Death Star blows up, and the Galactic Emperor Empire is uh, destroyed... And they're all celebrating on Endor with the Ewoks. And you realize, like, holy shit, it becomes so sad. Like, Leia and Han, they break up. And Han Solo, rather than becoming, like, a great general... Because that's the thing, is through the trilogy, he evolves to become a great leader in the Rebellion. He starts as, like, some fucking... Some smuggler who doesn't care. He only looks out for his himself. And at the end of the movie, he comes back and saves Luke. And then at the end of the next one, he, like, him and Luke are constantly saving each other's asses. They become best friends. And then he, he marries Leia, or gets involved with Leia, and now they're family, basically. 
And you're telling me that he immediately, you know, has a kid with her and then a few years later leaves and then goes right back to smuggling in his same old ship with his same old sidekick. And then Leia, who you think is going to, you know, she doesn't experience any peace, I guess. She just goes right back into being in the military and dealing with more conflict her whole life and eventually getting fucking sucked out of a uh, 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 an exploding ship, saves her life, and then basically dies sadly like overdosing on the force i don't understand like why she dies it's just so weird how <laughs> she overdoses uh, on the force yeah yeah she basically um and that's the thing is like now that it's been a month like more and more news comes out and this idea that han solo visits uh ben that was like an early leak that was the thing is there were leaks coming out like back in october like as early as the summer about what was going to be in this movie and everyone was like, that is too crazy to be true. There's no way that is true. And it turned out most of the stuff in those leaks were true. And one of them was the fact that Han Solo was going to come back and talk to Kylo. And people, I was freaked out because the idea that he would be a Force ghost is really bad. But luckily, I feel like that was going to be a thing. And then they changed it to where he's just a vision in, in Kylo's head. The problem with that is the fact that Han Solo forgives him it means nothing because you're basically just imagining it yourself. You have forgiven yourself. Like you were Kai Han Solo is dead. You know what I mean? You're just imagining your dead father saying it's okay that you killed me when I'm sure Han Solo would not be okay with being killed, you know? No um, way. <laughs> uh, and that's the thing is Han Solo. There are certain things that characters would never do. You know, Han Solo, the idea that he would leave, there we go. Get more beans in the stream. Hey, yeah, man, I don't like my beans having scurvy, so that's good, man. God, I was just reading that scurvy. When you get full-blown scurvy, all your scars open up. <laughs> How crazy is that? Eesh. Yeah, your gums bleed and all your scar tissue just dissolves. and you're just <laughs> You like turn into a, a, a Papa Roach and Chili Pepper song at once. <laughs> <laughs> Start Eesh. talking about fucking California. The Scott tissue that I wish was there. <laughs> Ugh. Jeez. But yeah, uh, dude, as far as like the list of actual errors in this movie, I've got like uh, like two whole pages of chicken scratch notes. And well, each dude, one of these are like are fucking getting to it, dude. Oh, I mean, dude, like the thing is, is though, since that month has gone by, there's been so many internet videos that have also come out that are just basically – that's the thing is like these are not things that I have noticed. These are things that everyone's noticing and like people just choose to ignore. Like for instance, there are some really big ones. Like the idea that people were talking about like the force teleportation, the idea that force teleportation, the idea that Kylo Ren Okay, so for let's let's talk about when they go to the rave, they go to desert, they go to the alien burning man. Yeah. Uh, they go to alien burning man and it's like a festival on this desert planet. The festival happens once every 42 years. So it's like, okay, that's that's cute because it's been 42 years since the first Star Wars movie came out. That's a nice little nod. But it makes no it. sense. Cool. It makes no sense, though, as to why that would happen. That is like, you're telling me, like, what are the odds of just running into that festival? So then you run, so it's so lucky that the festival is happening. And then it's also so lucky that this one little alien child sees Ray. Uh, the one person who is in forced communication with the enemy, she gives him this necklace, and then it's so lucky that Kylo Ren grabs that necklace and somehow is able to analyze where it came from and what's going on and is able to go there re right away to this planet. But it's so funny because it's like, how do you know that that Ray didn't have that necklace from before? How do you know that Ray? Um, you know, like what are the odds? Like, what are the odds? So many, so many lucky things happening in this movie that are just like so lazy screenwriting. And that's the big problem, I think, with the force. Like, kind of how like The Last Jedi ruined Luke Skywalker, this movie ruins the force because the force basically just becomes this giant Deus Ex Machina. Uh, it's just constantly getting people out of issues, and it it, it doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, Dark Force. Yeah, what more explanation is required? Uh, he shoots lightning out of his fucking fingers. Yeah, well, the thing is, I'm not overthinking it about the Emperor. <laughs> I appreciate your your um, your uh, contradicting opinions. I appreciate this because it's good to go off of them. But 
it does actually matter because the idea that the emperor can survive being thrown down a hypershaft and exploding, what's to say he doesn't come back from from now? Like, what's to stop him from coming back all the time, like fucking Jason Voorhees? You know, like like, like Voldemort and Harry Potter. It's like Jesus Christ, what's it take to kill this fucker? Well, and that's the other thing is force lightning is a very powerful tool, and I'm glad that he brought that up because the idea that Ray could just shoot force lightning out of her hands by accident, uh, and I get it, it's a good nod that he she is related to Palpatine, but the problem with her being related to Palpatine is, um, you know, we've already been told that her parents don't matter, but if your parents are the offspring of fucking Palpatine, I guess that does matter a little bit, but... Again, it's just the problem with the new trilogy, really, and I think this is kind of the big broad strokes of it, is if you look at what it represents, Ray, this new character, comes in. The Palpatines basically win. Palpatine, uh, Emperor <laughs> Ray Palpatine comes in. Uh, all the original, all the Skywalkers are killed, and she, at the end of the movie, she buries Luke and Leia's Skywalker, literally burying the old characters and then she takes on their name and just basks in their glory of destroying the Emperor. And it really seems unwarranted. Um, that's kind of a big problem with it, with the fans. It really seems like it's undeserved. Um, because, you know, we love these original characters. Uh, or, you know, they Luke Skywalker in The New Hope, he, he's one of those characters that just resonates with everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, you're young, you're old. Everyone can relate to Luke Skywalker in that first movie. He wants he wants more for himself, but he has these obligations and he's kind of stuck. And that's what makes a great protagonist is someone who has to, you know, go through hurdles. Um, and when you have Rey, who is just on her own, she's doing her own thing, she's fine. She's just waiting on her parents to come back, but, you know, whatever, it's all good. She's just going to leave and go on this adventure and, you know, as soon as she gets in the Millennium Falcon, she's like flying through, like, she's flying through all these chasms and destroying TIE fighters. And she meets up with Han Solo and shows him how to fix his ship, shows him how to fly his ship. Uh, she is just the best in everything. Han Solo just takes her under his wing right away. I want you to be my new co-pilot. Fuck Chewie. You know, we don't need Chewie as much. You know, Chewie has been demoted to basically being um, in the passenger seat of whoever's flying the Millennium Falcon. Falcon. And right. like, the idea that if Han Solo is killed, Chewie should be the new. I think that would have been cooler if Chewie had just become the new Millennium Falcon guy, the captain. And then you got Poe and Finn. And the problem with the Last Jedi also is you introduce all these great characters, Poe and Finn especially. They have great chemistry, and you spend the whole Last Jedi like separating them. And the Rise of Skywalker tries to undo that by putting them together in an adventure, which is it's it's fine, but it's too little, too late. Like we were supposed to be convinced that Ray and uh, Poe have this like thing where they're friends, but they back and forth. But it's like really, it's the first time they're they've they've only encountered each other in the previous movies for like less than a minute. They literally just like introduce themselves to each other. That's like the only previous screen time they have together. It's so weird. Um, like I said, it's a lot of sh it's a lot of tell don't show going on in these movies. A lot of exposition dumps, a lot of verbal diarrhea talking about what's going on, and then when well, they explain it, it, doesn't make any sense. Can I uh, can I ask a question? Of course. So, uh, well, first off, here in a second, I'm gonna have to reload this. Sure. So hold on. Yeah, but anyway, we gotta go have a Stoger and get some drink. Yeah. So, in your opinion. And this is you probably already touched on this, but what was what was Homie's name? The uh, the ultimate hacker that reset C three PO's brain, Babu Frick, that guy. So yeah. he was my favorite character, hands down. Like, Everyone it, loved him. Yeah, it doesn't get better than that. But what my question is is uh, the Baby Yoda in com in comparison to that guy is um, who's better, man? Well, that's the that's a you know basically in terms of uh, merchandising and. You know, classic Star Wars, I would say probably Baby Yoda is getting more attention. But Babu Frick is my favorite because he is classic Star Wars. He's not cute. He's fucking weird. Yeah. And he's like a little weird little shit. You know, I just love him. But, but I don't like him because he's cute. And the thing about Babu Frick is he can talk. He has his, you know, he's not like a, an infant. Like I wouldn't yeah. team up Baby Yoda with Babu Frick. I would team up Babu Frick with grown Yoda. <laughs> yeah, I, think that would be better. I would love to see them as like 
space cops in the star in the Galactic Emperor, you know, Empire, you know, <laughs> um, Babu Frick and Yoda doing um, doing like Vice <laughs> Star Wars prostitution stuff. Just like stuff. doing old man shit. Yeah, yeah, two yeah grumpy old men starring Get Babu going Frick fishing, and Yoda. Shopping. <laughs> yeah, so here's another one for you, man. Um, so. God damn it, I forgot what I was going to say. It's okay, but you know what's fucking interesting is did you know that the producers, um, Disney did not, they wanted to cut out Bobby Frick when J.J. Abrams was, yeah. To show you how how out of touch they are. Like, they don't understand Star Wars. And that's the problem with movies in general today. It's like there's too much uh, meddling with the producers. The producers just fucking pay for it and shut your mouth and let the writers and directors tell their story. Okay, I, I remember what I was going to say. So, in... in in terms of the uh, the storylines from the new series uh, being very similar to the originals, the original three. So Yoda, when he's dying at the very end, um, you know, those kind of, I see a very similar kind of story progression from, you know, Luke goes and hangs out with Yoda on Endor and as Rey goes and hangs out with Luke on um Fuck right. off island, you know, whatever mm-hmm. island that is. Um, they're both on Return of the Jedi. Yoda is just like a senile old dude. He's just like, well, I'm fucking over it. My job's done. I fucking did it. <laughs> he <last died>. <laughs> and he's like, I'm out. I saw, a funny, I saw a funny meme where it was like, uh, anyone with kids would understand <laughs> what it's like with Yoda like you just get so tired of answering his questions you just fucking just die you know just like so sick of answering your questions I'm just gonna keel over and die but Yoda is like 900 years old so the idea of him suddenly just dying makes sense and you know same thing with Carrie Fisher like she's an old she's an old lady but the idea that like using the force is what like kills you in fact actually I think that is true because you know Luke Skywalker he force teleports himself or not even teleports he force projects himself which is lame <laughs> so so it's it was cool at first because it's like hey that's a nice power that's a nice trick it's a nice thing to do with the force and we've never seen anything like that but the idea that it kills him is like whoa oh that's that's not cool and it's also shitty because in the rise of skywalker it's revealed that his um his x-wing does in fact work because the idea is like okay so maybe he just had no choice he chose to sacrifice himself he had to go force project because his ship doesn't work. So it's the only way he could go there and save them. But the fact that the ship works shows that he chooses to kill himself, which is like, oh, my God. Why would he, you know, I don't know. Yeah, but, like, it, are, don't you think people are, like, down to kill Luke Skywalker? So he's just, like, having to lay low? Yeah, and the whole point like, is, yeah, kill Luke Skywalker. What the fuck else is he doing all day? So I don't know. Well, and Maybe I guess the power. Yeah, the idea that old age gets you, you know, I mean, that makes sense. But the idea that using too much force power, because that's basically what happens to Yoda. Yoda's training with Luke Skywalker. And I think that's when he's like standing on his head or is that Empire? But the point is, like, I remember he falls. He falls. Yoda falls off of him. And I think a few hours later he dies. So I think Luke accidentally killed Yoda. Like, I may have to look into that some more. But as far as like the parables between luke training with yoda and ray training with luke they're so different first of all like luke luke doesn't show up to yoda and take one class from him and then tell him basically i don't need your lessons and then beat him in a stick fight and then just fuck off and then save the day anyway remember when yoda's trying to tell luke like please don't go you're not ready and he goes and he gets his fucking hand chopped off and his ass kicked and he finds out luke skywalker uh, like darth vader's his father uh, when Rey disregards Luke Skywalker, she basically like offers him his lightsaber and realizes like, you know what? You don't even deserve this. I'm going to just take it for myself. And Luke Skywalker is just like a total coward. And it's like it's so out of character because Luke Skywalker, you, it's revealed that the whole reason he went into exile is so because he tried to kill his nephew in his sleep for no reason other than the fact that he had a, a taste for the dark side or whatever. It's like I'd imagine most Jedi training have a taste, like a, a, a curiosity of the dark, dark side, you know? But uh, it's just so painful because, like, there are things that characters would never do, okay? Luke Skywalker, family comes first. Like, he would rather 
kill himself and kill his father, Darth Vader. He would try to convince his father to join the, 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 uh, to leave the dark side rather than try to kill him. Uh, Han Solo, like, like Indiana Jones would never cry like a baby and beg for his life. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 Marty McFly would never, you know, like slap his slap Christopher Lloyd in the face and, and abandon him in, in the, in the uh, past, you know, like there's just things that, you know, these characters would never do. Uh, Neo, dude, I just rewatched the matrix the other day, the first one. And uh, I had the mystery science theater riff tracks going. And even then, like the movie's still so enthralling. It's so good. The the theater. <laughs> even, even with the jokes, like you're still like, man, it's such a good movie. Uh, I was blown away by watching it again. And then I watched the sequel reloaded. And the, it, again, it's like another example of producers meddling, like oh, yeah. again, all Kung Fu, all leather suits, all fucking techno music. And it's just so overkill. It's not, it's not cool anymore. It's like four. So, to touch on that, so I saw very recently, I've watched all three John Wick movies within the yeah. past two weeks. I, yeah. yeah. And, I, just, um, I just saw yeah. part three. Morpheus is in part three, which is nice. Yeah, he's in two as well. He leads oh, all the, home, the homeless people, which that's I think a, is one of the sillier parts of the of the trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> These homeless people are like, they're all actually operating some complex intricate splinter cell it's so silly so we looked it up and uh john wick we quantified the amount of people that john wick killed in across all three movies okay take a guess how many it was it's it's i'm gonna guess 280 people you were very close it's 299 wow so i was just totally (laughs) threw that number out there but i did watch like the third one and i was so i was laughing my ass off because People are freaking out that Joker got 11 Oscar nominations and that when the movie was coming out, this movie's going to cause mass shootings and and white males are going to – and it's just like, what about John Wick? That movie literally is like shoot people in the head, the movie. And the whole movie. Shoot people in the head, part three, now with dogs biting people in the dick before they get shot in the head. Like that's basically the whole movie. And I remember I was watching it by myself and there's like parts where he's you know getting into a – uh, you know, a big brawl with a bunch of people. And it's like, oh, he shot this guy in the head. Oh, this guy punched him in the face and shot him in the head. This guy he grabbed his gun, threw him down the rail and shot him in the head. This guy, he shot him in the balls, then he shot him in the head. This guy, he fucking throws him out a window, shoots him in the head before he fucking falls on the ground. You know, it's just shooting everyone in the head. It's so, <laughs> and I get it. I guess if you're a hitman, you got to shoot people in the head. But God, it's like, it becomes a bit much. I mean. <laughs> so to bring it back to Star Wars, especially the new one, do you think that these, the actors in Star Wars, do you think that these movies are their life's work? Do you think it goes up from there? Well, you know, that's the, that's what happened. I mean, the thing is, I don't know if that's going to be true because the thing about the new star, the old Star Wars movies, that definitely what was what happened except for Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford was really the only one involved in any of the Star Wars movies, um, except for Ewan McGregor. But in the originals, like Harrison Ford, he's one of the only guys that did other stuff. And Mark Hamill, he went on to do a bunch of voice work, like playing the Joker and some other stuff. But, you know, they're always going to be stuck to Star Wars. And I could say the same about these new characters, especially if they don't do much. I think Oscar Isaac is really good, and he's been in a lot of good movies, so he'll probably get out of there. But um, uh, because, I mean, he was in Ex Machina, and uh, what else was he in that was really good? I mean, he's, he's in a lot of good stuff. Uh, but as far as these new characters, it just depends on like if they start getting more work or not. Um, I know that they've all been very adamant that they don't want to do any more Star Wars. So, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, as far as these new characters go, like I, I don't think anyone if they were to make a, if they were to make a sequel trilogy again another thirty years from now, I don't think anyone would give a shit about what Ray's doing or no. what Poe is doing. No. And I, I think that was the plan is like, I don't think they're going to be brought back in any movies and I don't think any of the actors want to. And it just seemed to have put a bad taste in everyone's mouth. Like everyone involved, JJ Abrams, every, you know, Kathleen Kennedy, like she's like really not even allowed to talk about it. I don't think, but pretty sure my voicemail right there. Pretty sure she's been, uh, <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy. I'm pretty sure she hasn't really been officially fired but she's definitely been like, I think reprimanded, like don't talk anymore. You're not really making any choices anymore. 
you're just going to be the one in charge, like on paper. But as far as like, like how, like, I don't understand. Like I, I could imagine if I was Bob Iger, the guy who owns Disney, I don't imagine how I could let this slide. The fact that you have, you know, single-handedly ruined one of their biggest properties. And the thing is, they bought Star Wars for $4 billion, and yeah, they've made about that much money back, but that's not profit. That is earnings. And when you subtract the um, huge costs of these movies in production and marketing, when you suggest the, when you uh, subtract the huge loss that was Galaxy's Edge, the theme mm. park, when you subtract, yeah. like, dude, they have lost, they're still like, I think, $2 billion in the hole. Oh, I'm sure. That was a massive undertaking. And the thing is, like, you have to make money. <laughs> you know, that's the whole point of these. Uh, someone's asking if we can suggest, uh, discuss Super Troopers. Um, I actually would like to do one of these again about Starship Troopers. To oh, be real. my favorite movie of all time, dude. Yeah, I love it. It's such a good one. I, I think it's funny, though, because, I mean, I guess I'll talk about it briefly right now and get back to Star Wars. Yeah. Hey, Beetle Lord, you're back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if anyone else wants to join. I can get uh, three more guests in here. So if you're watching and you want to say some shit about Star Wars, please feel free. Uh, but I was going to say about Star Wars, uh, Starship Troopers, one of the big misconceptions is that the humans in the Terran Federation are the bad guys and we are the fascists and we are uh, attacking these poor, innocent bugs. And because the movie is told in a like a fascist propaganda style, like we're all kind of tricked into rooting for the humans. And I couldn't disagree any further. Like I, it's like it's 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 pretty. Like if you watch it, I, I'm one of these firm believers that the humans did nothing wrong. Uh, the arachnids are a existential threat to humankind, and we literally have to go to war with them because yeah, yeah. disintegrated Buenos Aires with a fucking asteroid. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, only because they found some Mormons colonizing some planet. Like their response to that is not only like kill all the Mormons, like. Not even like give them a warning to leave. Like just go slaughter them all and then fucking uh, initiate total war on humankind. Like it's just like whoa. And then the idea is the idea that the uh, humans are the fascists. Um, you know because Paul Verhoeven he tried to make a a movie. Um, he said he's quoted in saying that it's like a fascist society, and we're going to you know dress everyone up like you know fascists and. But the thing is, I don't think Paul Verhoeven really knows what fascists are because I think he's I think he confuses militarism with fascism and he's confusing having a military with militarism. But uh, in short, like especially if you read the book, uh, the whole point of the terror is well, insane. Yeah, huh? but also like you're not a citizen until you serve right. for them. So yeah. you're also indoctrinated. Yeah, well, well, the thing is. So the thing about it is it's basically like today's society, except you are not born born with the right to vote. You have to earn the right to vote. And the reason why they talk about it in the book a lot more. But the idea is now because of this, like if you want to engage in politics, you have to put forth the same effort as everyone else. So everyone involved in politics and oh God, everyone involved in city politics or national politics, they've all gone through the same rigorous thing. So even though you may have leaders that are not as smart as others or as your average civilian, um, it is basically, you know, it's a meritocracy. Like they've all, they've all did their time. They've all proved by going through um, the, uh, the uh, military training for two or so years that they want to engage in, um, you know, politics basically. But the thing is you're not forced to um, like, the thing is they make it clear that, Civilians can leave perfectly fine lives, as with Rico's parents. Uh, they've had a hundred years, I think they talk about in the book, without being involved in the politics. And uh, his father talks about how it's like a parasitism. And, you know, like he, he wants to join the – Rico wants to join the military. His father wants him to go on vacation, you know. And the thing Did is – yeah. yeah, the thing is, like, it's citizenship. It's uh, – what's it? Um, service guarantees citizenship. If it was a fascist regime, it would be citizenship guarantees service. And the idea is you wouldn't be allowed to quit. When you join the military, you're allowed to quit. In fact, you're encouraged to quit at any time you want. You just walk out, say, I'm done with this shit, and you can leave. And they make it hard on purpose because they want to weed out the people that don't really care about it as much. Because the idea with this society in Starship Troopers is, you know, you have to earn, you have to show that you want 
the right to vote. It's one of the it's one of the votes. It's one of the rights that humans are actually not born with in Starship Troopers. And the thing about Starship Troopers and Star Trek is they're very they're very much the same. Uh, they both get confused for communist or fascist societies when in fact they're they're actually democracies. But also yeah. they also uh, the only difference is Gene Roddenberry is a soft hearted you know idealist. And because Star Trek has replicators, that kind of changes everything. But with Starship Troopers, it's a much more like brutal, realist view. But it is like a perfect, it is kind of a utopian society, even though it is a harsh society and it is unflinching. Uh, but I mean, I would love to do a whole other stream about Paul Verhoeven movies later. But we can talk about uh, Star, uh, Star, Star, Star Wars some more. Um, as far as like, you know, basically what what we're supposed to see with Starship Troopers, that's what the Emperor Empire and the uh the First Order are supposed to be. They're supposed to be just totally evil and um just like this big brother type Orwellian one world like government that takes control of everything. And the idea is you're supposed to be under the thumb, under the rule of the Galactic Empire. Life is hard, you know. Oh shit, we got we got Freddy Bobbins up in here. Thundercat. Yeah, Bring him on. Dog. Eddie! Hey. Eddie, you better not show your dick and get me banned on Facebook. None of you guys better do that. Oh, okay. Well, I don't have my dick out, but I have my pussy out. Oh, Dale. <laughs> the cat Dale. How much does that cat bite you? How often does that cat bite you? Daily. That thing's an asshole, man. I remember when Eddie got that thing. Dale's chill, man. Yeah, I like Dale. He ain't but, a tarball, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Dale puts up with any shit, though. Yeah, I'm wearing my <clears throat> job butt costume, just laying on the couch. Nice. I actually saw Star Wars with Eddie and Zach and a bunch of people. I was glad I didn't get to go. I didn't have to go alone. But it seemed like me and Eddie were kind of on I the like I hate it. I hate it fence. And then Miles and Zach were like, dude, it's just a movie. Like, I don't understand why you're this upset. <laughs> uh, I was just pretty livid. Uh, but it was one of those things where I was expecting it to be bad. The last Jedi, I think it slapped us all upside the face. Yeah. I don't think sure. anyone was expecting that. Like I saw that movie with Coleman Brown and um, Zachariah. And I remember I walked out of that movie theater. The first thing I said was, like something along the lines of, man, that tried really hard to be funny. And then, like, I knew something was wrong in the first five minutes when that mama joke, your mama joke falls down. That was, what the hell am I watching? That was definitely an eyebrow-raising moment when Poe says something about, like, I'm trying to talk to your mama, but whatever he says. That was weird. But this new one, where is Rex? Rex is laying down right next to me. Um, Miles, thanks for asking. Rex is good. He misses Rex. Rex is sorry he bit you in the face that one time. Yeah, yeah that's bad. Eddie, what did you think of Star Wars? Uh, I don't like the way it smelled. Mm, yeah, the theater, the movie. Oh, yeah. I w I can't wait till we actually get smell o vision. That would be pretty cool, dude. I am. Um, Side tangent, I actually watched The Color Out of Space the other day. That was actually pretty fucking dope. Uh, very Lovecraftian horror movie with Nick Cage. It was pretty faithful to the love, the original Lovecraft Shade short story. But yeah, another movie I wish had smell-o-vision. Like, what 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 didn't you like about the smell of, of Rise of Skywalker? Was it Babu Frick? It no, it was like the Burning Man scene, dude. The what? The Burning Man scene. Oh my god, yeah. Another problem with that movie, that scene, there's so much wrong with it. Like, okay, so it's the the festival's happening every 42 years. They happen to run into someone that happens to give them a necklace, that happens to be grabbed by the person who happens to force communicate with the person who has the necklace and happens to be able to analyze it, happens to be able to figure out when and where they are, and happens to send someone there literally within minutes. Uh, then they run into a stormtrooper who happens to be there. Then... Lando shows up and shoots the fucking stormtrooper in the eye with an arrow. Nobody reacts to the fact that there's a dead guy laying there. The, the festival just continues as normal. Lando shows up. Lando basically explains that Leia is the one who told him to meet with them. We lost Eddie. He'll come back later, I'm sure. Uh, 
But Lando shows up and says, hey, Leia's the one who told me to meet with you. Even though, why wouldn't Leia... And that's the problem, is Leia's lines are all um, recycled from deleted scenes from The Force Awakens. So they don't have any footage of Leia saying, hey, go meet my friend Lando. He'll be waiting for you. So instead, they have her deliver some ominous, like some vague, like, go there line. I think all of her lines are like two words. And yeah. the real bad part was when she says, um, never underestimate a droid. Because that is specifically from a deleted scene. The idea was. that would re recycle, recycle that footage, you know, and use that line. And, and like basically just take all the lines that she has that she's said in these deleted scenes and somehow try to find context into why she would say that in this new movie and write the dialogue around her lines. It's, it's just, it's weird. It's well, just I think she part of that too is the fact that she was dead when they fucking filmed Dude, it. the first three words of the movie on the title crawl are the dead speak. And it's like, you don't see the tastelessness of the fact that you're using Carrie Fisher's corpse to deliver lines as well. Like you don't see the irony there. Like yeah, it's kind of a little. It's kind of it's a little. It's a little. It's a little it's a a yeah, it's it's a little. It's a little it might hurt some feelings, you know. Some people might. Uh, it's rough, but uh, yeah, the dead speak. You know, the Emperor Palpatine's alive somehow, and he's been spending the past thirty years actually pulling all the strings, and he created all the Snoke. Snoke is basically just a clone that he created. Uh, a clone of who? Uh, so he's just got like this vat of snow clones that he's got on standby. And I, I tell you, man, there's just so much wrong with just that basic plot point that pa Emperor Palpatine's alive. It just ruins so much. Yeah. They shouldn't have done that. That was, uh, again, they should have had like, a super death star or something that they should have blown up or at least kept the consistent shit. <laughs> I mean, it just shows you that they didn't care at all about any of the planning of it. And then the thing is, um, I heard that the only place – so they, they talk about <clears> – <throat> another thing that makes no sense. Emperor Palpatine is alive. He's building this great galactic empire, the final order, he calls it. And then he ruins his surprise by broadcasting a message across the galaxy, warning everyone, like, hey, I'm on Exegol building this empire. We'll be <laughs> launching our attack in a few days. Sure would be a shame if someone were to come here and stop us. <clears throat> You know well, how much more devastating it would have been if they just launched his attack and suddenly we know the Emperor's alive because there's giant... <laughs> oh, 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 nice. Beans, that. No, Lemon so beans. Lemon beans. Um, so here's my question about Exegol. So why would they... So with the advanced technology that they all have, they can see all over the galaxies, universes, they can run parsecs on parsecs on parsecs. Uh -huh. is a distance of uh, which is a measurement of distance, not time. Right, right. right. Anyways, how did they not know Exegol was there, and like, had they not known some shit was going down on it? Well, it's actually pretty funny. Actually, let me go help my dog outside real quick. I'll be right back. Britt, we're taking over the stream. Yeah, I need to talk about some communist shit. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my dog's okay. getting old. He needs help getting up sometimes. <laughs> but um, yeah, the whole thing about Exegol that's very funny is they talk about how Lando and Luke were previously looking for Exegol, but they got they lost the trail when they were you know looking for that that ship on the Burning Man planet. Yeah, they were looking for a guy who has a Sith dagger that tells you where you get this fucking device that tells you how to get to the planet. Now the thing about using this wayfinder. To get to the planet, like I guess Exegol is like surrounded by this like space cloud, this red nebula, but then actually it's not. It's it's actually outside of it. So I don't understand why you have to drive through the nebula to get to Exegol. But besides that, they talk about how Luke and Lando lost their trail. And they couldn't find the dagger. And, you know, the whole reason why Ray even knows where to find the Wayfinder is she had just happened to flip through that book and happen to see a page like literally right before they learn that there's a uh, a message going out by Emperor Palpatine, and they are saying he's on Exegol. How do we find Exegol? Ray's like, oh, I just read in this book. I know where to find this wayfinder. You know, you find this dagger that'll. You know, it's just it's so weird. Uh, again, it's very lucky. It's very lucky that um, they would find this specific information just in time. Because Ray does everything great, you know. She knows exactly where everything is, and she knows exactly where to find everything. And 
Hey, it's just it's just strange, man, because basically Ray, like I said, just flipped through this book in time just to know about this MacGuffin. And that's the whole thing. It's like this video game plot where you first get the dagger, then you get the Wayfinder, then you go to the planet, then you it's like constantly like leveling up type thing. But as far as Exegol itself, like, yeah, you need this Wayfinder to get there. So how do all the other ships get there if there's only two Wayfinders? Also, if you're the Emperor, why don't you grab those Wayfinders so no one can find the way to Exegol? How about you? only people can go to Exegol if you fucking pick them up and bring them there yourself? Like, yeah, take one really. ship. Why would you make it so easy to get to this mysterious dark planet? What but about also, all the Acolytes, dude? What's up with all them homies, man? Where'd they come from? Why are they so evil looking? What's up with that ship? Oh, yeah, these, like, I don't know if those Sith lords they're all chanting i don't know if they're ghosts or if they're real they don't explain it they don't bother because it doesn't matter that's the whole point about this new one it's like fuck it, let's just wrap it up they're the, just wrap it up what's up with those little dudes on luke's island what's that about luke's island what's up with those little like reptile dudes like Did the they even explain oh, that? they're like little um they're like nuns who who um because it's like a jedi temple planet and these these like little nuns, they actually talk about how in a deleted scene, there's like males who go out and fish and provide for the town, and then the little nuns like kind of take care of everything and clean and do laundry and stuff. Weird. It would have been better. Yeah, I guess. I mean, like Luke does not live on a deserted island per se. He lives on some uh, Jedi temple planet. I I don't really know. It doesn't matter. Can I ask you a question in there, uh, yeah. Intel? Would you rather Shoot. live on Long Island or would you rather live on in, on uh, on uh, Dagobah? Would I rather live on what island or Dagobah? Uh, Luke's Island with the with the weird nuns or I mean, Dagobah seems like a shitty ass swamp to be honest. Uh, the other place seemed a lot prettier, and you know, there's big fish to catch, and uh, you get your little stone hut. I, I think that'd be cool to live there. Milk? You're like over there by the bee. Yeah, you got the you got the the mer the mer camel mermaid camel milk. That was the big part where it's like, this is not your Luke Skywalker, where he just takes that big sip and he just makes this face like, drink it in. This is what we're watching. Vic, I hope you're ready. This is your Luke Skywalker. And then it's so funny because at the end of Force Awakens, when you see Luke, he's like wearing this like gem, this white Jedi robe. And he's like sitting there very stoic. And then as soon as the second one starts, he throws the lightsaber, wears some fucking raggedy black clothes and just starts like doing fishing and stuff and just being a grouchy old hermit, which, you know... <laughs> I don't mind the idea that Luke's a grouchy hermit. I don't mind the idea that he's in exile. I don't mind these things. These could have been done well. The problem is, like, the reason why he's in exile makes no sense at all. Uh, geez. But as far as, um, you know, Dude, Dagobah seems like a shitty swamp to live in. <laughs> the crazy thing in Star Wars for me is, like, just the ridiculous physics. Like, they'll be, like, having a, a battle in space, like, hitting those destroyers. And they'll like fall down like they're sinking, like they're yeah. in fucking space. Like, what do you yeah. like? You're a gravity dog. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, nobody knows <laughs> that. Treat like teaching kids to be stupid or what? Well, that, I mean, that's yeah. kind of back to the originals. Like the idea, you know, ever there's always some guy back when the originals came out that was like a big hot thing to say, big dissenting opinions. Like, you know, there's no explosions in space. They don't make noise, and there's no fireballs. And it's like, yeah, that's true, but this is a movie, and it's like. The thing about it is the movie element of an explosion in space is silly, but for some reason in Star Wars, we allow it. In Star Wars, we have just grown accustomed to these things, but the problem is when you have like previous examples of things happening in the Star Wars universe, like for instance, the, I, the Holdor maneuver, Holdo maneuver, the idea that you can light speed kamikaze into a ship and destroy it. You That's not how the United I... States, if you are a sperm donor, they're going to give your information over. Yeah. And make you pay child support. <laughs> is that Alex Jones? Is that Alex Jones in here? What? Is that Alex Jones? I didn't hear anything, dude. Oh, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Marijuana. <laughs> That's not me. That's not me. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, I don't know. Like, what was, um, like, like what, I mean, the thing about the prequels is, like, yeah, that's where the physics really go out the window. I mean, like, you got Obi-Wan uh, and Luke and Anakin Skywalker doing that Coruscant fight where they're, like, jumping yeah. off of like, speeders and falling hundreds of feet. 
it's just silly. Or like when you got um, uh, Obi Wan riding that big lizard bird thing, like that's just silly. It's silly. And then the physics in this new one, dude. I had a big problem with the horses on the ship, the space horses on the battleship, because yeah, we can't, none of them motherfuckers can breathe space. You're, well, it's like you're in an at, you're there in the atmosphere. They haven't left the atmosphere yet. Okay, that's why that's... they need the, the beacon to go up out of the atmosphere, which is oh. stupid. But you're in a ship. That. And there's like little dudes on horses like riding on your hull. Like, why don't you just fucking tilt over and fucking watch them all just fall to their deaths? Instead, yep. like you're gonna sit there and let these guys like ride their little first of all, they park way over here, their horses run all the way over here, and then they blow up the tower over here, and then they somehow restart the tower, even though the tower has been exploded. Like, I thought they would restart the tower on the ground that they had turned off. And they only have two towers. Like, why doesn't every ship just have its own tower? Why does it? Why? There's just so many questions. And none of it makes sense at all. It's it's like fractures. It's like compounded. Like, you, you answer, you try to ask one question, and it just brings up more questions. Like, it's so broken. Can, I, just, uh, can I make a conspiracy theory suggestion to all of this? Yeah, sure. Okay, this is going to be weird, but... I have some conspiracy theories as well. I'm weird, so... I uh, So, what if in 42 years ago, 43 years ago, however long it was, whenever they made those movies that people's stimulation was significantly less um, than what has evolved to today's modern era. So, that being said, I do feel like that in these movies, they're having to fill a much larger void than they were having to fill back when they filmed the original ones and they just fucking failed. And and I think with technology that we have, that they're just not capable of filling that void. What do you think about that? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is like, it's the same thing with all the Jurassic Park sequels. The first Jurassic Park movie is amazing because you'd never seen these fucking dinosaurs look so real before. So then the sequels come out and it's like, we've already seen the dinosaurs. So that whole ah, that whole, like, inspiring, like, jaw-dropping element is kind of removed from all the sequels. And the same thing is with Star Wars movies. Like, the first couple Star Wars movies look amazing. People were blown away. But, yeah, you the profile, the, the human eye is, like, more and more hungry for, you know, convincing special effects. And that's what the prequels did wrong, was, like, cramming as much CGI shit in every frame. And it really blows everything. It really ruins a lot of shit. Your, your mind can't focus in action sequences. Uh, these new ones have a much better um, approach to practical effects with digital effects, um, using actual models and shooting on location. That stuff is very well appreciated. Um, but yeah, as far as what makes these movies more entertaining, it's like fucking hundreds of thousands of lasers and hundreds of thousands of battleships Dude. isn't necessarily the, the option. And the thing is, when we watch The Mandalorian or any of these smaller movies, like the Joker movie, it's like sometimes less is more, you know? Like, you don't have to have like, these... Uh, plot and character development. Yeah. Let's see, you we know? got someone else in this chat. Jar Jar Bean X69. 69420. Who is this? Oh, it's robot voice. Yeah, definitely the homie. <laughs> M-A-C-C-C. What's up, guys? <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, dude. All right, we're Are we talking about there. Baby Yoda's in here, dude? Dude, no, yeah, we got, yeah, we got Yoda's. I got the uh, captain's hat. Oh, damn, it's dark out here. Oh, shit, dude. It's a party. Where are you guys getting all these crazy hats from? This is this Don Hertzfeld? Yes. <laughs> Here, Jar Jar, are you at Jar Jar? Maybe. Okay, I'm gonna have to kick yeah, it. Gonna to you gotta like. I'll go portal into there. I just had to put up a picture of Max and Britt. It was good. We hated you in the movies. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Dude, my buddy yeah. Ansel. Max, that's Ansel in San Diego. Not hearing anything out of you. I'm Max from San Diego. We're just fucking. I'm not bitching. hearing anything from Angelo. though. I think you might be muted, but I'm not seeing a mute on your icon. Is your microphone turned on? Maybe. 
Let's see here. But yeah, this is cool. All right. I know this one. <laughs> Can we do a virtual cheers really quick? Yeah, sure. I, I need yeah. to get a drink though. I have I have kombucha. Oh, hey, your mic works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Hey, there's yeah, no. I just defaulted to my headset. Um, I don't want there to be an echo, so I. Uh, yeah. Cool, man. Cool, man. What's your uh? So uh, what what's your story? You are you a big Star Wars fan? Are you into this or? No, I'm I'm not a Star Wars fan at all. <laughs> okay. So did you like the new ones or did you hate them? Uh, honestly, like I felt like the last one was just like a compromised film. Absolutely. And because it was a compromised film, like no one's gonna be happy. That's the way I look at it. So like I didn't think it was horrible. I didn't think it was great. I just thought it was mediocre. And I think it was mediocre because it was a uh, film by committee. Yeah, exactly. What are your thoughts on The Mandalorian? I fucking love it. Yeah, right? It's great. So it's yeah. like they have the ability. <laughs> they know what we want. <laughs> but, you know, they're just – the thing is like sacrificing your your regular fans, your hardcore fans to appease an audience that doesn't exist, you know, to appease – uh, I don't know who they're trying to go for. Like I said, they're trying to go for the Twi Hard fans, like the Twilight, your average fans of Twilight, maybe. But the Honestly, whole Raylo thing, the Raylo thing hurts because you're appealing to some real toxic fans that literally like oh, yeah. trying to threaten and stalk the actors, uh, Adam yeah. Driver and what's her name? Yeah, that's not okay. I'm just gonna say it's not okay. Yeah, so when you make them kiss at the end, you're kind of giving them what they want, but then you kill Ray, uh, Kylo. Spoilers, by the way. Yeah. There's gonna be spoilers in this conversation. <laughs> but uh, you ki- an hour and a half later, we kill uh, right. we kill Kylo Ren, and then you upset all these Raylo fans. The Raylo fans are devastated right now because of what what happened. Like people talk about how they need therapy and shit because Kylo Ren's dead. I don't I don't get it. Well, the thing is, is that like the way I look at it is. They were trying to make a movie that appealed to the broadest audience possible. That's right. basically what Disney does, especially nowadays. So, like anybody that that watches a Disney made film, be it Star Wars or anything else, has to be intimately aware that the director is not making the final cut, and that it's the film executives that are. And if they're not happy with the way the film screens with certain audiences then they're not going to ship it well, yeah. what, what about how do they like green light uh, movies like coco is that mostly more like a pixar thing where they're just able to i feel like they were able to get away with a lot more oh yeah i, I mean coco, coco I mean, was an appeal to that whole you know we got a whole huge hispanic demographic we want to get to and we want uh you know and coco was good and it was know, really good coco. I wish it, the whole movie was that shit made me cry more than once, and I fucking. Yeah. Hate it. I feel like it would have been it would have been really ballsy if you had made the whole movie in Spanish rather than like you know Mexican accents English. Oh yeah. You know? I feel well, like that would. have been cooler. I think I think um, because it's animated, it gives them the ability to make it in oh, English yeah. and then yeah. dub it over in Spanish super easily. Right. Um, I would like to see that. And Spanish. and the truth is like. One of my favorite Will Ferrell movies is a spent movie that's not even in English. Oh, Casa de Mi Padre or whatever? Yeah, I love it. I mean, granted, I have a pretty good understanding of the Spanish language, but, like, it's so good. I would have yeah. never wanted to see it in English because it's so much better with this horrible Spanish pronunciation. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's how I felt about Coco, about the the, the weird, like, you know, yeah, Mexican you accents, you know, how everyone kind of talks like this, and it's just like, ah, just speak Spanish, man. Just have the whole movie in subtitles. Uh, but yeah, Coco is, is uh, I would say the reason why Coco got greenlit is, first of all, Pixar movies tend to be, was that actually a Pixar, or was that Disney animated studio? I think that was Pixar, right? I don't even know anymore. But, I don't think there's that much of a delineation. Yeah, yeah Disney owns Pixar, they own Marvel, they own Star Wars, they own ESPN. What else do they own? They own everything. Uh, they own all of Fox with Fox the version of Fox News, Fox and now all the Fox name is dead. It's just 20th yeah. Century Studios now. It's like God. That's why I like this shirt. I, this is not a Disney officially licensed shirt, which yeah, is why it's on? good. That's I bought this off. There was like a contest on Woot.com where they had artists make like Star Wars shirts, like custom ones, and this one is like a a mix of Star Wars and Lion King. I like it. Looks good. Because the Baby Yoda merch sucks. 
That's what I got to say. I was going to talk about this. Fucking, this is why I want Grogan in here, God damn it, Grogan, like, I I, I didn't want to be the... the I'll get him in on it. Huh? I'll get him in on it. Yeah. Well, yeah, Grogan was talking about how, you know, we're going to get... Who wants these Baby Yoda toys by December, you know? By Christmas. And I was like, dude, they're not going to have any fucking Baby Yoda merch by Christmas. And they did, and it sucked. No, and exactly. And the best part is, this is what's going to happen next. So I was correct in saying they would not have, they would drop the ball and not have any official merch by Christmas. This is, that would have been so much fucking money they could have made, okay? But this is what they're going to do. The movie, the toys are going to come out in April, May, and then they're going to start pushing Baby Yoda shit everywhere to where and we can releasing Baby Yoda and releasing everything yeah. on DVD and streaming. Oh, yeah. and, and then by the like, time the next make a big deal out of nothing. Yeah, and by the time the next season it. comes out, you're going to be kind of tapped out on Baby Yoda. You know, <laughs> what were you saying, Max? Was that you? Yeah. Can we talk about how big of a fail that was? The um, how yeah. are you going to release a TV show and not have your marketing shit together to fl- right before Christmas to flood the fucking market with well, Baby Yoda Christmas ornaments, Baby Yoda butt plugs, Baby Yoda everything? <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't know if you could get the, the that shape like in in that easy. But anyway, I was saying <laughs> with Baby I'm Yoda, there. the thing about it is. I because with the the original Yoda, they had kept the design under wraps and they released the toys later. Right. But the thing they had already had other toys they could sell, like the fucking. And I watched the, the shit out of the toys that made us on Netflix oh, right. for the Star Wars stuff, and how much of an absolute disaster that was. Yeah. Like, like you would think forty years later, Disney would have merchandising figured out for a property like this, but clearly they don't. Yeah. Well, it's it funny because. Ever- um, I just watched that show and I was like, that was good. But then I realized I had only watched the third season and there's two other seasons. Oh yeah. Wait, there's I was thinking, three seasons. Why? I've only seen two. Oh yeah. Because the, the, originally they only produced two seasons and the third season yeah. was like a re-up, but it's, I think it's shorter. It was only four episodes, but I remember saw those and I was like, man, I can't believe they didn't do one on star Wars. And then I just found out like a week ago, like, Oh, it's the first episode. Yeah. Well, yeah George I, was a genius like, because you know, that was his whole thing. Like, I want the merch rights. And up until Star Wars, like, oh, yeah, toys based on movies, like, those don't make a lot of money. But George Lucas knew what was up, I guess. But um, I, heard the, I, uh, huh? the, I heard the action figure sales, like, from one of the previous, of the newest trilogy, like, they were so bad, they didn't even make, like, a new run or make a new one for the new one because they had so much back stock they needed to, like, get rid of, basically. I think it was the, the first new trilogy, not the second one. Oh. The first one was really bad, like the the um the Force first Lincoln? episodes, the ones we grew up on. Oh, the prequels? <laughs> yeah, the prequels. <laughs> I didn't like the prequels either. And the thing is, the fact that they were, um, yeah, the fact that I asked earlier, like, do you like the prequels more or the new ones? And everyone's like, oh, it's a tough one. And it's just like, yeah, that doesn't, that's bad. But uh, I was gonna say with the uh, the Star Wars uh, toys, this is exactly why Ray Skywalker. <laughs> Ray Palpatine never changes her outfit so they can just keep selling the same toy because yeah. the toy sales are so bad. You look at the Luke Skywalker in each movie, he has a different look, a different he's like a different character in each movie, you know. And Return of the Jedi, by then he's like a fucking badass Jedi master. He's got a green lightsaber, he's wearing all black. He fucking comes yeah, in and your house and he's like, if you're my bad. friend, or I'll fucking kill you. Like that's basically she, what he said at the beginning of the movie. He's insane. She's like he, he dresses like one of the sand people, you know? Yeah. Like yeah, the, well, that was the thing that I thought was funny in the prequels was, like, apparently all Jedis wear robes. But, like, I think it was Mr. Plinkett who brought up. It's like, I thought people dress like the robes because you're from desert planets. Um, but, yeah, I guess for everyone who dresses like that is a Jedi. Every Jedi has a lightsaber. Like, that's another thing. It's like, why why just lightsabers? Like, come up with a new weapon. It's harder. To, it's probably hard to come up with something as iconic as a lightsaber. But that's the thing. It's like that's what made the Emperor so cool. The Emperor like looked down on the lightsaber. He calls it like your Jedi weapon. Pick up well, the motherfucker had lightning in his. Fucking- yeah, he doesn't need it. Same thing with Yoda. Uh, Mr. Plinkett talks about this a lot. But the problem with Yoda is giving him a lightsaber because, like I said originally, um, Yoda. You hear about Yoda, and like I said, they kept Yoda's appearance under wraps. This is why they didn't have any Yoda toys until later. It's kind of what they're doing with Baby Yoda. But the problem with Baby Yoda is there's no real other toys that would be that interesting because people are tapped out on Star Wars toys. So I think they figured, like, the Star Wars toys are doing shit sales, so let's not even bother making a Baby Yoda toy. And then when they realize, like, oh, shit, Baby Yoda memes are everywhere. Like, we got to make a Baby Yoda toy. 
And then they push out like literally a fucking computer rendering of a Yoda figure. It's not even like an actual mock-up. And they're like already accepting money, pre-sales. And then meanwhile, they're striking down on Etsy and on Pinterest. Anyone who's Ansel selling like like he's got merchandise. Say. What? Ansel looks like he has something to say. Yeah, go for oh, it. Sorry. It was just it was just embarrassing, like uh, how badly they manage this. Like the truth is, anyone who watched that TV show could have immediately told you. That baby yeah. Yoda is gonna sell like fucking hotcakes. <laughs> fucking hit, yeah. Like I didn't even I didn't even watch the first like two or three episodes when they first came out because I uh, was traveling or something. I just didn't have time, and I saw just the memes. I was like, oh my god, this is baby Yoda. And actually, yeah, baby. I I saw I saw the first image I saw of baby Yoda was a John Favreau tweet that was like a mock-up, like an artist rendering of Baby Yoda. And I was like, dude, <laughs> adorable. Holy shit. This is a show. I need to see the show now. Like, I was going to watch it anyways, but, like, I got excited just by seeing, the, like, the rendering mock-up. So yeah. then when I started watching the show, I was like, this is, this is insane. And the memes started coming, and, you know, the rest is history. But, man, they really cocked it up. It's yeah. it, it, honestly, it's a, probably a multi-billion-dollar opportunity to us. Yeah. Well, Leopold uh, Hurtado brings up an interesting point. He says times are changing as well. It's a lot harder to get kiddos to play with action figures these days. Sales of the Lego Star Wars games are huge, though, and that's right because Lego. The thing about Lego is Lego has figured out how to sell toys to both boys and girls uh, and adults. Got, yeah, yeah, they, they've got to. I have a freaking uh, Lego Batman mo- Batmobile, like a three thousand five hundred piece Batmobile. I bought myself Jesus. at Christmas. I, I can show you, it's massive. Dude, it's awesome. awesome. Fucking bust it out! All right, all right, all right. I'll, go grab it. I'll go grab it. Yeah, well, that was the thing that um, Lego figured out. Lego had did a study back in the eighties or seventies about how boys and girls play differently. And this is why they created the Lego figures to be specifically how they are, because what they figured out was, oh, nice. That's like the Tim Burton Batmobile. Yeah, it's the coolest yeah. one. That's a good uh, one, actually. That's so the best. this thing is like 3,500 pieces, I think, it? or 3,300. <laughs> and it's actually bigger than the box when it's made, Yeah, which is insane. Like, oh, if yeah. you look at the dimensions, that wheel is the actual size of the wheel. It's nice. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's gonna be freaking huge. But yeah, I'm excited. Cool. It's gonna take forever. You got that for Christmas, you said? Uh, kind of. Nice. Right on. Yeah, well, like I was saying with Lego, technically, they- technically it was Hanukkah because I'm Jewish. Oh, nice. Oh, well, yeah. The holidays <laughs> very good. Dave Shabbat <laughs> Shalom. I had oh, I have eight days to excuse my purchases instead of one. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, the holidays, man. Them just we're still we're all still recovering for them. <laughs> I I'm recovering from CES. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that'll eat you alive in Vegas. That was gnarly. yeah. I'm a master. It's been it's my twelfth year, so I don't get sick anymore. Nice. Damn. How was that? Um, it was it was good. It was busy. What were some, what were some highlights? Um, I posted a lot of YouTube videos. I wrote some articles on Forbes, but uh. Basically, uh, it was it was a lot of fun. I am absolutely excited for the new Samsung 49 inch curved 5K monitor. Um, <laughs> it's like got a 1,000 R curvature, so I have three monitors right now. But it will replace my three monitors with one. Um, and it has 240 hertz refresh rate and uh, one millisecond response time and 1,000 nit HDR brightness. Wow. Yeah, that's a big boy. That's a big boy, and they're probably only going to charge fifteen hundred bucks for it. I mean, that's how much. Like, isn't an Apple monitor like two grand? My uh, no, they're like six. What yeah, my, the, new, the new Apple monitors? Uh, yeah. yeah, they're like six grand. <laughs> my uh, XDR display. Let's see, XDR display five grand, but the the stand is a grand, so it's six grand. Kenny, what do you do if you don't have a stand? Uh, you have- use your Visa mounts, right? You have those mounted brackets, so you have like, yeah, you could use that if you don't want to use theirs. Um, but yeah, it's six grand, and I love how on if you go on BNH, it literally says stand not included. 
Damn. Leopold Leopold saying again that the Lego Death Star version 2 is around $400. Yeah, I was going to get the Death Star, but they sold out. Um, so that's the thing. Those are the only toys. more than 400 That's not true. It's more than 400 dude. I think <laughs> the Death Star is 500 and they had a Star Destroyer, which was 700 Jesus. And the Star Destroyer is huge. It's yeah. like freaking like that big. Wow. Massive. But yeah, if I ever got one of those things, I would totally buy the lighting kits for it too, just to have the lights. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're you're already that far in the hole. You might as well make it. May, might as well make it cool. Might as well, you know, put your Raspberry Pi in there, you know. Have well, a Google, uh, Google Assistant enabled. Yeah. <laughs> Star Destroyer. Max got a <laughs> All right, I, I gotta hop off. I just realized I have dinner with my mom and sister, but I'll be I'll I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah, thanks. We might be. Who knows how long we'll be doing this? But, yeah, yeah, I might be back you, home by then. You want to comment your link or right. you send your uh, YouTube stuff? Yeah, I'll send them over. Here. Cool, man. Thanks. Good chatting. No problem. Good talking to you too. All right. Uh, yeah, I was talking about how uh, with the uh, the Lego stuff. Yeah, they had figured out that basically, like boys and girls will play uh, differently. With toys, like basically when you have a Batman toy, a little boy will take Batman and make Batman, like they'll imagine themselves doing Batman stuff, like fighting crime and jumping over rooftops and, you know, driving the Batmobile. They'll imagine themselves doing that. Whereas when a girl plays with a Batman toy, she'll make Batman go to the store and have tea and do things that they would do. They project themselves onto Batman. And that's kind of why Lego is good because they've figured out this like medium but again, that's kind of back to what I was saying with um, uh, Twilight. We got Angel back in here. Yo, what's I'm up, just, man? I'm sending you guys uh, the links. I promised. Oh yeah, no worries, man. My just, man. Uh, so, what was your YouTube channel about? Uh, just stuff, cool stuff I see in tech. Okay, tech, tech mostly. All right. Yeah, I work in tech. Yeah, this is like the first time I'm doing this with people. I like it. This streamyard shit's really fun. I might like just never leave my house again. Just like. <laughs> You know, have 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 in depth discussions with people from the comfort of my own home. Oof. All right, I gotta hop off. I just realized an article I published got a lot of views. <laughs> All right, man. I'm gonna be in trouble. I'll talk Congratulations. To you later. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, man, thank you guys for being here this whole time because I remember I did that Game of Thrones rant and I uh, just basically fucking talked to myself for like an hour and a half. So we've been going for like two hours. Can I ask you a question? Dude, you can ask me all the questions. You don't need to ask if you ask a question. Just ask them. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> why, the so hell did they, why did they have stormtroopers on the, the last three when clearly droids are far superior, especially with AI that we have now? The um, first three, episode one through three, all had droid warfare. And then. Uh, I think that's kind of what they were showing was that the droids aren't as good as humans. The droids were faulty and stuff. Uh, and that's why in the prequels they use droids, and then in the original, then they use clone troopers, and then they use stormtroopers, who I guess are enlisted. But yeah. I think the idea is that the droids aren't as good as troopers. But it's good. I mean, it'd be good to use a mix of both. Like that's kind of what I liked about the Mandalorian is when they showed those prequel destroyer droids destroying the Mandalorian's uh, hometown when he was a little kid. Yeah, that's fucked up. That. <laughs> that was cool memberberry stuff. Like sometimes the memberberry stuff is good. Like. Yeah. You know, um, like the member berry stuff wasn't good. So, so in that instance, it's good because we need killer robots that are destroying the city. Oh, well, they've already designed a killer robot from the prequels. Like, let's just use that. What's not cool is like in Solo when, again, this problem, the scene there when they're doing the uh, train robbing uh, homegirl, she gets attacked by those um, those little surveillance drones from Empire, Empire Strikes Back. And those things are not... You know, they're not like attack droids. Like they're little, they're little surveillance droids that are used to spy on people. But they, they, yeah. they like, you know, we need droids that are going to go help protect this train track. And that's a, that's an incorrect use of member berries. They should have designed a new droid for that purpose. You know, Ugh. I just yeah. think that they didn't have like, you know, why waste storage trooper life? But imagine how much it costs to fucking make those guys on that. Ooh, yeah, well, that's yeah, that's. You know. Know. So it used to not matter things about like fuel and resources, 
But in the last one, you start making fuel an issue. Hyperfuel becomes an issue. But then, you know, you have to start at if fuel becomes an issue, then you have to start asking about other resources. Like how the fuck did the empire emperor build this final order? Where did these men come from that operate these these uh, death these uh, uh god damn it, what are they called? The Star Destroyers. You know, you gotta have at least there's like a, like several, like I think thirty to a hundred thousand people. Let me look this up. How many people are in a Star Destroyer? But like where Dude, do- that's gonna have a huge garrison. So the uh so as you may know, I live in San Diego, and we have a large um, Navy population here. Well, we have three fucking um, aircraft carriers in San Diego right now, and I think each one of those have like four or 5,000 people that live on them. That's an aircraft yeah, carrier. I just looked it up. A Star Destroyer has 37,000 people. So each one of those has 37,000 people, and it's like, where do they come from? Like, how did you enlist this many people without anyone noticing? Or did the empire just, the emperor just conjure this all up from the force? In which case, it's like, that's that's a whole other rabbit hole to fall down. But, you know, the idea that <clears throat> earlier, like, um, Emperor Palpatine shoots lightning at Mace Windu. Mace Windu reflects it with his lightsaber, and the emperor gets all gross and ugly, but then the emperor shoots Mace Windu off of the balcony and kills him. Now, apparently, if Mace Windu just had two lightsabers like Rey did, she would, he would have killed the Emperor because apparently using two lightsabers to deflect the light force, r- lightning will kill, will kill the Emperor. But then again, it's like I said earlier, like how do you know he's actually dead this time? If he can survive the Return of the Jedi, like how did he survive? You know, <laughs> he's just going to keep coming back. And, uh, you know, it would have been cooler to see, to have Snoke as weird as he was. Like, you know, the problem is killing him off in Last Jedi. The problem is saying Luke's, uh, Ray's parents are nothing. There's just so many things that uh, the uh, Last Jedi did that really put the people making the final one in a bad predicament. You know, Luke Skywalker's dead. Han Solo's dead. Leia, who's played by Carrie Fisher, is alive, but Carrie Fisher's dead. And it's just like, dude, what am I supposed to do here? Like, you know, so J.J. Abrams, like, I feel like he did his best, but it's just, it's it's too little, too late, too much. Like, it's a, it's a valiant effort, but like, like uh, Angela was saying, you're trying to appease too many people at once. When in fact, if you just make something tried and true, take like horror movies, for example, like, you have people who love horror movies and people who don't want to watch horror movies. And sometimes those people who don't like horror movies will be convinced to watch a good horror movie if it's really good. You make a horror movie that's just tried and true. The horror fans are speaking up. They love it. Average moviegoers are seeing it. They're liking it. This is how you'll convince people to get out of their comfort zone and see things that they didn't think they would see and then maybe even enjoy it. Like, you know, that's why I feel like Battlestar Galactica is yeah. like that shit. Is Don't like care. Sci-fi, super nar- nerdy. But like once you get sucked in, like, you know, you don't have to be Fire. a fucking nerd like Battlestar. Yeah. Fuck, Cylons, man, you know, fuck Cylons. Well, that's what I was. I remember like I posted about it earlier and someone had said like, you know, they didn't like these agenda driven films. And someone asked them to elaborate on what do you mean agenda driven? And it's like, yeah, the agenda is plain and simple. The agenda is sacrifice your current fan base for a better fan base, fan base that you are more proud of. But the problem is this fan base does not exist. Like he was saying, um, like Angela was saying earlier, the you know trying to appeal to mass audiences, it's terrible. And also, like I was saying, Star Wars already appealed to mass audiences. You already had something that everyone was familiar with. You didn't have to try hard. You could have just done what you what you should have done. You know, just like like and I know you probably don't want to just remake one of these books that had come out because I haven't seen any of the books. I haven't seen the Clone War show. I haven't really although everyone says you gotta watch the Clone War show, and I, I probably will check it out. But as far as me with Star Wars, I'm one of those guys I love Star Wars. I love the first two movies. Return of the Jedi is good, the rest are shit. So why do I love it so much? I don't know. It's like it's like being with an abusive uh, uh, partner, you know. It's like I, you just keep going back for more, even though you know it's all shit. Dude, I don't understand 
I saw a guy yesterday pull up to a park and his like I don't know if it was his girlfriend or something or I think it was his car, but it said like his license plate said Lady Vader and then it was like all blacked <laughs> out so it was, like Darth Vader and then on the back it said like something about like the my passenger like my girlfriend's like a Sith Lord or something and it's just like where the fuck are all these hardcore fans? You know, now it's just like yeah. cool and douchey. I wonder. And, yeah, I wonder if we can interview this girl. I wonder if we can interview this girl. I mean, she, we obviously wouldn't, but it's like, what are her thoughts on this on these new movies? That's the thing. Is like, there are women who do like Star Wars, but they hate these fucking new ones just like the real fans do. Also, you know, like, also Vince is asking uh, for some shockers, so let's all three of us just throw a little shocker in there. All right, there you go, Vince. Um, <laughs> we should do it. Like, <laughs> uh, powers combined. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. That's for you, Vince. Um, but uh, what was I saying? <laughs> getting sh- getting shocked, sidetracked on the so- shockers. It's okay, man. I uh, I think that they have definitely done a uh, significant. Well. First off, the the newest movie was a they did a good effort on it. And I'll give it to them. They did. Yeah, all three of them were good. But they, uh, to my point before, I think that they, in order to continue on, they're gonna have to pull some crazy ass shit off. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, about. I mean, it's gonna be. I know what they're gonna do. They're gonna cater. They're gonna keep doing this Mandalorian thing. Like stick to the show. Stick to Disney Plus. Stick to. Um, smaller stuff and hopefully you know hopefully hand the series off to uh kevin not kevin feige but um the guys who were making the mandalorian john favreau and the dude who made clone wars um his name is blanking on me maloney dave filoni is that his name Uh, but yeah dude i mean as far as uh, the rise of skywalker itself like we have not really even touched all the issues with the movie i mean dude like as far as come on i want to hear you fucking worked up man you're way too calm your big fucking shaboom eat one of these things i'll give him a shameless plug really quick they're uh these edibles are so good they taste like fucking pure like blackberries are you starting it's been like two hours so are you feeling it now yeah yeah i'm like always feeling it Well, yeah, that's just. Are you feeling it, bro? You feeling it, man? Let the hatred flow through you. The Star Wars hatred. Hey, yeah, that's like. Hey, let's get something straight. There's no Star Wars hatred, man. I want to keep yeah. things nice and positive around here. I, yeah, I mean, I got to say, like, the biggest Star Wars fans are the angriest. But yeah, the Disney Star Wars, it's just like, I can't, can't, can't get behind it. I'm trying. I want it to be good. But yeah, as far as just Rise of the Skywalker goes, it's just like, we've already discussed like the dead speak is a problem. How is the Emperor alive? Why is he sending out this warning message and ruining his uh, his uh, surprise attack? Um, how is it that Emperor Palpatine was behind it all? Uh, you know, who was Snoke? Like, no one knew who Snoke was. Like, that was just something that everyone knew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so then it shows up, the movie starts off, and Kylo Ren is on a... Uh, Huh? He's from like Snoke's from like the canon or whatever, like the books or some shit. It's like, right. but they don't. Yeah, but how the fuck would you, I even include him? I had thought that everyone knows who Snoke is, but the audience doesn't, and we'll slowly learn. But it turns out like no one knew who he was. I guess like no one knew where he came from or what is going on. At the beginning of the movie, we have Kylo Ren on. I guess it's Mustafar, uh, Darth Vader's home planet. Um, or his ba- what place where he sets up shop. He's like fighting all these like weird rogue aliens on this volcano planet. Why is he fighting them? Who are they? If they are on Mustafar, they would be sympathetic towards the Sith. So why wouldn't they just like help him find it? They don't explain it. Does Kylo Ren does this awful moonwalk kill? Yeah, I don't know yeah. very bad. Looks awful. And then uh, for some reason, Darth Vader. I assume it's Darth Vader's wayfinder. He's just buried in the middle of some forest for some reason. Uh, he gets it, and then bam, cuts right to them going to uh, Exegol. They don't, you know, the pacing in this movie is fucking breakneck speed. 
J.J. Abrams does a very good job. People who say they liked the movie, here's why you liked it. The movie's going so fast and so hard that you have no time to critically think about what you're watching. And it never lets down. So you never get to be like, well, wait. Huh? And even if you are asking a question, it just moves right along. So you don't have time to think about it. You can't dwell on it. Um, if you ever watch the originals, there's plenty of moments where everything just kind of quiets down and they all sit and they're like kind of like a re in between plot points kind of area where we can discuss broader subjects like the Force or the Galactic Emperor, Empire. You know, we can have these moments where we kind of collect. And this is like every movie. You need to have movies that kind of let up every once in a while. So you kind of know what's happening and you kind of get to absorb it all. But anyway, Ray is like, uh, you know, this Darth Vader. Okay, so we got the Luke Skywalker. Uh, sorry, I'm just like rambling names. Kylo yeah. Ren, Moonwalk Hill. All the Death Star attachments are now on every battleship, which really raises the stakes too high. Also, how did you compress this technology? You know, how did the Emperor do it? It doesn't matter. Uh, all of Leia's dialogue is made from, you know, deleted scenes and all the fucking lines she says are vague. And then we just kind of just build the plot around these like six or seven lines we have Ray, uh, Leia saying, and then she just kind of dies. <laughs> I mean, it's just not a good salute to the character at all. And then the idea that the Emperor was actually talking to Kylo Ren the whole time. Like he was never speaking to Darth Vader. Darth Vader, we, you know, the Emperor confesses it was him all along. Wouldn't that shatter your entire worldview? Like, I killed my father because he was all told me to do that. He had more emotional issues than like 95% of the teenagers out there these days. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. I kind of like that in the uh, first one. You have a moody, broody villain. But like I said, it would have been better if Ray killed him and became the main villain, or he stopped being broody and just went hard in the paint became a hardcore bad guy but the idea that every movie he constantly wavers back and forth it's like it wasn't a surprise that he was going to turn good in this one you know and yeah. uh the idea that he does that little when he gets the lightsaber from behind his back and he does the loop the hand solo it seemed out of character with him because it seemed like there wasn't a funny bone in his body you know he uh, had a funny bone in his body there's no way but yeah and also the idea that the emperor wants kylo ren to you know, help him. It's like, why? Kylo Ren has killed every fucking master he's had or attempted to kill every master he's had. So why would you want Kylo Ren to be on your side? Yeah, Kylo no. Ren is asking, like, what would you give me? It's like, I already am in charge of the entire fucking Galactic Republic at this point. What could the Emperor offer him? You know, it's just... It ain't so working out, Kylo. It ain't working out, man. Maybe it's time yeah. to start looking for another job, dude. Yeah, and then you've got these strange, like the idea is the Exegol is totally hidden, but the first person that shows up to Exegol, the Emperor immediately shows him what's going on right away and put docks all the ships in the atmosphere. Why not just leave them underground until it's time to go? I don't, you know, there's so, hey, dude, how are you doing that? Nice, green screen. Don't, don't, no pornography, no, uh, no, no, no adult images, please. <laughs> oh, dude. You want to say, not Where's Paul Britt? What kind of guy you think I am? Yeah, this is funny. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just down the list again. Like, another huge problem is uh, I thought that was funny that the only place you can actually hear this um, uh, broadcast by the Emperor is on Fortnite. Oh, Fortnite. Did you know that? That's the only place that you can hear this game. And it's like, that was just kind of showing you this kind of desperation they had to market it, to get people amped about it. We're going to put the Emperor Palpatine's broadcast in Fortnite. To, and, I, you know, it's not featured at once in the movie. We never hear it in the movie. But, yeah, the, the message goes something along the lines of, uh, you know, the final order's coming and, you know, you have no, uh, no choice but to surrender and blah, 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 join the, to join the final arm, uh, the final order. I got a question for you. Yeah. So – how come, for some crazy ass reason, why did they not have any uh, the Ewoks have any representation in Congress? Um, I would imagine because Ewoks are like simple animals. They're like yeah, like gorillas. Like they can't really. They're like very smart <laughs> gorillas. Harambe. <laughs> but I did. I you know I didn't mind the two little Ewoks at the end of Rise of Skywalker, but. 
Yeah, seeing I think that seems out of place seeing Ewoks like on a council meeting. Like I don't even know you know, they're like basically like highly advanced like squirrels. Like I don't think they're too smart to I mean, I don't know. Maybe could they be allowed on the tribal on like the on the council? <laughs> sure, but I'm willing to bet that if they were shit would be a lot cooler, you know. What I, mean? I like this idea that the um the Ewoks are actually very brutal creatures and they, you know, they cannibalize each other and they live in like <laughs> hardcore tribal warfare with other Ewoks, you know, kind of like real gorillas, you know? Or what uh, if, what if they had like telepathic powers and, you know, they were just talking, you know, let's, human- see, let's see some, let's see a, an Ewok on the Jedi council, like a, a force sensitive Ewok. Yeah. Why are they, where is it on Ewok um, Jedi? You know? Well, before, like, I guess with The Last Jedi, I think the problem is The Last, like, Jedi, like, anyone, everyone is kind of in tune with the Force now. Uh, being in tune with the Force doesn't seem to make you special, uh, and it just comes very naturally to people. Whereas in the originals, it's like you have to work very hard and train yourself very hard to master the Force. Like, it's one thing to be in tune with the Force. It's another thing to, you know have control over the force and have like force powers. Yeah. it's a good point. But yeah, again, this is something like I would have liked to have seen Finn being more of a, a Jedi, like a force sensitive character and like watching him like fuck up a lot and fail. And then Ray is also this excellent Jedi character. And it would have been such a huge twist if she had become the bad guy. And now Finn has to like, like, well, well you know, Finn would have been fucked. Like that would have been. That's why it would have been a more interesting movie to see him, you know, defeat her or something, or 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 convince her to join the good side again. You know, I dare you to say that to an Ewok. Say yeah. what to an Ewok, William? You kind of fuck on that one, dude. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Are are Ewoks smarter than we think they are? Than I think they are. I think they're kind of, you know, I don't <laughs> think they're very smart. Are I mean, you sure? talking uh, proletariat? <laughs> I don't know. I would just call them, um, yeah, like extra, like above average intelligent, above intelligent, uh, like some kind of primate creature. Uh, speaking a crude language, I'd assume, right? And uh, having, you know, primal like cavemen. You know, they're basically little cavemen. Like, would you want a caveman on the city council, on the Galactic Council? No. Yeah, I don't think like I mean it's a I mean we could put them on, but I don't know how much they can contribute. You know, the Jawas are pretty dope, and the Sand People definitely had some. Uh, what a sure. lot of <laughs> yeah. yeah, in Empire Strikes Back, the uh, Cloud City. You know, where like Hans is uh, frozen and all that shit, and we get his hand cut off. What the fuck's up with that? Empire was great because you know, like oh, the sequel. Cool. What's that? That was one of the best ones. I think it is the best one because um, not only is it the be- one of the best sequels of all time, it is one of the best movies of all time. You're talking about Empire Strikes Back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the okay. best one. Yeah, exactly. If you're, if you're well, person, reasoning. Okay, well, like I said, if you're a person who thinks that Empire is the most boring, um, then, yeah, I mean, we're obviously – we're going to have some differences of opinion. But the Empire is the best one because they took – you know, it's a great example of taking the original movie and not rehashing everything with the sequel, like doing new stuff with it. It's also really concentrating the character development. And this is the key reason why the original Star Wars movies are the best and why certain movies work and other ones don't is because the characters, we relate to them and we want to watch them succeed through, you know, insurmountable odds. Like I'll say with Neo and Marty McFly and, you know, these are great – Luke Skywalker. These are great characters. When when Luke is told that he can't go do his thing, he's got to stay another harvest on the moisture farm, and he looks out very sadly on that binary sunset, the music starts swelling. The music's like a cheap shot. The music is like cheating really, but it does like really tell you inside like how to, how this how this boy feels. He wants to get out. He wants to do new things. And then when his par- his uh, Aunt Beru and Uncle Ben are killed, at this point he is forced to leave. And it's like, you know, a few minutes ago you were begging to go on an adventure. And now that you're forced to, it's like, it's scary. It's like, what's what's coming, you know? 
And in Empire, we really get to uh, what makes Empire the best is first of all, like the love story, really making a believable romance between uh, Han and Leia. And also the fact that, yeah, the Empire strikes back. The Empire wins this one. Like, yeah, it's they, not, they're, they're not out of the fucking woodwork. And it's really building up anticipation, anticipation for this is a franchise. This is going to have an ending soon. Like, it's, it's building up. And it was also, a very uh, emotional film to watch. It was. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, dude. think how long between the uh, Empire Strikes Back and A New Hope? How much time between those? It's been about three years, two or three years, I think. And then also the thing about Luke is he goes and trains with Yoda, and all that stuff is excellent because, you know, when you first meet Yoda, you don't know that's Yoda. You're going to meet this great Jedi warrior named Yoda, and then this little green frog guy starts, like, <laughs> harassing you and being uh, just a like, weirdo. It's kind of a weirdo, too, man. Yeah, he's doing that on purpose. And then when Luke Skywalker is, like, fucking, like, losing his temper, that's when Yoda comes clean and, like, starts talking to, like, I guess Obi Wan, but he's like, yeah, this child, this guy has no patience. I can't train him, and that's when he realizes, like, whoa, you're Yoda. And then Yoda becomes very stoic. Like the all of a sudden, there's like a mass change where he's like, yes, I'm Yoda, and he becomes very stoic and very intense. And he tells him, like, yeah, you're going to be afraid. Like this is going to be hard. Yeah. You're about to do your training. And the thing is, like, what Yoda teaches everyone about the Force. That's what makes Empire so cool, because kind of hear briefly about the forest through obi-wan in the first one but in empire like he really breaks it down like it's it's all around us it's all this it's what it's the it's the energy that binds all living things you know but now in the new ones the forest is basically the superpower that gets people out of sticky jams and it's like whenever anyone's in trouble it's like up oh, the force like finn when he's like the tower's on this ship how do you know i have a feeling and it's like so now you can just like write off any fucking thing by just saying Dude, i had a feeling finn did not know what's up man i'm just gonna go ahead and say that finn he he didn't have any connection to any of that shit he didn't have any connection to the damn force so here's the part where they're in the sand pit and they're sinking into the quicksand and and he's like ray i have to tell you something you he immediately sure you immediately he's going to assume, you assume he's going to tell her I love you. He's got a crush on Ray, right? Yeah. That's what I thought. It turns yeah. out I was wrong. It turns out that he was going to say, and it's this was all expanded upon in like earlier drafts, but that he was going to say like Ray, I'm force sensitive. I have the force. <laughs> That's for real. I'm and the sorry. thing is, it's like, dude, we're about to die sinking in a sand pit. What good is that information to me now? Like, why are you telling me this? Like, what is this? Is that really like a deathbed rosebud type? thing to get off your chest right before you die <laughs> i have force and here's the other thing they're sinking in the sand it's so stupid because they fall on this quicksand pit and they sit there on top for just the right amount of time then when the ship goes away and they're safe that's when they start sinking so they don't start sinking right away then when they start sinking i immediately assume that ray was going to use the force kind of like how she lev levitated herself and all those rocks like Get all your buddies, like float them out of the air, and you know. But if she doesn't, they don't do that. Apparently, they're all going to sink and die and suffocate. But luckily, they fall through these caverns, and there's all these caverns. So how is the quicksand like suspended above them? How is the quicksand not falling down and filling these caverns? It makes no sense at all. And then there's like a giant snake creature in there, and Ray does the force healing, which we haven't even talked about that. Yeah, that was kind of wild. That was, that's never been brought up in any fucking Star Wars film. Ever. And here's the thing: when it has been brought up in other, you know, material, other, other, uh, you know, stuff besides the movies, anybody could not, force heal. Anakin would have been like, you know, force heal, yeah. fucking busted out. Burn out. Mother, why didn't he save Natalie Portman? Why didn't Obi Wan save Qui Gon Jinn? Why, you know, the problem with force healing people from back from the grave is it ruins the fucking franchise. You got a nice. <laughs> Going, look at Brit's uh, bean shit going on back here, yeah, though. Brit's knowing how to use the software pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it, what, what kind of code is that that you're using there? Probably. It's on the settings. Settings, yeah. Nice. There's like a green screen feature or something? Yeah. I wish well, my cool. flashlight had one of those. I mean, we've been talking for two and a half hours. I still have a lot to go, so you so guys can jump out any time or whatever, but yeah, let's just keep doing this, and you know, next time I'm definitely down to do this again, talk about something else, like Paul Verhoeven movies or something, but anyway, back to uh, the, 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 the snake cavern. Um, healing, <laughs> you, you basically heal the snake, 
uh, in the in the previous like uh, other stuff besides the movies, like force healing exists, but it takes a long time. You have to like have the person like in a coma and you slowly heal them, and it takes like a lot out of you. Like that's something that would probably kill you. That sounds like something that would that should kill you because it's better uh, thematically, it's better plot wise. Because the idea that you can just bring people back from the dead without any kind of sacrifice or repercussions, it makes for really lousy storytelling. Because now, thanks to Ray, it's like we know everyone's safe. And I'd like to point out, this is actually pretty funny. The snake is wounded, and Ray heals the snake. And then the snake kind of shows them the way out by knocking a hole out of the ground, which is convenient. Later in the movie, Poe is like shot in the arm and he's like, ah, oh, it hurts. And Ray doesn't do shit. She doesn't fucking heal his ass. She just kind of lets him walk around with like a wound in his arm for the rest of the movie. Uh, I don't understand that. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that was somewhat tying into the uh, ice caves that were on Hoth whenever um, whatever that fucking thing was that was trying to eat him was there? Oh, uh, the are you talking about that Yeti monster in Empire? Yeah. What were those things called? Those things were know. shitty. It was pissed. Yeah, that thing was scary. And then that was a deleted scene where, um, you know, that was one thing where – this is like the kind of thing that Luke Skywalker is like. And Mark Hamill said this. He was talking about how he didn't like how Mark how Luke Skywalker cut that creature's arm off. It's like <laughs> it's too much. It's like just run away. You don't have to like – hurt the animal so badly give it like a life-altering wound you know but he took the force too too seriously yeah but remember in that movie like he's trying so hard to just to get that lightsaber to come up to his hand you know and it's like it takes it takes effort to make things float with your mind you know it shouldn't be like super easy unless maybe you're like some kind of special species like yoda maybe that's the whole point is all the yodas are force sensitive is that a thing i don't know It'd be cool. It'd be also. It could also be overused, you know, if all the Yodas are special, you know, like that. But yeah, you know, Yoda's that, actually a piece of shit. He got kicked off his planet. Yeah, I was hoping it'd be funny if Baby Yoda was actually just pretending to be a baby. You know, he could actually totally speak and everything. And he's like, like forty years old, and he's like yeah. already his last foster parents. Like the baby Yoda sneaks off and has like a cigarette and a drink. He's like, God damn, I can't. I don't know how much longer I could be quiet around this guy. <laughs> they, they made a movie. Huh? They made a movie about that. Not Yoda, but like of a midget doing that. Oh, oh, where he pretends to be like a child or something. Yeah. Was that a real story or did that? <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> that like an actual dude to like adopt this like Ukrainian chick, and uh... <laughs> it's like a small midget shows up to your house or a tiny person. Excuse me. She was like, uh, blind. <laughs> she's <yeah>. like 40. <laughs> well, I remember there was like a movie or a story, or I think it was a news story where like, like it was like a creepy doll that wasn't there before that was like uh, freaking out the kid and the mom didn't know what the hell it was. And it turned out it was like a man, like a small man, like hanging out in their closet. <laughs> like, I don't remember if that was true or just like one of those scary stories. But <laughs> that happened to me. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> um, picture of one. <laughs> yeah. Can you screen share? I think that's a thing. Maybe I'll be that guy someday. Maybe I could be that guy. No, just yeah. go to your cam slash mic settings, and you'll see a, an area. Yeah. I'm trying to find the new. Damn. Damn. What's up? Oi. What you saying, Zach? I guess the beans um, is just a good one. If you had to pick between um Is this a very fucking kill thing? If you had to pick between <clears throat> sucking on Jar Jar Binks toes or <laughs> or uh, or shaving completely shaving head to toe Chewbacca. <laughs> with, a, with a non-electric razor. <laughs> oh, which one would you pick? <laughs> That'd be pretty hard to do. Super easy. I would do the Chewbacca shaving because even though that would take forever, it'd be all worth it to see what Chewbacca looks like shaved because that would just be hilarious. You know? <laughs> but then you got to suck his toes after. I left that part. No, no, <laughs> oh, turns out... That seems like way less work. 
<laughs> really where you're sucking toes, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Curveball is Chewbacca's toes are all dicks. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think if I had to choose between sucking Jar Jar toes and and Wookie toes, I'd probably pick Jar Jar's toes. Oh my dog! I feel like the whoop. I feel like whoopy toes would be way grosser. Like their hair, it's like bad and fur and mud and shit in him. He's got like Jarner's got like flippers, right? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Jar Jar, Jar Jar. Jar. Cookie, <laughs> cookie, cookie. Oh, Jar Jar. I think Jar Jar got a bad rap. Do you have any thoughts about the theory that Jar Jar was like a uh, yeah, master? It all. Jar Jar was behind it all. He was like the Sith Lord who was like, <laughs> I've just heard this shit. It's stupid. It's so dumb. Jar Jar is Snoke. Yeah. That would have been hilarious if like, you know, we finally meet Kylo Ren's master and it's Jar Jar. <laughs> His fucking jaws would have hit the ground, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this is cool. This bean vision. Let's see if I can just get you guys out here. Uh, we're gonna solo layout. Oh, look at this. You guys are all oh, yeah. these are all into the beans. It's pretty cool. Boy. You think Bean Lord's a fucking joke in Zach? Zach, Zach, what did you think about when uh when Ky when Kylo Ren and Ray, it's revealed that they have this dyad technology where when their forces are brought together. They somehow rejuvenate the emperor and make him get his fingertips and his eyeballs back, and then he gets somehow after he gets better, he just goes over to the stage left, and then he gets new red clothes. What did you think about of his new red outfit? Like I thought that was funny. I just pictured him kind of like after he gets back rejuvenated, he just kind of goes over here and like puts on a new outfit, just like all right, here's my new. I don't red think I he did that. Yeah, he starts wearing like a big like black and red emperor robes and his eyeballs are back and he starts talking about how he's got, like, he like like got his fingers back and shit like that, but I don't I didn't remember that. He gets, he gets new digs too. He starts he's got like these new black and red emperor clothes. I actually thought that was pretty funny. I like that part. I didn't remember uh, that. But I, here's one thing I was confused about was if he died, like he was trying to get Ray to kill him, right? Because if he died, Why does he then, just kill himself? well, the, then I it was like if she killed him, then she became the the master of the dark side or something. He, he, would, like, he would like possess her. Or something. I think no. what he was trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then they killed him, and yeah, right. did, I guess. Exactly. It's stupid. Thank you. Yeah. And also, like, why doesn't the emperor just like kill himself in her vicinity? Like, why does it matter that she has to kill him? Also, well, I think the point was that he, that he could only take it over, take her over, or something if she did it. Right, but she right. still ended up doing it, right? Because, like I said, she had two lightsabers instead of Mace Windu with just one. Like mm. you have two lightsabers to deflect lightning, you're good. Apparently, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Um, there's just so much, so much more to get into. Like, for instance, when. At the very beginning, when Chewie and uh, Finn and, and Poe are playing space chess, and then they're like about to meet this informant, they're going to get information from the informant. <laughs> so they they meet up with the other ship. This alien guy shows up, and they literally take this big black cord and plug it into R two, and they're trying to send the message. And the message is literally like two sentences: like Palpatine's still alive. He's amassed a giant army. They're about to attack attack from Exegol. It's like yeah. why don't you just tell them that instead of spending like five minutes like uploading this message? It's so weird. And then, and then like they say, "Hey, how do we thank you?" And he says, "Win the war." And they're like, "Okay, well, you just told us that the Emperor's still alive, and they all have millions of Death Star ships. That's kind of, that's like a tall order to tell us to just win the war like that." It seems like the news we're about to give is very bad. It's looking pretty bleak, you know. But yeah, then we like to see that dude's head cut off. That guy was. Who was that guy? He was like some weird alien informant who was talking to Hux, because I guess Hux was the informant all along. And then later, uh, Kylo Ren slams down that dude's severed head on that table. Nice. <laughs> Ooh, nice. That's pretty cool. That was the guy 
Oh, I didn't realize that was going to get that. Right. So, and then that part's so weird because that's when Kylo Ren tells his, like, Empire friends, his First Order buddies, like, hey, Palpatine's still alive, and we're going to join him. And naturally, one guy is like, how the fuck do we know this is true? Kylo Ren's like, because I saw it. He's like, okay, well then, he asked some other question. I don't even remember what it was. It was something along the lines of, like, okay, well, what does he want? Or how do we, how do we know he's going to give his part of the bargain or something like that? And then Kylo Ren just kills him. <laughs> it's like... Why is anyone following Kylo Ren at this point? Like, it, it's so bizarre. Because so he bizarre. has the power. Yeah, I guess. But he just admitted that now there's like a more powerful guy. So, and then I thought Whoa. it was very cool. Who's going to be more powerful? Like, fucking Ray when she dies? Is she going to become like the ultimate shit of power? Or like, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, the whole point of the trilogy is Ray is the bestest ever at everything. And, you know. <laughs> Everything Luke Skywalker and Anakin Skywalker ever did is meaningless because Rey came along and, and saved it all, saved us all for real. What does that actually say? Yeah, what is that? It's like they're holding beans. The CIA, CIA being uh, Oh. That's, that's interesting. I didn't know they like beans. This, this, this chat is devolving into madness. I like it. Three men discussing Star Wars equals Bonar. Bonar is an anagram for something. Or, or initialism for something. <laughs> Matt, did you even see the new one? Yeah. Everyone I saw it. Brit I saw Brit it in theaters with a fucking $9 fucking medium thing of popcorn. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing. The thing about this new Star Wars in the last two is uh, The Force Awakens made a shitload of money. And the last two didn't make as much because even though everyone saw all three movies... The Force Awakens had people seeing it multiple times. Well, whereas the new ones, uh, can I add it on that? Do you think everybody just like straight blew their load on the Force Awakens and they just didn't have anything left for the other two? No, what happened was um, the Force Awakens, it was like a bait and switch where you were the problem is like you're 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 baited by thinking, okay, this movie is building up. We're gonna get the band back together, basically. <laughs> like basically they had a chance to put the Beatles back together. And then fucking John Lennon was killed. Like, you had all four Beatles, and then you decided, like, hey, let's wait a while to get them back together. And then John Lennon's killed, like, a week later, and now you blew it. Like, <laughs> so the problem is, you know, you have this bait and switch where you think you're going to get a new um, Star Wars movie. When, in fact, it's basically a new science fantasy series and that's basically Star Wars in name only. Super weird, because... Uh, <laughs> Can I ask another question? Yeah. This one's going to be a weird one. Sure. <laughs> what? Drink, um, six glasses of the stuff that Luke was drinking from those... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Would you rather... Um, Eat twelve of the frog things that Jabba the Hutt was eating in one sitting in Return of the Jedi. Do I have to eat them live and swallow them whole like Jabba did, or can I cook them and shit? Yeah, oh, you gotta eat them the same way. Oh uh, yeah, I would do the milk, the Merkamel milk. Six of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, worst case scenario is my body just rejects it and I puke. Probably, uh, I think eating those frog things are a big choking hazard. I could die. So <laughs> probably just pick the milk. But you got uh, kind of a Java vibe going. I loved how uh, slimy that milk was, though. Remember when he takes the bottle off of his lip? And there's like <laughs> a blue fucking smash. Oh, and he makes yeah. that face. Like, he literally, he literally oh, goes like... They chopped out, and that scene stayed in. Like, that's... <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, we but, gotta we got to emasculate Luke as much as possible. Because basically, the the problem is we want to... We want these new characters... <laughs> We want these new characters to be the hot shit. We want everyone to like the new characters. So rather than make the new characters likable or entertaining or relatable, we're just going, is that actually a plate of beans? <laughs> You're fucking losing your shit on these beans, man. <laughs> it's all of beans, but it's all the same, bro. The, it's a bowl of you. beans. A bowl. It's a bowl of beans. That's a bowl of beans. I think this is called augmented reality. 
fuck bean on bean action, dude. Are those, are those refried beans in the bowl? <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Don't die. Technology has really made some advancements. I know. This is the stupidest shit ever. Uh, is it a can of refried beans? Yeah. Not our friends do. <laughs> Dude. Uh... <laughs> the way it's smeared is really. Yeah, what's on this bowl? What's this bowl actually look like? It's beans. It's all beans. It's <laughs> <laughs> clearly beans. Oh, God. Look at it. Nice. You can tilt it. <laughs> oh. Well, what's it? I think we got like six people watching still. Poor souls. Whoa. We still Whoa. got a lot to talk about. Right, right here. Uh, yeah. A good what's, the book. what's that? Ooh, wow. That looks, that's a good one, man. Rather uh, go camping with the sand people that shot at Obi Wan and Luke, or hang out with the uh, green pig people from uh, J- Jabba's uh, lair. Oh, uh, I'd probably hang out with Jawas. I'd probably prefer to hang out with Jawas. Yeah. Because yeah. If they decide to fuck with me, I could probably take them because they're tiny. You know, if they decide to, you know, if anything goes sour, those big pig monsters, I feel like would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who does the most heroin though? Well, Jawas are like dr- they're like junkers, right? get, like, so you'd just be hanging out on that big junker ship and collecting parts and stuff, and yeah, they do uh, well. uh, uh, the sand people that like shoot at you and yell. Oh, like, those fuckers! Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh, this, yeah, the sand people. Out. Yeah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, the little ones are Jawas, right? Yeah. yeah. So what are the, what are the other, they're just called sand people then. No, I, I, pro- I probably hang out with the pig people then because Jabba's Palace would be cool. I'd rather hang out with Jabba's Palace than go just – because, like, the thing about the junker ship with the Jawas is you have that, that cool junker truck to be on. But the pig people, they hang out in Jabba's cool little palace, you know? So there's, like – it's like an opium den, and there's, like, strippers, space strippers, and the rank cars, yeah. like, killing people for entertainment. <laughs> Reaction. <laughs> So, yeah, it seems harder. It seems like a because I don't want to be just hanging around with Tuscan Raiders uh, on their big hairy bird, those big hairy things they ride. Yeah, I don't, uh, that sounds like less fun, just like dancing around the desert. You know, this yacht sounds kind of tight, though. Here's one from Bino Vision. We're, we're, Whoa, cross, hey. we're crossing series here. Would you yeah, rather, uh, <clears throat> down one of those giant eggs from the Mandalorian? Oh, yeah. yeah. Down one of those without stopping, or eat a whole pack of those like inflatable uh, the shit that turns into bread. It's like the instant bread. I you know probably, I'm probably, I'm probably no, eat that. you have to eat the powder and then chug a bunch of water so it expands in your stomach. I'd rather, I'd rather eat the egg. Oh, you're talking about Ray? Like the egg. Provisions she get? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to do that because Ray, it seems like Ray was just kind of surviving on this crap, you know, and it's just like what to live off of. Whereas, like, the eggs seem like a delicacy to those Jawas. Like, they really want that egg. I'm sure it's delicious. It seemed like creamy and rich. And it's like, yeah, that's probably a lot to eat, but <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think having the bread expand in my belly seems that safe. Like, you know, watch it expand too much and like rupture my fucking intestine. That's, yeah. that's the risk you got to take. Yeah, yeah, I do like the egg for show. It's not that bad. The egg, the egg sounded like you know more people. I mean, Jawa, I love <laughs> dude. I love how the Jawas really wanted that egg, and you find out just to eat it. That's all they wanted it for. It's like nice. Yeah. It's it's simple. Good. What were they uh, calling? I don't know. It was that furry egg that came from that creek? I think they just call it the egg. But yeah, that that big horned mammoth laid a big hairy egg. I saw that picture of that hairy egg, and it's like it's like a wook, a wook hatchling or something. They're saying, oh, <laughs> "Jeez, can we talk about something for a second? Yeah. Why did <laughs> why did <laughs> why did the uh, why have the sand people never changed? Man, the sand people look the exact same. Thing. It could be one of those things where uh, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The, they've been living like this for generations, type thing. I don't know. It's like they're like a weird nomadic tribe, oh. tribal people, and apparently they just go around fucking with people and stealing shit and just causing trouble. They're like a gang of like hell's angels, basically, just terrorizing Tatooine. Assholes. It, yeah. Oh. And whatever, 
weren't they on that other island though, or the other planet though too? That you know they went to in the Mandalorian. Were they on there? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Or was that actually Tatooine? I think they actually go back to Tatooine for for the Mandalorian. I want to say that's actually Tatooine, but I could be wrong. I'm so ignorant. Um, no, you're not. <laughs> um, the Mandalorian was interesting though because it felt like they could have been just like a nice like two and a half hour long movie. And then they just kind of added a couple episodes in the middle that kind of padded out, you know? But, like, the two or three episodes at the beginning and the two or three episodes at the end are really, like, a plot. I feel like Bean's up, uh, Bean's up to something. Bean Lord's up to something. Yeah, he's Bean for sure. He's, he's getting what, delete, what kind of beans? Hey, Enzo, what's your favorite kind of beans, man? Um, Like, just to eat, like, flavor-wise? Like, what's my favorite beans? I don't think it really matters if you're eating them or not. I mean, I do. Uh, God, I do like uh, I like refried beans a lot, but I probably have to say, if I could make some like you know million dollar beans, like beanie weenie hobo beans, you know, like where you take like ranch style beans and brown sugar and sausage and peppers and shit, that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. nice. is that me? Hell yeah! That's yeah, good. that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Wow, I didn't do that. Yeah, I guess just clicking pictures. I mean, I can mess with that later, but I'd rather just keep reading this chat. It's a very green screen. Hey, read some questions that people got, or read, read oh, some comments. What, what you James got? Allen, Allen, Allen. Allen. More bean content, please. Seems like Sarah Martian and William Cody Johnson are kind of upset about the shit I had to say about Ewoks. Um, it yeah. seems like Vince saying, my main problem is that they keep recycling the same general story. There's a new evil empire type organization led by this vague Sith, and then they got to stop them. And then they come up with the hero doesn't know their origin, and it turns out they're related to someone or some shit. That's absolutely right. They keep recycling the same shit over and over again. Um, it's like a big, it's a big uh, uh, weapon of some kind. Uh, they just keep getting uh, bigger and bigger. Or I guess in this case, smaller, these these new small lightsaber uh, Death Star cannons. I don't know. It's all dumb. But it seems like most people are just like tuning in and then tuning out. Probably watch it later. I understand. But like I said, in the future, I'm just going to, when someone asks if I have problems with Star Wars, I'm just going to refer them to this video. But the cool, the cool thing is we're still like only halfway through the movie. We haven't talked about the Force healing too much. We haven't talked about Rose Tico. Rose Tico, unfortunately, was kind of pushed aside on this movie. I thought that was pretty funny how Rose Tico's like, sorry, I can't go. Leia wants me to do something over here. and uh, I feel like Rose could have been used better because they made such a big deal about Rose being in the movie in the first place, you know? Uh, yeah, they, did. they did very they did a huge, they made a massive effort to make her one of the main characters and I don't know man I think that their whole strategy too with them cats is all unsustainable how are they going to wipe out their entire bomber fleet on you know dude the bomber fleet in yeah. general Last Jedi made no sense at all because you have these I remember thinking that in the movie like how are these bombs working like is this gravity yeah. is this and also, why are these bombers so useless? They're these big, giant, like, lumbering ships that move super slowly. What is this a picture of? Is this a picture of some That's team? It's an ass, dog. It's an ass? Oh, it's my butt. Nice. Yeah. Yes, it is my ass. Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can't you just, like, clip it to just the picture? Like, where just the picture showed it? We're in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, now we got you all... <laughs> Here I can edit it. <laughs> Bring it up to where my butt is on Terry. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> We're in the studio. All right. Any questions? So Sarah Martian, if it weren't for the Ewoks, the second Death Star would have would it have been destroyed. Yes, that is true. The Ewoks did help with that, and you are absolutely right. The uh, Ewoks did also worship C three PO as a god, though. So you know, they're not they're they're a primitive race, but they are a lovable race. We love the Ewoks, but yeah, I think the Ewoks were like kind of Return of the Jedi was really Return of the Jedi was uh, definitely where George Lucas was really aiming to sell toys, and it was becoming apparent. We want all these cute and weird aliens to sell toys. The Ewoks are made to sell toys. Uh, all the stuff at Jar Jar's palace is for toys. Dude, you guys are funny, dude. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Check. Check, check, check. Yeah, it's working. All right. Maybe the Yamato use can crack. All right. Oh. Nice. nice. <laughs> this is good. Solid. Solid. Oh, the future is here. Do you think you do you think legitimately that Babu Frick fucks? Yes. He fucks little 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 lady fricks. Yeah. Like I would definitely like to think Babu Frick is maybe he's married and has like a little wife and little Babu Frick kid at home, but he's probably just like some loner who maybe has, you know, little you guys are fucking hilarious. But yeah, Bobby Freak definitely fucks. You know, does Yoda okay. fuck? I don't think so. Baby Yoda definitely doesn't fuck. Bobby but Freak. We know for certain now that Palpatine fucks. Palpatine. Yeah, he does. And if, if the baby Yoda isn't back related to Yoda, then Yoda does fuck too, I guess. Now that I think about it. The thing's not necessarily related to Yoda. That's racist. Oh, this is better layout for sure. Yeah, I like this a lot better. Yeah. All right, yeah. well, I got a question for you, man. Yeah. So what would you rather hang out in a room filled with? Um, those Bantha things? The fat lady with the long nose that sings in uh, Return of the Jedi? <laughs> or In the deluxe edition? Yeah, you got to chill in a room full. And then the other room full is going to be you chilling with those, like, monsters that were in the uh, the garbage pit in uh, a new hope um probably probably those little singer ladies because they seem like <laughs> the most homeless you know i don't know if i want to hang out with a room full of fucking banthas that'd be dangerous and stinky bantha poodoo dude that's the other thing about star wars is like all the aliens are like gross and weird and everything <laughs> looks dirty and you know that's kind of that look that, yeah. that people like about it you know and, you know, Baby Yoda, here's another thing I'm predicting about the Baby Yoda toys. Not only are they going to come out too late and push it too hard, but I bet you a lot of these Baby Yoda toys, the thing about Baby Yoda is his face is so perfect and exact. Like, if you make one thing too small or too big, he won't be that cute. He won't look the same. But I feel like they're going to make a lot of these toys that don't, like, look as cute as the actual Baby Yoda does. Dude, this is pretty good. I agree. But what one thing we can agree on too is that I was right that people were going to start making underground yeah. Baby Yoda merch, and yeah, I right. tell you in that we yeah. should do it. Disney's been shutting them down. Like Disney's been like striking them like left and right. All these Etsy stores that are make that are the most successful, but it's like they're just filling a demand that is you know Disney's too dumb or lazy to to meet. You know, people want Baby Yoda merch, so naturally, yeah, someone especially with the shirts. I, I got a good. guy in Vietnam that can make knockoff merch. He made the yeah. Yeezys. Like that. Well, that was the worst part is when Disney immediately, like, oh, shit, we need to make Baby Yoda merch. The first thing they did was make bullshit, like, shirts and cups and all this stuff. And all it was was just the same image, like, plastered over everything. Like, the same picture of little Baby Yoda looking up, you know. It was like a photograph, just cheaply printed on shirts and mugs and stuff. Meanwhile, all the fan art, all the fan art shirts, like that one that that one guy was wearing, all that stuff's coming out, and it's like that's the stuff that people want. Uh, but yeah, they you, totally you, wait, ball. you don't call it that, and as long as it's not like exactly the same. Yeah, I mean the the whole Baby Yoda thing. It's like there. It's up to artist interpretation. Like if you do an illustration of Baby Yoda, and don't have the words Baby Yoda or Star Wars or anything on there, you know, technically that's that's legal to sell, especially for like limited runs. You know, it's like it's fair use. It's an artist representation of something. Well, now you could have been making thousands, I guess. But the thing is, like, I think it, the thing is, it gets so like you could do like an artist rendering of Mickey Mouse, but it has to be different enough from the original design, and also it can't say anything text-wise about Mickey or Disney or anything. I think that would be allowed. And also, you gotta, I think it's like a limited batch kind of print where you make a few hundred shirts you only sell them for like a few a few days i don't know yeah I know about that. we got different we got jelly beans <laughs> damn dude it's pretty it's pretty good Do you content. He didn't specify. jelly beans are a type of bean yeah what type of yeah what type of beans are your favorite 
Mexican beans, though. Even though they they weren't born beans, they like fully embraced Wanna the bean be vibe. Wanna be bean. So talk about your guys' favorite beans real quick while I let Rex in. Well, yeah. I uh, made black peas. What's up? Dude. You know <laughs> that the, the beans burn like that, dude? That's through the pot. You don't stir the pot, the beans will burn. That's that's how I, that's my life motto. I just I'll made give you it guys a, a pretty graphic story about my last year. You're, you're gonna burn the beans, boys. We ain't got time for that. This is a this is a full on bean takeover. <laughs> oh, we're on the bean screen. <laughs> <laughs> You said you were gonna tell a graphic story. Next. You like you like our yeah. bean screen. I love it. Green technology. The green screen is outdated technology. The bean screen is the way of the future. Yeah. This is a sustainable resource. This runs on starch and daily <laughs> and gelatin. Well, I made black-eyed peas, which I guess are beans for uh, New Year, and some. Yeah, something got fucked up in the pocket somewhere, but like, I, I shit for like three days straight, man. Well, I mean, I think everyone shits for, you know, every day, but are you talking about you shit consecutively for three whole days? Yeah. It happened. Wow. Nice. Let's see. Everyone should take their shirt off and spread beans on themselves. That's what Vince is saying. I mean, Vince, we already gave you the shockers, so I don't know if I, I'm ready to do that. Dude, bring him on, man. Vince, where you at, dog? Yeah, Vince can come on here and do that for himself. If he wants to spread beans on his chest, I won't I won't stop him. Let's Bean. see here. What else do we have a problem with uh, Kylo Ren? <laughs> Kylo Ren repairing his helmet was funny because, yeah, you come know, on. that was another – that was another basically undoing the, light, the last Jedi moment because – like I said, Ryan Johnson wanted to work with Adam Driver. First thing we got to do is get that helmet off of him. So they make it to where Snow critiques him. What? <laughs> what did he say? Producer, we'll get back to you. That's a good question, actually. <laughs> what was it? Uh, our, our special guest from uh, Port Smith, Wisconsin, <laughs> said... Uh, would you rather bang Natalie Portman, uh, like the princess or whatever, or just Natalie Portman, uh, or and let Baby Yoda die, or let Baby Yoda die and not get to bang Natalie Portman? <laughs> <laughs> I think we kind of fumbled the delivery there, but I think you get the point. You got the point, you know. So, so Baby Yoda dies regardless, or you have to bang Natalie Portman. Whether I bang, does she die because does he die because I bang Natalie Portman? Yeah. But then, how, but then how does he die if I don't bang Natalie Portman? Natural yeah. cause. Like, <laughs> like, I didn't like really old or. No, he lived a great life. <laughs> I mean, fifty years. It's a that's a pretty long time. Did he He's bang? Yeah, I mean, I would be down to bang Natalie Portman for sure. She's a okay. lovely lady. You're gonna go on record. That you would let Baby Yoda die to serve yourself, but the other choice is Baby yeah. Yoda dying regardless. <laughs> yeah, but he could live to be like a thousand years old. Wait, what? Oh, Am I an old age? It's like a peyote. He's like a little peyote button that can use the force. Yeah, if it's, if it's like bang Natalie Portman and Baby Yoda dies versus not banging Natalie Portman and Baby Yoda not dying. Well, I mean, he's probably still bang really for us. But, but definitely not instantly. Nah, I'd probably still bang Natalie Portman. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming she wants to bang. No, she I does. Her I met her before. She's really cool. Really nice. Well, why don't you, yeah, I guess, I guess, uh, hook us up, Max. You can just send me, just like, uh, send us some contact info. Invite her to the stream. Let's get Natalie Portman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do this on what Facebook. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your your right hand. <laughs> oh Lord. All right. 
universal guest in here. Where's Miles? Where's Miles? Yeah. You can I don't know. Send him a link. And well, he was here a minute ago, and then he just left suddenly. Let's yeah. See get him in here. Thing. It's, it's easy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what about your favorite beans, Zach, dude? Uh, favorite beans? Yeah. Uh, coffee <laughs> is one. No, yeah. Coffee's a bean, yeah. I'd say yeah, it's probably, yeah, I guess everyone would have to pick that one. Not a legume. Yeah, I heard coffee's <laughs> technically not a bean. It's a fucking seed. Oh. Okay. Well, but, we'll like, I don't want to ruin the fucking <laughs> You know, gotta have that bean juice in the morning. Oh yeah, that's like yeah. I mean, I think we got think we got Miles. Yeah, Miles. He's he's not in the bottom. He should be in the bottom of this chat room. Yeah, he has to click on that thing. <laughs> Yo, I made the spiciest lasagna I've ever made in my life last hey, night. Hey, what's up, guys? Miles. <laughs> yes. My name's Miles, and I thought last I thought Rise of Skywalker was pretty good. You guys were stupid for hating it. I'm gonna go ride my unicycle. <laughs> I'm gonna watch Chat Roulette with Keither and watch dudes whack off. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I don't know. You're my name's your Miles. Computer. Your computer's having a hard time re uh, uh, handling the, the miles. <laughs> Bro, it's not that. See, this is the thing. Is like I understand if you like the Star Wars movies, that's fine. But like I told Grogan, you can't be saying like the haters are wrong, and you know the movie was actually good, right, Vince? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there it is. We're doing it, Peter. That's really good. Like back to Babu Frick. Um, why, why do we like Babu Frick so much? I do like the party, man. He was hey, hey. Yeah, exactly. He seemed like he, he, he wanted to get hit. And he's just a tiny little droid dude. And I like to I liked how C-3PO was like, you know, doesn't want to die. All the previous movies, C-3PO is always looking out for himself. And then in this new one, it's like, oh, you know, it's it's the odd, the best odds are if C-3PO blanks his memory, you know, you got to basically cater to C-3PO's uh, uh, love of odds and, and statistics and stuff to get him to kill himself. But then it sucks because after he kills himself and wipes his memory, he gets it right back. That's the other problem with this movie. Is everything that yeah. happens to the Skywalker is immediately undone. Like anytime someone dies, they're brought back to life. Anytime the Millennium Falcon is destroyed, it's repaired. Anytime Super is, you know, his memory is erased, we get it. Also, why would Bob Frick, who's a droid smith, shouldn't he have a way to back up a droid's memory? Uh, yeah. yeah. It's kind of where Bob yeah. is slacking. Very dumb. They also revealed that Babu Frick is alive. That was the other thing I hated was uh, – so Zori Bliss, the chick with the helmet who never takes the helmet off, who had sex with Poe, I guess, Poe's little ex-girlfriend, she has like a coin. Apparently it's like a uh, – it's a uh, – it's like a rebel – it's an imperial coin for imperial leaders so that ships can get safe passage somewhere out of the planet or whatever. I don't remember. But – it just makes no sense how this coin, like you give this person a coin from some imperial captain, and now the idea is like if it belongs to a dead captain, couldn't you look that up? Also, does it belong to someone who was it stolen? Wouldn't you just cancel your coin to make it not function anymore? And the idea is kind of like a shitty old ship that isn't uh, in any way related to the imperial fleet. I, I, it just makes no sense. So Zori Bliss gives Poe this coin for some reason, even though it's her only way off the planet. And then later, after the planet gets destroyed, we find out that she did get off the planet safely because she shows up to the, the final fight. We get a nice little cameo from Babu Freak. I get a good laugh, and he says, you know, his little hey, hey. 
But when you start thinking, it's like, how did they get off the planet? How how did that? I don't know. It's just so there's so many problems with every aspect of the movie. Like no matter what part you bring up, I'm going to have there's going to be some kind of plot hole involved. On a scale of one to ten, what's your rating? Mm -hmm. Man, so I would give it like a 3.5 or a 4 because, like I said, general audiences did like it, and it wasn't as bad as Last Jedi. And I would say general audiences probably like these new ones more than the prequels. But uh, 3.5 would still be – I would have to give Last Jedi like a fucking 1 or a 0 just because I, I didn't like anything about The Last Jedi. I think the only thing I liked about Last Jedi is it is the best-looking Star Wars movie as far as visual effects go, camera work. But yeah, I would say La I would say Rise of Skywalker and Episode Two are probably tied at like three point five three low. You know. All right, give me your give me your favorite to favorite Star Wars movies. In yeah, we talked about this after me and Zach and Miles, we, also, we all did it, but it was like um, Empire, New Hope, Return of the Jedi, and then I'd probably have to say um, I was, I don't know, so the thing is it's either Fort Awakens or um, uh, Revenge of the Sith right there. Be either Episode 7 or 3 right there. So those two, I don't know which one will come next. And then after that, now we're dealing with the bottom of the barrel. So it'd be episode one. Then it'd be uh, Rise of Skywalker. Then it'd be episode two. And then it'd be The Last Jedi. That's probably how I would have to rate him. Episode two, second to last. It's awful. I can't stand it. It's so bad. Also, the other problem with it, uh, opposed to the episode one, episode two and three were exclusively filmed like on digital cameras so they can do – a huge plethora of special effects. Right. But you want to the, movies, the movies have this weird like video game look. It's true. It's true. Yeah. It's it just looks too weird and there's too much shit going on, too much visual effects, too much of the action scenes are like incoherent. You can barely understand what's happening and it's just they're so boring. And the big Plus, problem the acts like a bitch the whole time. Oh yeah, dude, yeah, that, yeah. it's like you know, George Lucas does not understand how women work. Women, like, we're going to send you and uh, Natalie Portman on some kind of mission. She's going to go do something, and you're going to escort her. And you have, this is your time to, to shine. And what does he do? He spends the whole time bitching about his boss, Why? bitching about the high council, bitching about everything. And it's like immediately, like, a woman knows immediately if she likes a dude or not, you know? So right there, it should be, okay, uh, this guy's fucking annoying. This guy's fucking annoying, Okay. And then on top of that, he starts saying really creepy shit, like how he wants to prevent people from dying and he's going to be more powerful than ever. Like a lot, a lot of red flags. And then he like interrupts her a lot. He like talks over her. He basically gets real like uppity with her occasionally. And he talks about how he hates sand and then she kisses him. It makes no sense. And it's like they said, like it should have been uh, Natalie Portman should have tempted him with her, with her, you know, sex basically. Like they, they tempt him to the dark side with like lust and carnal sins. Like why the hell can't Natalie Portman have sex? Uh, Bobby said, Bobby Snakes is at, is saying, "What's up, Brit?" And Bobby Snakes also saying, "Empire is the greatest." Yeah, it is. It really was. Hey, Bobby, if you want to join in here, you can, dude. Just click this link. It yeah. should be easy. Uh, <laughs> Hey, you want to talk about Star Wars? Get up in here, Bobby. You won't do it. Uh, Screen man. How long's the Bean Lord been on here? Whole time? Uh, he's been on here longer time. than I have. Yeah, I think you, you guys are here for the whole three hours. Oh. I mean, dude, I got these trusty cans of beans. <laughs> do, you have, uh, do you have beans? Me? Yeah. Uh, Y'all hearing the jams that are happening? No, I think I'm getting like an echo, or maybe it is the jams. I don't know. There's Coleman and some people are jamming in my living room. Okay. I, got the yeah. I guess the headphones won't matter then. I can try to. No, it's fine, dude. It's fine. It's not, it's not bad, dude. All right, word. But uh, yeah, I was saying to Bobby or anyone watching, you know, wants to come in here, y'all can. Uh, Britt, how are you doing those filters? There's like something in your settings. Cam slash mic and then hit green screen. 
Oh, it's a part of the thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like you just have a photo. Uh, and then like you have to pick between blue or green. Like there's a setting and like whatever works, you know. Mine works for blue. I my shit doesn't support it. I need to update my shit. Yeah. It's kind of like I think a new feature, but I just started using the stream yard because I was looking into how to do this, how to get multiple people in on the stream, and it seemed like it was the easiest way to get people um, broadcast on Facebook. It was very easy to get in here. Huh? It was very easy to get in here. Yeah, and it's like you didn't have to download any kind of software or anything, or because like apparently you can do this from Facebook Live, but you need an iPhone to let multiple people in. But this stream yard is working pretty good. Is that what you're doing? Is it connected to Facebook? Yeah, it's streaming on Facebook right now. <sighs> Apparently, I have to figure out why, but there should be a way to see this to see the uh, comments over here on the right, but I just have to keep clicking back and forth to the to the video. But it seems like um, you know, this is one of those things where it's like the first time I really wanted to get Dom. I know Dom and some other people I wanted in here just got back from freezer burn, so Probably wouldn't be able to come in, but he's probably die. Yeah. I wanted to ask Don about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I also liked how Rose Tico kind of got friend zoned by Finn. She kind of, you know, that was like one of the most awkward kisses ever, you know? Yeah. She was kisses him on the lips and he doesn't even kiss her back. And, you know, she just kind of faints because she's so embarrassed by how bad it went. Cringy. <laughs> and then in the next movie, it's like, Hey Rose, you want to come on this adventure? And Rose, is like, I can't. Leia wants me to stay. Be my least favorite character. Yeah, I know, and that was the thing. Is like, uh, I'm not sure why. I just it's because they purposely made her kind of unappealing. They uh, she's like kind of helpless, and you know, she's also uh, like Kate. Like the idea is, so this is the thing. It's a, it's a, it's a rebellion. It should be a volunteer based force. Uh, but the a volunteer based militia. But basically, the idea is if you're trying to leave, she's going to taser you in the balls with a cat rod. Right. And any dissenters, any dissension allowed, no dissension allowed. It doesn't seem very um, something in line with what the rebellion would do. That seems more like something the Galactic Empire or the First Order would do tase people with the balls if they want to leave. I need to see the movie again. I saw it right when it came out, but I kind of forget. That was the other thing is like as soon as I watched it a week later I rewatched like a cam version and just like took all these fucking notes all these problems and since then it's like there's been more and more like news like there was a leak about the original script that was written by the guy who was supposed to make it Colin Trevorrow the one who made the Jurassic World movies he oh, was shit. supposed to make the third one back when the Last Jedi was getting made and then he had creative differences with Kathleen Kennedy and was fired and replaced with JJ. But the script that came out, it's like so much, even though it still has to pick up from last Jedi, like, yeah, it just picks up so much, but it has so many, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's good, but it's definitely better than the rise of Skywalker talking about how like Luke Skywalker's ghost is haunting Kylo Ren. So Kylo yeah. Ren, everywhere he goes, like Luke Skywalker's telling him like, you need to go back to your mother. You need to quit, go to Leia. You know, <laughs> that's, that's it took a lot of liberties of, of uh, things that are just outrageous. Like I'm sure you'll talk about already the one Leo gets sucked out into space. Yeah, well that's what, yeah, that's last Jedi. That's oh, that's yeah, yeah. We can talk about that. But yeah, that's like what the fuck? Like it's a, it's a franchise breaking moment right there. And I remember when it happened in the theater, like even like the whole audience was like, What the fuck? Like, like God, why was that like the whole audience was like, What the hell? Because you're expecting Leia to die naturally because Carrie Fisher had passed away, unfortunately. So we were all kind of waiting for a moment when Leia would pass away. But the idea that she's like staring at the camera and then fucking gets sucked out of a fucking airplane uh, window. And so you're like, oh, way that's back. A way to kill her, right? But then the fact that you bring her back and make her Mary Poppins, that's even worse because. Yeah. Preposterous. It's just one of those things where it's like, okay, sure, maybe Leia is like really good with the force all of a sudden. But the problem is now you have the next movie in an awkward position where you have to have Leia be a character and the actress who played her is dead. I mean, yeah. and that's why, you know, every time you see Leia, the new one, it's like a weird like effect. Like her face is like floating on her body and she only moves a little bit. And she only says like two or three words at a time. It's just so awkward and, and you know, cringy. It's just cringy. 
and like force healing and stuff like that that wasn't around before. Yeah, and well, that, this is another interesting thing where they show the flashback when Luke shows you the flashback of her training Carrie Fisher, of uh, him training Leia. Uh, they're training on like the it looks like Dagobah, and uh, they're they show the part where they they remove their helmets and it's like youth age Luke Skywalker and youth age Carrie Fisher. Basically, Leia like bests him, and he realizes that she's ready to continue her training, and she chooses not to because she had a vision that her son would die. So she wants someone else to pick up where she left off, meaning she wants someone else to kill her son. I don't understand. But that part is very interesting because uh, it seems like that's the only time in the entire franchise that there's a flashback scene. Because yeah. every other movie, like there's a part in Force Awakens where there's like Ray has like a vision, like a psychic vision, which is different. But like that scene in Rise of Skywalker where we see Luke and Leia training, that's the only time where the movie like jumps backward in time. Because all the movies go pretty much forward in time. There's no flashbacks and stuff. So it's interesting. But yeah, Leia, I guess like, yeah, you have to retcon how did Leia float? You know, it turns out she had trained with Luke the whole time, which slept into a vacuum and die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's well, also like, yeah, if, the Emperor, if the Emperor can survive falling out of hypershaft and exploding in a Death Star, then why can't Leia survive? Honestly, I, 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 I heard that it takes a few minutes. I heard that it takes a few minutes to die in the vacuum of space. Like, when you get exposed to space, like, it, you don't die instantly. And yeah. I heard, like, what happens is, like, all the air gets pushed out of your lungs, uh, the air starts to, like, liquefy, and, like, any soft tissue, any kind of moisture you have, like, on your eyes or, like, on the inside of your mouth, it starts to, like, boil. All the liquid like, boils. And uh, basically what happens is your skin really swells up really bad. So, like, when they, if they were to, like, go to the vacuum of space, like Carrie Fisher, and they'd come back in, like, she should have, like, ballooned up, like, from swelling afterwards that would have eventually subsided and gone back down. But yeah, she should have like really blued up and gotten really like Elephant Man style, and then like. I say the, uh, there was one really cool shot after that when the, um, I guess the rebel ship or whatever hits light speed and you know yeah. that lady suicides herself into the. Uh, that scene that looked cool. cool. That looked cool, but the problem with it is it basically broke uh, the way. Uh, hyperspace works because originally what happens is hyperspace you go into hyper you're in outer space and then when you turn on your hyperdrive you don't move really fast in like a straight line what happens is you basically like go into hyperspace you disappear from outer space and now you're traveling in hyperspace so the problem and this is why light skipping is an issue because what happens is you disappear here you travel through hyperspace and then you reappear here you're not moving in a line really fast because that uh, would be dangerous. I didn't realize the is when you appear, they talk about this in the very first one. Han Solo says, like, when they're setting up their hyperspace, hyperspace jump, they're about to jump into hyperspace, and they're clicking all these buttons. He's like, can't you just punch it? He's like, no, because then we might fucking, like, crash into a planet or something. Like, you got to calculate where you end up. So he makes a very clear point of mentioning all this. The fact that Holdo can travel through light speed and break stuff it really is a problem because you're basically saying every Death Star, all you needed was like an X-Wing with hyperspeed, hyperspeed capabilities on autopilot. You can just have a drone fly oh, shit. You know, you don't need – like it, it really fucking fucks shit up by having having that as a hold of maneuver. And in uh, Rise of Skywalker, they go ahead and uh, cut it down and say that was like a one in a million type of uh, maneuver. Which is funny because now you're saying that Holdo was trying to technically run away and there was like a one in a million chance that she would accidentally crash into the ship. But that doesn't make any sense because if it was a one in a million type thing, then how is it that the First Order knows what she's doing? They're like, oh my god, she's about to fucking hyperspeed into us and we gotta fucking get out of the way. There's just so many inconsistencies with that part. But the whole thing with Holdo in general, Holdo is one of the worst. She's the worst character of the new of Last Jedi. People talk about Rose Tico, but it's like it's really Holdo because Leia gets Leia gets killed. Like Carrie Fisher dies, so they basically don't kill Leia. They put her, you know, they you know she's disposed now, so she's like in the hospital. And now you have instead of Admiral Akbar, it should have been Admiral Akbar that takes over. And now Admiral Akbar is the one who's in charge. 
But Holdo is this random lady who's wearing not a military uniform. She's wearing a ball gown, like an evening gown. She also is the first character we've ever seen with, like, dyed hair. Every fucking character has natural hair color. Um, and then on top of that, she's a total fucking bitch. Like, she doesn't tell Poe what's happening. She doesn't tell anyone. She just says, go with it. And naturally, after, like, so many times, he mutinies. And they, you know, she makes it, like, she doesn't understand what's happening. She's a terrible leader. Like, if you look at Star Trek, Picard always brings his crew in, lets them know what's happening. He wants to know every person's point of view. What opinions do they have? What are some things that he might be missing? Instead, she just tells Poe, like, listen, you're second in command or whatever, but you're just a, you know, you're just a, a, a crazy, you know, John, you know, you're basically just a, a fucking a, a reckless man who needs to just shut up and listen to listen to me. Isn't that the same um, lady from Jurassic Park? Yes, it is. And uh, she was, uh, I think, romantically involved with Jeff Goldblum in real life. She was in a bunch of the uh, uh, Laura Laurie Dern. Laura Dern, that's her name. She plays a really good uh, annoying person. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's. Um, she is intimidating too. Like when she tells Poe to fucking back off, like you kind of are like, God, who is this bitch? Like, what's her problem? And yeah, I mean, it's like the problem is the whole audience is like agreeing with Poe. Like, why don't you just tell us what your plan is? Like, I mean, you're clearly, if you're not the bad guy, then you are the worst leader I have ever seen. A leader should like inspire people, you know, not cause people to mutiny, you know? Yeah. Two uh, things. So, two things. Yeah. One, did you see the romance between Kylo and Homegirl coming at the end? I, 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 oh, yeah, two. Well, that and then another point of discussion. What is, like, was the, was the Empire just, in, or the Emperor just insinuating that they have dark power to clone people and bring them back without really any explanation there? Well, to address your second point first, uh, it's interesting how they mentioned that um, the uh, basically the cloning technology, that Sith technology, even though we know in episode two, like multiple people of the Galactic Federation had clone troopers, cloning is not Sith technology, but also this idea that, um, you know, uh, the Emperor uh, is somehow able to create all these clones at will like what is snoke like why doesn't he just did clone he die? Snokes? did he die or did he just get badly injured and was healed I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly did he die or did he uh did he die or was he alive the whole time or was it a clone that that darth vader actually killed um it's just like it does they don't even bother to answer because they know no no answer would would be satisfactory you know so the idea is it's either he is he has brought himself back to life by the force, kind of like you know Watchmen, like Doctor Manhattan, you know, bringing himself back, which is like okay, that's that's fine, but now it's like what's to stop him from doing that again, over and over again? Or it's this idea that he was a clone all along, and the real Emperor was like hiding on Exegol the whole time, and he's been there the past thirty years. And it's like that's just as improbable and silly. Or that there is this place where evil has been staying the whole time. Yeah, um, in the books and the other franchises, uh, there was um, there was a, a Sith planet, and it wasn't called Exegol. It was some other Sith planet, but I don't know anything about that. But as far as the Raylo thing, yeah, dude, uh, the Raylo thing was very sad because there was like a certain subsection of toxic fucking fans that were basically stalking and harassing. Um, uh, Adam Driver and uh, the actress or Daisy Ridley um, talking about how they wanted uh, they were like posting about how they want Ray and Kylo Ren to hook up, not just in the movie but in real life. They want these actors to be, to be together. And they were talking about how they wish that Adam Driver's new wife would like die in a car accident. They were wishing that Ray's new husband would fucking just like be killed somehow. And it's just sick. And then the fact is, then they cater to these people and give them a kiss out of nowhere that comes out of nowhere. And it really is so weird because why is Ray interested in this guy? Because he's it's, done nothing but kill people. I think it was predictable that there would have been a turn for him at some point. They're always kind of alluding to him. Yeah. Needing to 
making a switch or whatever, but I feel like going as far as becoming a romantically involved with her was a bit. <coughs> yeah. Just yeah. For because also it's hard enough to forgive him for all the evil shit he did. Like he, you blew up like a ton of planets. He fucking killed Luke Skywalker. We killed Han Solo for sure. I mean, it's hard enough to forgive him for this stuff, let alone like fall in love with him. Like, so I don't understand. I don't know. Chicks are into bad boys, I guess. I don't know how that works, but it's just a toxic relationship. And the thing is, when the Raylo people were talking about how that's what they wanted, it seemed like that's not healthy. It's not a healthy relationship. And the fact that you're going to reward them with that kiss. And then on top of that, still managed to piss them off because killing killing Kylo Ren, like these same Raylo people were all over Twitter talking about how they need fucking therapy and they can't even go to work and shit. And it's like, they're, no, I'm sure. And this is like these Twilight fans that they were trying to attract. Meanwhile, regular Star Wars fans, like they hate the movies. They don't think they're good. You wanted these new people to like the Star Wars movies and they fucking hate it too. And except they're acting like crazy people. And this idea that like people like me you know, the fandom menace, like, we're we're the toxic one. We're the fucking, you know, the yes in the fold because we hate Star Wars. It's like, these movies suck. It's just that simple. These movies aren't good anymore. They used to be great, and now they're not. They I used think, to speak to every person. Well, they let's, have, let's yeah. get to the, the root of this. Do you think that, like, if it slightly crushed your, like, childhood, like, not dreams, but, like, you grew up fucking loving this. Like, I fucking loved Star Wars as a kid. Like, I was yeah. a huge fan. I saw him when they came out uh, in theaters, like they re-released them in like 1995 or six. Right. They sucked. I was let down, but I just kind of let go, let it go personally. And like, I don't know. I I just kind of fucking blocked it out of my mind. But did you have that kind of like, they crush your childhood kind of thing. And like, for me, I do totally hate, like I hate how like general the population now It's like, were y'all really all fans before, you know? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, If I was to say, like, did it crush my childhood? No, because I still will always have, you know, the the, the originals are always going to be great. And the problem is when you think about these new ones, they do ruin the originals because, you know, like, when they're celebrating on the at the end of an indoor, there you realize it's all for nothing. Like, Luke Skywalker's going to fucking be a fucking loser and, and, and fail. And uh, the rebellion's going to fucking mean nothing because the first order is going to take over. Leia's never going to have a single day of peace in her life. Han Solo is never, he's going to be a shitty father. He's going to be a shitty husband. Uh, Luke Skywalker's going to be a shitty fucking Jedi. I mean, it's just, you think, you know, what they could have done, you know, it's just woulda, coulda, shoulda, obviously. I mean, you could have made a movie about Luke creating the new Jedi temple. You could have made a trilogy about whatever, but. It's like, it's not going to, like, it doesn't, honestly, I, the fact that these movies are bad has been a good thing because I have, you know, realized I've become so, uh, you know, enthralled with, like, certain, like, YouTube channels and stuff. There's, like, a whole community of people that have come together about fucking these movies being terrible. And if I have discovered any of this, I wouldn't have discovered Mahler or Red Letter Media or um, Comic Artist Pro Secrets or uh, fucking yeah. any of these. Uh, shout out! Yeah, any of these movies wouldn't have been a thing if these movies were good. Which is I funny. Thought, I thought that Phantom Menace is badass, man. <laughs> the Phantom Menace. The thing about the Phantom Menace is, like, when you're a child, it is cool. But as a grown up, you realize this movie doesn't make any sense. This plot oh. is. Wait a second. Didn't Darth Maul come back at some point, or is that am I imagining that? Yeah, Darth no, Maul. Came back. Back. What's that? No, they're bringing him back or something. They are bringing him back. So but in the Clone Wars animated show, Darth Maul is revealed to have been she's he's still alive and he has like robotic legs. And then they confirm that in Solo at the end of Solo, like he shows up and he's yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the problem. I mean, that's like that's cool. I like Darth Maul was cool because he was so mysterious and creepy and he had a double lightsaber and it was like it was like yeah. they fucked up by bad killing him. They wasted him, you know. Huh? Yeah. Looked fucking badass as a little kid. Like I don't know how old I was, like ten or something. Yeah. Like damn, that's a fucking badass villain. He like, had horns, dog. Yeah. 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 Alien or what? So he's a he's technically like a Sith, like um, 
a type of species that is uh, I can't remember what they're called. I can look that up real quick. One of the acolyte uh, things. Maybe they were all looking like that dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, one of the things that was interesting about Darth Maul is so uh, okay. Like he's, he's a, so he's a male Darth. Doth, he's a Dothamirian. Oh, that sounds That's hardcore. Basically, basically, what I heard was their skin is solid red, and all that black shit. Those are tattoos. So he's covered in tattoos, which is actually pretty cool. But what they should have done, they should have killed Darth Maul and then like have him come back rather than replace him with Christopher Lee. Because then it would have been Darth Maul fighting hit Yoda in the uh, episode two, which I still hate how Yoda has a lightsaber. I don't think Yoda should have a lightsaber because once you give him a lightsaber, all of a sudden his size actually matters. Yeah. When he's just using the force, it doesn't matter that he's tiny. But when you give him a lightsaber, you have to do all these fucking flips and shit and really overcompensate to fight someone with a sword. Can you give me some clarification on, as far as the, the cause there's books preceding it, there's books following it. Are those, were those written just by random ass people that became part of like the official story? Or was it stuff that had been outlined by Lucas that was like, like Old Republic and all that shit, you know, like. So I'm not a hundred percent sure on all that. Cause I'm not uh, familiar with most of the ex, um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the extra stuff, all the supplemental material. But I know for the most part that a lot of it is approved by George Lucas and it's written by certain people. But with the problem with the Disney ones, when the Disney, when Disney bought Star Wars, a lot of people were asking like all the books, all the video games, all the other stuff, is any of this canon? And they specifically said, none of it is now canon. It's all being stricken from the canon and we're creating our own canon for these new ones. And I remember that a lot of people. Because uh, milk that money, yeah, and it's like, that money. And that was a big fucking. That's the other thing is right now it's all the blame game. And Kathleen Kennedy, like, it was like it was uh, Bob Iger talking about how we're the reason why the Star Wars movies are doing so well is because it's too much. Meanwhile, they're releasing three or four Marvel movies a year, and those aren't fucking slowing down at all. And then also they were saying, uh, Kathleen Kennedy was saying a big problem was we didn't have any source material to draw from. It's not like comic books. It's like there are so many fucking Star Wars comic books alone, let alone the books and the video games and like the old Republic and the fucking the Sith, the Jedi Council and all this stuff is just very interesting. And the thing is, like what makes Star Wars so cool and what Mandalorian does right is the world building. Like you feel like you're inside this world and they got a really good job of like setting up the rules of this world and the types of people that inhabit this world. And, you know, this idea... I like the Mandalorian because it's like it's like a man's land out there. It's tough because people were complaining there weren't enough female characters in the Mandalorian at first, and it's like yeah, it's because it's like the Wild West. Like you got gunslingers and shit. Like if you Straight look up. at the Wild West, like most of them were dudes because, again, for the most part, like you know, women don't want to be fucking shooting each other. Like they would rather, you know, I would think so. Uh, it's a it's a tough it's a tough world out there, and when you have this like. Just because something has like a male main character doesn't mean women can't enjoy it. It's just silly. And also the reverse side is just because a female is the lead character doesn't mean a man's obviously not going to like him. There's plenty of fucking strong female yeah. characters. There. No, one, no one's ever bitched about uh, Alien, you know? You no, know, exactly. And the reason is because uh, Ripley has faults, Ripley you know? Ripley is badass, you know? Ripley would never fucking like, you know, leave – leave her crew behind and let them all die. You know, Ripley, she's got her, you know, she's a character. You know? I mean, bro. In the first movie, in the first movie, she tries to do that, but by the end of the second one, that's the cool thing about yeah. Alien. She grows, Alien, Alien ends, Alien yeah. 2, she was yeah. definitely uh, very intense. Yeah, it's just like Luke Skywalker, like he's a different character. He's evolved in each movie, just like Aliens. Like in the I mean, first Alien movie, huh? They made him a dick in the last couple of movies. <laughs> Not only a dick, but like a um, just totally bitch made coward. And yeah, and just whining, whining, grumpy old. Like to make him a grumpy hermit is fine, but to make him a, a, a whiny coward, to make him a backstabbing uh, like family murderer, like it's just so out of character. Yeah. And it's one of these things where it's like we're subverting expectations, and it's like yeah, but. You're not doing it in a fair way. You're not doing it in a um, satisfactory way. It's easy is to set expectations. Is there anything that's sacred? Because we got 
Lord of the Rings is creating a TV show now. Uh, uh, what's yeah, up? Yeah. Samarillion? Huh? Did you say they're making the Samarillion a show? No, the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh, Samarillion is like, isn't that the, 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 the supplemental stuff for Lord of the Rings? I don't know. I thought that's what you said. No, it's like, I feel like if there's any good series, they're just going to milk the fuck out of it, whether that's Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. Any sci-fi shit. Well, they already fucked up Lord of the Rings with the Hobbit movies, you know? They tried to do the same thing again, and it just tanked because The Hobbit was not that book. The Hobbit was a short little story about a little hobbit and a dragon with gold, and it was just like a, it was like a smaller story. Yeah. And this idea of turning it into three movies and, you know... Oh, and the thing about all the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings movies is the Lord of the Rings books are fucking boring, okay? You literally... You read them, and it's literally just pages and pages of descriptions. It's just like, we're going to meet the elves, and now it's just like a whole chapter of what the elves are like and where they come from and what their world looks like and what their language is like. It's like it's more like an encyclopedia reading these books. And it's the same thing with like a lot of fantasy novels. The actual plot is pretty thin, whereas mo the fucking bulk of the book is all just describing everything. Yeah. And then the Lord of the Rings movies, what they did is they turned them into action movies, which a lot of people were pissed about. But it's like, what'd you expect? Like, they were the action. I yeah, watched action. It's awesome. Yeah, I just rewatched them all recently. And uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, you know, it definitely deserved the last one deserved all those Oscars because it's like, shit, dude. Like the fact that they did it, like that's what you that's what happens when you plan your shit ahead of time. You got three movies in three years, they're all shot at once, and there's like a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it's all cohesive and it all looks the same the same. Yeah. The same uh, actors, the same everyone's involved from beginning to end, you know. I think that's a fundamental problem with Star Wars is it was switching directors and we're just gonna we're just gonna wing it. Like we're just gonna, Let's gonna do it. We'll just have JJ write the first one, and then we'll have Ryan write the second one later. They should have written all three movies at once. And like, the problem with Hollywood nowadays is they really rush the screenwriting process. Like with these Superman movies, these uh, Justice League movies. Like, we did a script by Friday, and then we'll rewrite it. It's like you should spend like a year in change just writing it. Like you should edit it a hundred times, and not by like multiple people. Just like give the guy time to like tell a story you know and uh really uh um, well, really, it's sold on a script that is already written like they come to yeah. somebody and say hey we have this script check it out would you like to be a part of it versus like we're gonna get this dude this dude and this dude and they're gonna sign on before there's even a story there yeah right. we're just gonna write it and hope it works out you know? yeah and then they just give someone an assignment like hey you we need you we need a star wars movie by by april so it's smart right now we want the star wars script on the news by 30 days and you know good luck and then you know you shit out a star wars script and then the producer's like yeah we like this we hate this we like this take this out and that's the other thing with this like, like they're saying with this last one is it feels like it was made by a board meeting like you know, our our test audience is saying that they want this and they want less of this and more of this and we want, you know, and it's just like you're trying to appease too many people when in fact you should just try to tell a story, you know? Yeah, I'm sure you touched on, on it already, but it's just um, like when you have a, a an investment that large into a franchise like that and then you say, well, we're going to have to make it dumber so that it appeals to a wider audience so we make our money back i mean that's a crude way of putting it but like obviously yeah. the less critical thinking involved the more people will buy tickets because people are gonna go see it anyway just because well, it's a fun movie like it doesn't have to be good in yeah, their well, eyes. Um, what's the thing about the original star wars movies is dumb people can understand the originals like the originals like children like them old people like them People, yeah, you don't have to be a genius. Are you person. calling children and old people dumb? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're, not as, they're, not, they're not as smart as, like, a, a small child will like the movie just as much as a, an old person or an average age person. But, yeah, people of different intelligences would walk out with the same movie liking it for the same reasons, you know? It's like there's, there's clear hero journey and development in the early ones. There's not too many characters. It's built around, you know, a few central people. These new ones, I feel like they try to just, you know, subvert that with this more. last one, especially. You know, like there's so much going on, so many characters. There's not enough to focus on a character's development or story arc when you're trying right. to make 
side romances and you know who's related to who and all this other shit. Yeah, it's like we're trying to still get to know Bo Poe and Finn, and we're still in introducing new characters left and right, like Lady. Yeah. yeah, there's the Horse Lady, there's Zori Bliss. These people don't do anything. Uh, Babu Frick is in it for a second. Um, we've got. Yeah, Babu Frick really should have been in it more. I I liked him, and I also liked the little Dio robot. But that was funny because the idea is okay, so this is funny. So they have the dagger, and it tells you where the wayfinder is but it's written in sith language and c-3po he knows what it says but he's unable to translate the sith language because he's not permitted to well why don't you just fucking like point on a map or explain it like without actually translating it you know all you gotta say is it's near ending. it just doesn't make any sense so then they have to erase his memory simply because he refuses to translate that technology that, that what's on the on the dagger but it's like, meanwhile, you have a fucking Sith droid right here called Dio that literally speaks English. And it's like, why can't he tell you what's written on the blade? Like, and that's the other thing I had a problem with, with like Luke Skywalker and, and Lando were allegedly looking for this dagger and the trail went cold. And we didn't stop to think, okay, we're, we found this missing ship. This ship is where this, this like droid, this uh, Sith assassin belongs to him. We, we don't know where he is. He will find out later that he's sunk into some quicksand pit. Like, why wouldn't you think, like, okay, let's check this quicksand pit that's like 50 yards over here, maybe? Or maybe we could talk to this droid that's on the ship, figure out more. Instead, they just kind of give up and don't think about finding the Wayfinder. And then they leave that ship there for like 10 years, I guess. And it never gets raided. It never gets stolen. It just sits there for 10 years, just in time for Ray to show up and find everything super easily. When I Mandalorian show. ship got literally taken apart in seconds. Yeah, the Mandalorian ship is funny because uh, I thought that was funny when they were talking about how they um, there's those ST, this the those uh, Marauders have that ST Walker, and it's yeah. like we need to find a way to destroy it. It's like your fucking ship, dog. Your ship has huge cannons on it. You can easily just fly that over and just, you know fire at it. But I also don't like the predictable fake deaths of like Chewie. Or whatever. Yeah, that was yeah. Well, I mean, we knew Chewie wasn't dead. We knew Chewie wasn't dead because in the trailers they make a point to keep showing like Lando and Chewie flying the Millennium Falcon. So you knew that was going to come. Yeah, that's like, yeah. like nothing. Nothing happens. Nothing of permanence happens in that movie except uh, Kylo Ren dies and the Emperor dies, and like everything else is just like like C three PO. We think he's going to die. Yeah, we think C three PO is going to lose his memory. He gets his memory back. We think the Millennium Falcon is destroyed. It's repaired in 10 minutes. We think, um, you know, Ray's dead. She comes back. We think, you know, Babu Frick and Zori Bliss are dead. They come back. Uh, it's just like nothing. Everything gets undone because it's like they want their cake and they want to eat it too. Like they want to have like someone die and have like a tragedy. But then, yeah, we're going to reveal that Chewie's alive. And the whole thing about Chewie getting accidentally killed by Ray's accidental lightning burst. She's devastated, right? She's like, oh, my God, Chewie, no. And then later she finds out that Chewie's fine. And she's like, oh, okay, good. And she doesn't think for a second about the hundreds of other people she probably did kill. It doesn't matter. But Chewie's fine, right? It's just like, you know, there's no fucking weight to anything here, you know? No. It's not to chew it out. It's just so stupid also because, like, they get on the ship and they're running around. Keep in mind, these fucking – these Star Destroyer ships are huge, Okay. And like they fucking find everyone right away. They first they find Chewie. Then the um, Hux is like, "Oh, we're gonna have uh, these people executed," even though they were going to torture Chewie for information. They say, "Okay, we caught Chewie and Poe and Finn, and now we're gonna execute them all." And then they're gonna execute them. And then Hux comes clean and shoots the two guards and says, "I'm the informant." And it's like, "Yeah, no shit. You just shot these two people. You don't need to say that. We know you're the informant now." And then he basically goes around and tells them like you know, what's going on and please shoot me in the leg. So they think that I didn't do this. I know that I'm not the traitor, even though he specifically says earlier, there are cameras everywhere. So it's just like so stupid. There's so many things. And then Ray, she just has another feeling. She's like, again, this is the second time she abandons them. She just kind of like, Oh, I'm going to go over here without saying anything, any reason why she goes over there. She finds Kylo Ren's little quarters. She finds the dagger. She finds Chewie's gun and Chewie's supplies. She grabs it. Then Kylo Ren shows up, 
Kylo Ren goes through this huge, like, you know, your Palpatine's daughter, granddaughter, and then they have like a lightsaber what? duel. Was she his granddaughter? Was that the verdict? I yeah. guess she was. Yeah. What it's was like, the there again? Her parents were like like drunken nobodies who were related to Palpatine who who hid they became nobodies on purpose, is what it was. That was what it was revealed. They they erased their identity so that Palpatine could never find her. And That's it's like Dude, it's the exact carbon copy of the last trilogy. Like, you think you're this person, you're the hero. Turns out you're related to the most evil person, and yeah. you have to, like, slay them. And, you know, it's just the same shit. Well, again, it's, it would have been better if Ray had become a villain because that would have been harder to deal with because she's so powerful. <laughs> yeah, the thing then, is, like, they should have had Kylo Ren, like, had a chance to rectify his deeds. Because yeah. they like well, it's Kylo the, Ren uh, did work to join forces to just stop the evil, you know, yeah. Ray Palpatine. Yeah, that, that would have been too too much though, because the whole point is we need the female lead to be, you know, good. And this is the big problem is like we want to they want to elevate <laughs> new characters. So the only way they can do that is by killing and disgracing the old ones. Well, like Dude, I remember the fucking Last Jedi when fucking Luke Skywalker shows up at the end of Salt Planet. He's got his new haircut, and you don't realize like he's a Force projection. I remember some kid in the front in front of me just being like, "Oh God, him again!" I don't fuck you know this this old asshole. Like that's because you know he doesn't know who Luke Skywalker really is. He just knows he was, Force projection is bullshit. The Force projection was cool, but the thing yeah. the fact that it killed Luke Skywalker sucked, and the fact yeah. that it just it like. Him. My biggest issue is they keep like bringing in new shit, man. They got to keep it consistent. You know what I mean? You know, with like the force and powers and stuff. Yeah, dude, you know, it's just, you know, that much in the amount of time that they had, especially if no Jedi's were fucking alive for you know long time or whatever. Yeah, well, you're you're like, like, me out, man. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do like the less is more type thing because, like, you know, you start overusing the force, it becomes this stupid Deus Ex Machina where it's just constantly getting everyone out of snags. It's like, you know, Superman, like, oh, don't worry, the Force will save him. Don't worry about it. Like, there's no there's no tension at all in these movies, you know? What's the end game if everyone can be force healed or never killed? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, the whole, like I said, bringing people back from the dead is bad because it just... Because <laughs> either I, A, so either A, it's like everyone else never fucking force healed anybody or Ray is the first person to ever discover how to do it. It's like, how the fuck did she learn how to do this? Who taught her how to do this? The idea that she's this naturally strong in the force is just like insulting because it, it really wrecks like, you know, the idea that Yoda and Obi-Wan and Luke and Vader, they all had to train really hard. And the idea that you just, you know, like a Mary Sue, you just kind of give the franchise to this new character and just let her just take all the credit. It's strange. Yeah, it's just she, uh, she definitely does go fucking toe to toe with like, Kylo Ren, who's like the baddest dude out she there. Does, she fights Kylo Ren four times, and each time she beats him. Like in the first movie, she beats him. In the second movie, she beats him twice. The third, so it's like by the we know in the third one they fight again. It's like, well, I have a feeling Ray's gonna win again because remember when Luke Skywalker got his fucking hand cut off? He got his ass kicked. So then the third time when he's gonna fight Vader, it's like this is gonna be intense. Like I don't know if you know is he gonna win? I don't know. He got his fucking ass beat. Because he wasn't done with his training. That's the biggest insult in my mind that they that the emperor was just the evil guy that they bring him all along. Yeah, yeah. It just can't, really like I said, can't come up with a new thing because they also want to do that. Well, they had come up with Snoke, but then stupid Ryan Johnson thought he wasn't important, so they killed him. Yeah, who even was that guy? They yeah, exactly. They could have been. Snow could have been a good Snow could have been a good villain that could have like linked the previous the original trilogy to this new one. Like he was maybe he was Emperor Palpatine's trainer the whole time. Yeah, who knows? Explain any of it or link it. Like if they would have addressed the connection between Snoke, Snoke and the Emperor, or what his story was at all. Right, right. Oh. And like I said, it was like I thought originally like only the audience didn't know what Snoke's story was, and all the people involved in the First Order and stuff they all know. But it turns out no one knows. It was all like he just kind of showed up and everyone just kind of went with him. And then his dad. And how? It's so strange. Uh, I get the the need to play on nostalgia, but 
there's also like a certain you need to have new developments and ideas you can that's i mean that's what all these sequels do is play on older shit which is fine if you can give an actual story but it's like it just seemed like the entire series was callbacks you know and repeated shit it was just a poor effort poor effort from old thing that's my prognosis <laughs> Sorry, I had to take a phone call. But yeah, I agree, man. It's like, it's all... And that's the problem is I don't have a problem with, you know, you, certain people liking this movie and me not liking the movie. The reason why it got, blew up and it blew up to this level is because the fans have been saying, like, hey, The Last Jedi sucked. And Disney wanted to double down and said, no, it doesn't suck. You suck. You're the problem. We want fans that like The Last Jedi. And I, I've talked to some of these people, and it, I, I don't understand, because here's the thing. If you, actually, if you actually like The Last Jedi, here's what I'm going to propose to you. You are either A, not a huge Star Wars fan to begin with, so you just kind of thought it was a cool movie. That's fine. <laughs> or, or you are fucking lying. You're being disingenuous to promote, to promote some kind of... Uh, you know, basically, fucks like people who hate Star Wars love the Last Jedi. You know what I mean? Yeah, I thought they it was a movie, man. They love the they love the 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 fanboy tears, as they call it. And it's like, why do you gotta come from such a place of like spite? You know? And <laughs> yeah, and like it's like just it, it's like if they just listen to the fans all along who are you know speaking with their wallets because the Last Jedi did not do as well as Force Awakens, and that should have been the huge. Um, a big eye opener, like, hey, we need to, because each every movie since the last since Force Awakens has just been going down and down. But Solo lost forty million dollars, like that's that insane. Was, that it was half decent. I enjoyed that flick. It was, it was, it was half decent. It was also half crap. But the thing oh, is, yeah. it was better than all the other. It was better than the original movies, I'd say, or not the, the, the Disney. Yeah, it was better than these episodes. But yeah, the problem is like. You don't realize like how fickle the fan base is. If you fuck us over with the Last Jedi, like we're not going to come to the solo movie, and yeah. that's what happened. And then they tried to you know, they roped us in with Episode Nine by saying this is the final one. You have to see it. And the fact that they call it the end of the Skywalker saga is so dumb because it's like you have made it the Palpatine saga. It's not the Skywalker saga. It's the Palpatine saga. The whole, whole all nine movies are all about Palpatine and how Palpatine won. All the Skywalkers died, and his heir basically. Uh, took the credit and and reigns now and, and stole their identity, stole their name, stole their fucking stole Luke's home world, stole his Aunt Beru's home, stole he she even stole the binary sunset. That's hers now. That was like, fucked it's, up. It's like, do you not understand? Like, uh, <laughs> there are ways to do it, and this is the wrong way to do it. Like the wrong way like, to just. To just shit into people's mouths and call it a good time. It's, it's, cool. it's <laughs> fucking Sounds like a good time to me. Yeah, I mean it's you, know mouths, dude? you ever done it? Have uh, I ever eaten human feces? No. No. <laughs> Nor animal feces. And so Can we get out the fecal pickle while we're at it? Oh so yeah. Are you saying this is the uh, the closest to the uh, human centipede Disney will get? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you it could get worse. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so there's like, here's the thing. I don't, I, I gotta say, these movies are people are the producers, the, the executive board members, the people that make the ultimate decisions. They are realizing that, yeah, this go woke, go broke thing is real. Like, and these movies, fucking Star Wars, if Star Wars doesn't prove it, then nothing will. But like, these people are starting to get it because The Mandalorian did really well, people like it. These new ones, people don't like it. These people that that you know run the show, that run Disney, they're not stupid. They understand what people are saying on Twitter. And the problem is Kathleen Kennedy, with her you know forces female agenda, she really did divide and conquer the entire um, franchise by trying to make the force, trying to make Star Wars like a chick thing. And it's like. Like I said, with horror movies, like just make a good Star Wars movie, and naturally, people of all walks of life will show up. You know, That's how you prove it right. If you make a good movie, people of all walks of life will like it. 
Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're into horror movies or not. If the horror movie's getting really good reviews and everyone's seeing it and they're all talking about how great it is at the work office by the water cooler, hey, you know who I saw that was really good? The Matrix. That's Everyone went and saw The Matrix because word of mouth is powerful. And just like when the fucking hardcore Star Wars fans are talking about how they hate the new Star Wars movies, that sends fucking ripples out. People talk about, oh, I heard it sucks. Do you know what movie I did like that was a one-off? Oh, that was pretty decent was Rogue One. I, yeah, Rogue I, One. I, like, Rogue all... One is the end battle gets pretty fucking boring towards the end. It goes on forever, and you know everyone's going to die. And it's also like, is this a story that needs to be told? Like, we understand the, um, again, just like milking off the originals. Like, we know that the plans are stolen. We could make a whole movie off of it. But the idea, I, what Rogue One did do right is they got the, the look right. They got, yeah. And that's kind of what The Mandalorian did, too. Like, I thought it was better. Rogue One just was like a remake of Return of the Jedi, practically. Like, but they have a a land Death Star. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's like it's no, not- it was, what was the fucking point of the movie? But it was a concentrated storyline. It wasn't like a war movie all yeah. over the place. You know, like the problem. <laughs> with, the problem with Rogue One is you can tell there are lots of because um, reshoots and uh, re edits and you know again with this film. This committee, this board committee, like getting involved in making a movie, you can tell that there were lots of scenes that were either cut or altered because there are a lot of like weird plot holes and kinds of inconsistencies, but nothing to the level of Rise of Skywalker. Um, but yeah, like I remember like Rogue One, there's so many shots that were in these trailers that were not in the actual movie. And there's so many um, plot points that seemed like they kind of come out of nowhere and they're quickly resolved. Um, but yeah, I'd have to say if I had to rate all the Star Wars stuff. One but. thing on Rogue One. So what I thought was extremely badass was like the last like twenty seconds of the movie. You know, with the yeah, plane dies up. and it ends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the well, whole was, movie was that. It's true. What was funny though was like you know this is Disney Star Wars, so you're in an audience full of children, and like everyone's <laughs> dying, and it's like mommy. <laughs> What are we watching? Well, Darth Vader just like shows up and just like, well, I'm gonna kill all y'all any yeah, day. I thought that scene was a little fan servicey, but I mean, a lot of people loved it. I kind of uh, think about it. It's cool to see Darth Vader kind of bust ass and kick people and kill a bunch of people, but uh, I could have taken it or leaving it kind of thing. I could have, you know, it's one of those things. It made the whole movie for me, but that's just me. Which yeah. one? Darth uh, Vader scene in Rogue One. Oh yeah, yeah. Darth Vader shows up, kills the shit out of all those people. Yeah, yeah. Like, they take yeah. the Death Star plans, and it literally starts as the fucking spaceship is ejecting, and then that's when a new hope starts. Oh right, yeah, and he comes in and just starts. Yeah, we pick up right yeah. where we left off, kind of thing. I mean, that's. Uh, you know, I would have to say I rate the. Uh, I'd probably say Mandalorian first with Disney Star Wars, and then Force Awakens, followed by Solo, followed by Rogue One. Followed by Rise of Skywalker, followed by Last Jedi. That's how I'd have to rate the Disney Star Wars stuff. But as far as, you know, Rogue One, I mean, there were like everyone liked that robot. Like when the robot got killed, that people were sad. When everyone else died, not so much. <laughs> but, but yeah, Jin Urso, that's her name. Again, it's like we want a bland character that's female that just kind of runs the show. And, uh, I mean, she's not as bad as Ray, but she's definitely, like, not memorable. But neither is, neither, really no one is except for that robot. That robot was cool. And also the, you know, the blind, the blind swordsman. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that guy is tight. I like that guy. Yeah. Is, it, yeah. is it me or is the dude from Rogue One look a lot like the dude in the new series? That's, like, the black hair guy. He's the... Uh, I forget his name in the uh, newer series. It's the not Finn. No, it's not Finn, but the other dude, handsome guy. Oh, huh? He looks like Poe. Yeah, don't they look a lot alike to y'all, or was that just me? Um, Poe and who else? The guy from Rogue One. Oh, the yeah, yeah, a little bit. I would say I, thought- I would say the guy from Rogue One looks more like the dude who played the Mandalorian. Like they look like related almost. Like yeah, like one me out. brother or something. Not the same dude or something, but I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, God, yeah. And the thing is, the Mandalorian was just really good, and it's like we, you know, we're not all just 
There's something to be said about, you know, who you have writing the project, whether that's whoever's directing it or, you know, and then also the fact that from the get go, you're passing off the story from George Lucas, who wrote the fucking thing off to people who frankly weren't smart enough to write the originals in the first place. So like, no matter what, it's going to take a few notches down from what it was, you know? Yeah, and it's like you wonder what Luke, what George Lucas is thinking right now because the idea is he handed them a Rich. blueprint. <laughs> he handed them a blueprint for what to do, and they literally told him, "Go fuck yourself. We're doing our own thing." And like yeah. to see it crash and burn like this, like he's got to feel terrible, you know? Yeah. I, why did he just did he just sell it just because he wanted to make some bank on the way out? And- yeah, and it's also like, you know, he's not going to do anything more with it, so just, you know, yeah. sell it. And yeah, sell it for $4 billion. Yeah, <laughs> why not? But yeah, then that's, to that's watch, cool. you know, it seemed like an easy investment. Like, if, if Disney really wanted, all the, I mean, you could just print your own money. Just make these movies well, and you yeah. would make so much money. That's got to be the biggest uh, franchise purchase of all time, right? Yeah, it's up there. Uh, yeah, maybe. Fox Nat Geo was. What's that? Yeah. Was that? Fucking insane. That's okay. buying like an entire program. You know, that's buying an entire studio, basically. Yeah. As far as like a single intellectual property, I'd say yeah, maybe Star Wars is probably the biggest purchase. But it's just so funny because you would think like, yeah, we're gonna buy Star Wars. The acquisition was fifty-two billion. For how much? Fifty-two billion. <laughs> yeah, dude, I saw some like picture floating around on the internet that was like all the um, smaller companies that are within Disney that like Disney owns, and it was just like there was Everything. hundreds of them, like from the theme parks, yeah. different movies to like TV channel to like it was preposterous. There was literally like at least 150 of them. I, was, like, I can't wait till Disney just gets their own like country, gets their yeah. own. <laughs> Uh, wages war on the rest of the world. Private <laughs> island in the uh, in the British Virgin Islands, huh? Yeah, yeah. Disney would become the new Galactic Empire, basically, and take over take over the world. <laughs> I saw a meme about that actually. Yeah, yeah, I saw that too. Like the world World War Disney. Yeah, like 2065. Disney is taking over the world. Uh, Disney versus uh, Pepsi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, another question is like, why did the Sith need a wayfinder to get to this Exegol planet? Don't you think like the Force might be able to like guide them, or just like modern like technology? Yeah, like, what is, yeah, this wayfinder thing they plug it they shoot, like red <laughs> and like plugs it into something. You're saying why did the Sith needed to find it? Yeah, yeah. nobody yeah. find that planet. You know, well, like, if you're a Sith. Wouldn't you fucking know where it's at? Yeah, can't the force just like guide you where to go? That would make it way harder to find the planet. Is that not part of the guidebook for Sith lordship? Is to learn where your home base is. Yeah, also, like the, oh my god, we didn't even talk about the fact that how the knife shows you where the wayfinder is. She she, oh, she puts it up against the fucking the little thing out. <laughs> that preposterous. Okay, so check it out. You not only do you. Not only has this wreckage been sitting there for years in the ocean, like it's gonna, like, how do you know it's not gonna move or degrade? It's been there for like 10, 20 years. You have to be standing not only at that correct distance, but at the correct angle. You have to be standing at that exact spot for that to work. I take it back. That's the most preposterous part of the movie. There's so many parts like that. There's so many parts like that. And then the idea is like, oh, well, we can't take the skimmer to the Death Star yet because. Conveniently, the Millennium Falcon is broken right now. So we hey, this just hit four hours, nine seconds ago. Sorry. Huh? Wait, 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 wait. Look at this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of the records. I've seen that before. <laughs> yeah. And it's just funny because she says, uh, what does she say? Like they say, yeah, we can't take the skimmers across to the thing because the, the sea's too hot, the sea's too choppy right now. And Ray, a person who grew up in the fucking desert, it's a miracle that she even knows how to swim, let alone pilot this skimmer. She doesn't listen to them, and she takes the skimmer across to the fucking Death Star anyway. She finds, you know, she drives it safe, just to, just safe and sound. And then those people follow her, also get there safely. 
And it just kind of makes no sense because, like, how the fuck would she know how to think, get that thing going? And then on top of that, when she gets there, she starts, like, climbing and spelunking, you know, like getting up to the Death Star to find the Wayfinder, when, in fact, we've already established that she can levitate. So why doesn't she just, like, float herself up there? Uh, then she then she encounters evil Ray. That part was so bad. Ray has the Bilbo Bilbo thing. Luke having to find his evil self at one point, you know. Well, that was the part. Oh, Andrew's back. Uh, that part was actually cool because you know the idea is you know, you're gonna go face your fears. What's up, What's up, Andrew? You made it back. How was dinner? Uh, I was good. Cool. What'd you eat? Uh, I had a Reuben sandwich and a Cali cream and ale. That oh, sounds good. It was actually good. It was surprisingly good. Where, where from, dog? Hmm? Where from? Uh, the sandwich and the beer was from a place called Naughty Barrel. K N O T T Y. Um, it's a it's like a brewery slash restaurant in downtown San Diego, and then they recently opened a satellite restaurant and brewery uh, next to my mom's house. So she was like, "Oh, this is easy." Want to get dinner? And I was like, sure. She's like, uh, let's go there. I was like, okay. I'm cool. Let's, let's do it. I don't think we're, we're but uh, it's nice to meet you over this mutual hatred of this movie. Yeah. For my, sure. or, or in my case, indifference. Well, yeah. yeah. That's kind of where I'm at too. But. That's honestly worse, honestly. Like to actually hate a movie or to think a movie's really bad, those movies yeah. are at least memorable. The worst is when a movie's just kind of like meh. And you just kind of forget about it. Honestly, I thought the movie before it was probably worse, but for different reasons. Yeah. Um, I, honestly, like, there are so many things I'm like, why did you have to do this? Um, but I felt that way during this movie, too, so it's whatever. You would think during certain parts there would be, like, when they're reading the script to a group of people for the first time, or, like, you know, all of a sudden, Luke forced teleport over here or whatever that people be like are you kidding me man this is nonsense like or that leia can survive in space or whatever and fly back to the shit and think somewhere <laughs> somebody would read that to somebody else and go nah dude that's nonsense like, we can't do that you know well that person is no longer involved yeah right <laughs> true true yeah because if george lucas says it's stupid then they're like fuck right because yeah. then they're like george lucas said it was stupid we still did it you do better. Yeah. Um, but supposedly they're bringing him. He's involved in the uh, TV show. What's so, uh, the Mandalorian. Oh, he is. Yeah, he's wow. not. He's not like directing, but they like literally are having him on set, like as like a stylistic and like narrative wise influence. Well, there you go. That's why it's way better. <clears throat> well, it's also way better because um, John Favreau was overseeing all of them. So every episode has a different director, but um, the uh, overarching director of the entire series is still Favreau. So he has veto power over any directing decisions. And his like, you know, his right hand man or his, you know, I wouldn't even say right hand man, but his, you know, muse is George Lucas. So I think they're doing it right. And I honestly, I think they're going to give, um, Whatever they end up doing with Star Wars after these movies, they're gonna give it to uh, Favreau to keep in, you know, because he he did a really good job with a lot of the uh, Avengers movies and the fucking Iron Man movies. Yeah. yeah, that's what you need is people that will say no. That's a bad idea. That's, yeah. that's specifically why. I was saying that's specifically why, like, you had certain directors like keep getting replaced like midway through movies, like with Solo, the, the Lloyd, mm -hmm. the Lord and Miller who did the Lego movies, they got fired mysteriously. Colin Trevorrow, who was going to make Episode Nine originally, he got fired uh, mysteriously. And the thing is, like, why would you give people like Garth Edwards or you know Ryan Johnson these huge franchises? And the reason is, I think it's because they'll do what fucking Kathleen Kennedy says, like Steven Spielberg. Or Oliver Stone or Francis Ford Coppola, they have the balls to tell these yeah. people. Fuck you, I'm well, here's it. the thing: it's not even the balls. I think those directors also had the balls. The difference yeah. is they didn't have the, the capital to go fuck you, fuck this, and yeah. you can't fucking touch me. Or but, the clout. Well, that's essentially what I mean. The the, yeah. the political capital, right? 
because they got shit canned because they probably opposed whatever was happening. And uh, you can tell, like, um, you can't tell Favreau what to do. It's Favreau. Yeah, I, don't think, I don't think anyone was excited to see The Last Jedi because it was made by JJ or uh, Ryan Johnson. That's the thing. It's like if, if Oliver Stone was making the next Star Wars movie, that would be that would probably get butts in seats. It would also be really weird. Let's be real. No, yeah, I know. But the idea is <laughs> the idea is like they have some nobody. This thing Gareth Edwards is interesting because he made Monsters, his first movie ever. He's really good. Mm -hmm. And he then they gave him Godzilla. And the reason why they gave him Godzilla is not only did he have expertise in like computer effects and making giant monster movies, but also it's like you're such a newbie, like you're gonna listen to Warner Brothers and twenty and legendary films when they tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. And same thing. Uh, with honestly, I think Rogue One is still one of the best Star Wars movies. Yeah, period. the last twenty seconds of it was the best. Said, my problem was with, like the last scene, the big battle. It kind of goes on too long. It starts to get boring, and especially since you know, kind of everyone's gonna die anyway. But. Yeah, definitely got the tone right, got the vibe right. I did like how, you know, less is more. Like, they didn't do too much with the Force. They didn't overuse it. They didn't overuse, um, uh, you know, any of this, you know, stuff that's member berries kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> well, also, just the standards are so low. You can have, like, seven shitty movies and then one good one, you know, basically, or six shitty ones, you know? Well, it's kind of like what Richard Grober was saying earlier. He said something about, um, you know, he liked the movie because his kids liked it. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. But, you know, you're, uh, the, the, the thing is, like, liking, to just say, like, oh, well, you know, it, it keeps the kids happy. That's how a lot of people just feel. Like, I took the kids to the movie. We all saw it. They liked it. We had a good time. And that's it. Like, and that's what the average, you know, dad's probably going to think about. A lot of movies. Right. But what makes the original Star Wars? I think with the original Star Wars, like episode A New Hope, dads were getting their minds blown with that movie too. You know what I mean? Like they were that movie was blowing everyone's mind. You didn't have to be a little kid to like the first Star Wars movie. Just like the first Matrix movie. Everyone liked that first Matrix movie. I knew the Matrix was a big deal when my dad specifically said he liked it. When he my dad watched the movie and he looked at me, he was like, That was pretty cool. That's how I knew that movie was fucking the shit. When my dad was just like, kind of looked at me, he was like, that was actually pretty cool. I like that. Well, one. you know, um, I recently saw um, The Matrix in uh, Dolby Cinema because they uh -huh. did like a 20th anniversary remaster thing last year. And honestly, it really holds up. Like, it still holds up today. Some yeah. of the VFX don't hold up, but some of them do. And you're like, wow. This is a lot of me roll VFX and it still looks good. Well, they didn't blow their load like they did with um, Reloaded, where they do the Toy Story animation fight with Neo and all the Smiths. Yeah. Like in some things, it looks in some, yeah. in some shots it looks good, but then when they start going 100% CGI, it's like someone should have been there. Like, no, we got to bring well, it down. Honestly, to back then it probably looked amazing. No, I remember even back then thinking like, Ooh. <laughs> like. It's just pretty obvious, like Uncanny Valley going on there. But like the original one, yeah, I mean, groundbreaking special effects going on in that movie, just like in the uh, Star Wars movies. But the thing about the first Star Wars and what makes it so good is like art through adversity. Like they didn't have a billion, a hundred, two hundred million dollar budget. They didn't have crazy CGI. They had to think of like ways to make this work, you know? Limited resources always bring out more creativity. Dude, that's why uh, Terminator was so good. I talk about this, like where JJ uh, uh, James Cameron's actually very smart because he wanted to make a movie about killer robots in the future where human beings are reduced to like living like rats, constantly being hunted for extermination by giant killer robots. And the idea is it's like, okay, well, that's going to be hella expensive to make. So how about the movie only takes place 10 minutes there and then they go back in time to present day? And it's like, okay. So then we got this killer robot running around present day, but it's like, oh, it's going to be expensive to make a killer robot. How about the robot looks like a human? He's got a human skin. So all this stuff to like save money just ends up making it cooler, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. that's that's the honest truth. It's like the limitation of resources forces people to be more creative with the resources they have at hand. You're right. In Terminator 2, it's like James Cameron. That's the first movie that cost $100 million to make. Yeah, and, and then you watch Avatar and you're like, what the fuck am I watching? 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, James Cameron uh, has set the record. So first, first hundred million dollar movie was Ter Terminator Two. First two hundred million dollar movie was Titanic, and then the first three hundred million dollar movie was Avatar. And each of those movies, like you understand, where each of those, every penny of that budget went. Then you find oh, out yeah. Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill with Adam Sandler cost hundred and fifty million dollars to make. You're like, where did that money go? Where well, did that Adam Sandler paid himself as an actor. Yeah, exactly. Paid himself as a producer. And paid himself as a director. <laughs> they paid, they That's paid probably all 50 his, million right there. And they paid all of his SNL buddies like huge exorbitant amounts just to make like 10 minute appearances. And yeah, it's like it's not it, hard it, to waste the budget in Hollywood. In Titanic, like that movie ballooned to two hundred dollars, two hundred million dollars because of like reshoots and all these problems, and then also the fact that James Cameron had this insane like painstaking attention to detail. And also, like, but they still were did well, though. They all, th all three did, for lack. Oh of yeah. Narrative. Record-breaking movies. Yeah. And Terminator Two is a great example because it's like, okay, well, we have a bigger budget now from the first Terminator movie. Now we can do crazy shit. And it's like he already knew what would work because he had done The Abyss, and he made that kind. He had Industrial Light and Magic had already done that kind of liquid effect. So mm -hmm. it's like we're just going to do that same effect except make it look like metal, and it'll look just as good. And it does. Yo, guys, I'm out of this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Did you say you're out of this motherfucker? Yeah. yeah. All right, Max. Well, right, thanks later. for around for four hours. That was cool. <laughs> Dude, yeah, we've been going for like four hours and 12 minutes. Who's this guy in the chat over here? Uh, Angel, I believe you're... This is... Uh, we got Britt... Open it in. Who's, Who's Yusuf? Right. That's what I'm asking. Oh, Yusuf? Yeah. Ladies in the background. In. Oh. Well, I guess we got a little chat in here. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, we got a rando? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Polich's, Polich's been staying here. Uh, oh, somebody messaged me directly. Oh. What did they say? Bro, this is sick. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. I see that. Okay, yeah. Who's Yusuf? Is that your friend? I have no clue. Yeah, I don't know either. It's not live chat. It was private chat. Zach, what are you doing? What are you doing? Give me a recap. Oh, give you a recap. Yeah, let's just talk. Let's start over. No, <laughs> you, can watch, you can watch the recording. Yeah, we were, we were talking about, uh, before Angel got in here, about the part where Ray squares off with Evil Ray in Rise of Skywalker, and then yeah, Evil Ray with Bilbo Baggins, like, pointy teeth face, CGI yeah, pointy right. teeth face. That was rough, man. There was a this few things. That, they never about. explained that, too. Yeah, well, it's like someone was saying uh, uh, they're trying to go with that, you know, Luke facing off with himself in the uh, Empire, but it's like, no, it's like you're facing your fear or whatever, and then it turns out that you are the fear. I don't remember what, you know, but uh, what they were doing with Ray, first of all, Ray's uh, unwieldy double lightsaber that like flips open. Oh, yeah, that was tight. There's a part where like Ray's got her lightsaber and she's got the double lightsaber and they're like at a cross like this. It's like, why don't you just slide right down and cut her lightsaber right in half? I don't understand. It's so, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of, the combat is a big problem with the new ones. What did you think about the, uh, what did hers end up being yellow or something in the end? Yeah, I don't mind that. I wish she had just had the yellow lightsaber the whole movie because that would have been cool because she's got her own lightsaber. She's not using fucking Luke's and Luke and Obi Wan's lightsaber. Luke and Leia's lightsaber all the time now. Like, I bet. Are they still in yellow lightsabers? Well, from what I heard, is the yellow lightsaber represents the Jedi, um, not the Jedi, the Jedi, um, not the Council, but the people who. Like the Jedi instructors, basically, or Jedi teachers, or something. I think is what yellow lightsabers are for. I can I can look it up. But yeah, I mean, the idea is because she has the sacred Jedi text, she is now the new, uh, you know, Queen Bee Jedi. Damn. She's the new Yoda. Um, let's see here. Yellow lightsaber. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I'm just reading. Still, let me see if I can find it. Just uh, reading. What about the uh, 
Was that the first time you see Leia's lightsaber or even know that it exists? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're just told, like, the idea that she is force sensitive is fine, but the idea that she trained as a Jedi and has her own lightsaber, it's like you can't just kind of retcon that, you know? You got to kind of explain that a little more. But it's just so funny because, like, uh, so I was reading, like, the yellow lightsabers are for the Jedi Temple, Temple Guard. So, which I guess technically Ray is, since she has the, um, but I guess in this movie, she just probably made the lightsaber yellow because it looks cool, I guess. I mean, I just really hate how every Sith has to have a red lightsaber. Like, can we see a good guy with a red lightsaber for once, or or a bad guy with a different colored lightsaber? Yeah. Samuel L. Jackson was the only guy to have a purple one. That was, I heard that was part of his deal, like. Somebody somebody told me that it said bad MF on it too, but they never show it. But like in reality, it said that. Uh, Sam Jackson, dude, he was horribly uh, miscast in that movie and those movies because like it should have been like a Morgan Freeman or a Sidney Poitier type character playing Mace Windu. Yeah, it didn't didn't feel normal for him to like, he was never like the character you expect him to be. Yeah. It was like Mr. Plinkett. Mr. Plinkett said, like, you know, Samuel L. Jackson excels as a loud, scary, intense fucking dude. Right, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> screaming and getting in your fucking face. That's, yeah, I mean, he's fucking scary. He gets in your shit, and it's, it's intense. But when uh, when you have, you know, when you have him just being very reserved and calm, it seems like a trick. Like, we're going to get the young, we're going to get young hit kids into it because Sam Jackson's in it, you know? And then everyone goes to see it and find out that Sam Jackson's like one of the most boring characters in the entire fucking franchise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wasn't that cool. I mean, it's like he's supposed to be so powerful. Like, I mean, that's the thing about the Jedi Council and the prequels. It's, it's like, they're uh, they're, yeah, they're just a bunch of fucking whiny old men sitting around bickering. Which I guess is what like the point George Lucas was trying to tell. Like, the story is like through crippling bureaucracy. This is how the emperor came to power, you know. Everyone's like just meddling through. Um, yeah, they were really, they were really driving that point in episode two. Dude, it's so boring. I mean, it's funny how like much of a spectacle. I, they are. I was trying to rewatch it and I like, couldn't make it through it. I got to yeah. attack the clones. And it's funny because they're such a visual spectacle, and yet they're so boring at the same time. It's, un- it's unbelievable. Uh, the new ones are not boring. I will say yeah, that much. Cool. The new ones are. You know, like I said, the fucking newest one is like so action packed. This is why average person, you walk out of the movie thinking like that was good, and by the time you get home, you're like, wait a minute, like how, how did this happen, and why would that, and you know, it, it starts to hurt your brain if you think about it too much. Which I, I have. Guess, I, think, I think the whole yeah, point of those movies is not to think too much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't do what I've been doing, which is like dwelling on this for months <laughs> and just like you know, constantly thinking about it. And yeah, it just, it's not a good way to live your life. <laughs> I do that daily in my current job. So like, I just yeah. don't do that when it comes to the, the mainstream movies. That yeah. said, I did really enjoy watching uh, Uncut Gems. Dude, I saw Uncut Gems. The Lighthouse was excellent. I just saw Color Out of Space. That was fucking badass. Oh, was that crazy? It was good. I also was watched crazy? the Mandy. Huh? I saw Mandy. I love Is Mandy. It more or less crazy than Mandy? The way uh, it's it's probably less crazy than Mandy, but <laughs> probably a better movie. Mandy but is I, so fucking insane, dude. I also watched this one called The Wave, where Justin Long takes like some kind of time distorting drug that makes him like experience like the past and future and present like all in different times. It's super weird. Like Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I do watch movies I like. It's like this is this idea that I'm just this curmudgeon. Did you have you watched the full the the um the season the first season or only season of uh, Watchmen? No, Watchmen is interesting because I heard at first it sucked and it then the starts people that real sucked, rough. Oh, dude, good. that was the best. And it starts it's rough and it kind of just moves uphill, and it's quite good. It finishes yeah. strong. Okay, well, I'm currently just, I just currently finished the first season of Fargo, so I think I'm gonna check out two and three of that, and then probably watch Watchmen at some point. But we got Leela up in here, Leela. She ain't barking at me though. I love how chill she is, just staring at us on the screen. 
Yeah, <laughs> Layla, why aren't you barking at us? Like you always do. <laughs> Let's see. How easy is it to share the screen? Like I just click this button and uh, share a screen? Let's see here. Is that is that a Kaboo poster? Yeah. Are you been to Kaboo? Played it three times. Oh shit! You played? Yes, sir. Oh, These guys are like big what? band people. Yeah, our guitar player and uh, Zach and Britt's roommate worked for them for like four or five years. So we played two of the San Diego ones and then the one in Dallas. Oh, I didn't know there were other ones. Yeah, they have one. Well, they struggled, I guess, so to speak. And I don't know if they're having them anymore, but uh, they have one in the Jamaicas or the Bahamas and then uh, the one in Dallas at this stadium. Ooh. Yeah, because I've only seen the ones in San Diego because I live here. Yeah, but, it's uh, a pretty good time. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah, I just kind of stayed away from it just because, like, I don't know, some of the lineups, I was kind of like, it's very uh, nostalgic acts, you know. What I mean? Yeah, like, I'm just not. Honestly, like, I'm not that nostalgic yeah. about music yeah. unless I'm listening to like it's like artists that I've never seen in my life. Uh -huh. Then I'm like, okay, I'll go see him. Like, I'm so glad I got to see Rush like years ago. Oh yeah, because uh, I would have been kicking myself now if I hadn't. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the music I like would be like. You know, I don't need to see it live. You know, I listen to a lot of mellow stuff. And also, like, seeing a band, like, in the flesh for the first time, it can be kind of um, disillusioning, like, to see what they actually oh, yeah. look shit. Oh, like, oh, they, some bands play, like, shit live. Oh, um, yeah. I went to see uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, like, 10 years ago. And they had the Mars Volta open for them. Oh, and yeah. the Mars Volta straight up sounded like cacophony i could not hear or discern one instrument from another or even what song they were playing the music's kind of like that it's very like blended to like it just doesn't lend very well to a live performance <laughs> yeah i know I, I remember we used to hate a lot of the el paso people used to hate mars volta because they would go around talking about how they're a band from california and it's like what the fuck are you all from el paso and to deny your heritage like that is upsetting <laughs> but, uh, local boys but yeah, Mars Volta, like is that cool great album? California, dude. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I remember like Sparta and at the drive in and then Mars Volta. It's all like their album. It's one of those things where it's like sounds better in the recording studio. Oh Anybody, yeah. Music I like. You know who right? was surprisingly good live was Ludacris. Dude, dude. Played at Kaboo last summer in Dallas and Ludacris was on the same stage as us. Uh, the day before, and it was like one of the most rowdy shows of the week. Dude, he's he knows how to do a concert for sure, and he has enough hits to where it's like not slow at any point. Yeah, yeah, he's got enough. He's he's racked up enough hits over the last twenty years. Yeah, why well, you forget? I mean, yeah. there are like. <coughs> I I had a I was on a, a ludicrous kick like late high school, early college. It was the Red Light District album back when there were still CDs. And uh, I like memorized the whole album, and then like a few months later, I went to uh, UCSB, and he played a free concert. I was like, "Fuck yeah!" And it was yeah. dope. It was real dope. Right. Nice. Well, what yeah. you gonna what? in in this thing? Yeah, four and a half hours later. I mean, should we? I mean, we still got. I still got more to talk about about this movie. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I should probably end it. I gotta go to work tomorrow. Oh yeah, you can. Yeah, man. I mean, I'll probably uh, keep going for a little bit longer. But yeah, I mean, it's good having you. Thanks for being here, like pretty much this whole time. Yeah, man. I too. Be more. Be more. We have right. to learn to work the bean screen. All of us work the bean screen. <laughs> yeah. like that. I'm I'm awesome. Awesome. I'll see y'all soon. Have a good night, guys. All right, man. Later, later, dude. Now it's just now it's just back to you giving the people what they want, Enzo. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I'll probably just like wrap it up a little bit, but yeah, if anyone else wants to join in, I mean, come on, dude, let's. It's, I mean, <laughs> let's all right, later, buddy. All right, later. Uh, as far as where were we? We were talking about how uh, Ray goes and fights her um, evil doppelganger, and then she's got the evil Bilbo Baggins teeth, and then that's when we get into the horrible part where um, Ray and Kylo fight. 
a lot of telegraphing in that scene. And then, yeah, Kylo gets killed and then brought back to life by Ray because apparently he knew that Ray, that Leia died. And she uses that time to uh, kill uh, Kylo. And then when she figures out that Leia died, she realizes that that was a no-no. So she brings him back to life. Uh, then she steals his ship and flies off when Kylo has that weird, strange meeting with uh, Han Solo. Han Solo forgives him, but it's all in her his head, so it means nothing. Like, Han Solo is dead, so you're basically just forgiving... Kylo Ren is basically just forgiving himself for killing his own father. Uh, let's see, where else can we go with this? The Force healing... <laughs> Oh, man. Leia, basically, it turns out, I guess in a deleted scene, they were going to talk about how Leia is the one projecting Han Solo onto Kylo Ren to convince him to not be evil. And that, in turn, kills her because she overdoses on the Force, which is unfortunate because, you know, as someone with a drug addiction, like, I don't know if Kylo, if you want Leia to overdose, it's kind of, it's kind of you know, mean. Uh, yeah. Luke Skywalker physically grabs the lightsaber, says that you should never disrespect a weapon like this. You know, I can, he levitates his own X-Wing. This idea that the Force Ghosts have physical physical impact on the world is, is, is uh, strange. Uh, in the previous movies, we didn't know if the Force Ghosts were hallucinations, if it was like only Luke can see them, or are they actually there? Um, it, it, it's just, it, it was better left kind of mysterious i think but it's fine but then you break the question if 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 force ghosts can do all this stuff be extra powerful then what's the point of being alive in the first point if you can just be a dead force ghost also why don't these force ghosts come and help leia or ray why don't they do anything (laughs) i don't know it's just there's there's let's just get through these last little points here and we'll wrap this up but it's like we got Leia driving off, and then uh, C-3PO gets his memory back. Uh, no one gives a shit. No one gave a shit when he erased his memory. No one gives a shit when he gets it back. It's very funny when c 3 po is like, I'm saying goodbye to my friends. And it's like, you don't even know these people. Uh, everyone that you do know is either dead or gone. Uh, you know, Chewie's not there. R2's not there. You know, Luke, Leia, Han, they're all dead. It's, it's rough. It's rough. Poor C-3PO. And unfortunately, he was the best part of that whole movie. Him and Babu Frick. My oldest friend, he says. So, yeah. Uh, all these small ships show up to Exegol, and this is when it becomes a big dub laser fight. And, again, it's so stupid. Like, they need a, um, a beacon to know which way up is. Those ships don't know which way up is from down, they say. They don't know up from down. They need a beacon. It's like, okay, well, up is the opposite of the ground. When you look down and you see the ground, like, you go the opposite direction. Okay? Uh, They spend the whole movie in the atmosphere floating. uh, All those battle star, all those uh, death star, star destroyers. They all just spend the time, the entire movie floating. Just so they can all get destroyed eventually. And I think it's funny that Hux... He's supposed to be this awesome like foil to Kylo Ren. And then in Last Jedi, they fucking ruin him by turning him into a bumbling idiot. And in this new one, J.J. Uh, Abrams basically turns him into a traitor and kills him and just replaces him with a carbon copy of his old character played by Richard Grant, who shows up. And he's very dashing. He's, he's great. He's ruthless. And this is kind of what Kylo Huxus was supposed to be. But he's like the new uh, First Order officer, and he's an idiot. The idea that these horses are all running on the on the side of your ship and you don't know what to do. They're going to blow up your transmitter and ruin your whole plan. So again, it's like, you know, just do this. Just literally just tilt. And they'll all fall to their death. Uh, it, it, it's silly. Uh, and then, of course, everyone's so outnumbered. It becomes so strange how they, they survive at all. And then, of course... Uh, you know, they got no shields either, so you got to make it easy. You got to make it easy so the stakes aren't raised too high, I guess. So they blow up the ship tower with grenades, and rather than reset the tower on the ground, they somehow reset the tower that's been shot with grenades, blown up with grenades. That doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, you know, again, like we talked about this before, Palpatine is originally trying to kill Ray, I think, but then why 
he figures out that some kind of dyad system with Kylo and Ray together rejuvenates him, and it's ultimate force power. So now he's going to use them to if if the whole point was to get Ray to kill you so you could become so powerful and possess her body, then why do you send Kylo Ren to try to kill her for two movies? It just it just doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. We're almost done. We're almost done. My God, I'm just gonna burn through these last couple points here. Uh. Kylo shows up with no weapon, no gear. He gets a new shiny blue lightsaber sent to him from behind the uh, back. And this is where we deal with the, the Knights of Ren. The Knights of Ren, we haven't even talked about them. They're fucking useless. Uh, they literally just spend the whole movie just walking around in group formations. And that's it. And they have these stupid weapons. Why do they have blunt weapons like clubs and, and sticks? You would think they would have like cool like Jedi Sith weapons. Maybe some lightsabers or some kind of force weapons. I don't know. Anyway, Kylo Ren shows up with a blaster and the force and a lightsaber. So naturally, the Knights of Ren don't stand a chance. Uh, they get their asses beat. And then uh, Kylo Ren shows up to help Rey. This is where Kylo and Ren should have just joined together and beaten the Emperor together. But instead, the Emperor just kind of throws Kylo Ren down a hole and you know, knocks out Ray. And that's when the big Deus Ex Machina shows up of all the all the Jedi show up and give her a big Rocky get up Rocky speech. You know, and she does, and that's when uh the force lightning thing happens where Emperor Palpatine starts shocking with the uh, lightning saying, I'm all the Sith and uh Ray deflecting it with her two lightsabers says, I'm all the Jedi. And both of those lines make no sense at all. And then, you know, she starts reflecting the lightning into, into the Emperor's face. This is the same lightning that disabled hundreds of ships just a second ago. This is the same lightning that blew up uh, Chewbacca, allegedly, fake out Chewbacca. <laughs> uh, he, she blasts that lightning into his face, and it, it starts destroying him. It starts frying him. So why doesn't he just, like, stop? Why doesn't he just turn the lightning off right then and there? Like, ow, that hurts. Okay. New thing. Instead, he just keeps going with the lightning until it literally like liquefies his whole body. And like I said before, it's like, what's to stop him from coming back again? You know. And then yeah, then we've got all the ships start falling down, and uh, we've got the kiss of life from Ray Kylo to Ray. Kylo kisses her and brings her back to life, and then he dies suddenly. And, you know, I thought it would have been funny if Ray kissed him and then she died and he brought back and then they just kept going back and forth over and over again. That would have been funny. Uh, then what else? We've got the big celebration at the end where, you know, we've got that lesbian kiss that is easily uh, deleted for uh, foreign markets. That was the best is like they talked about how like we finally have some LGBT representation and it's an easily deletable scene of like two old ladies like kissing in the celebration. And, of course, it seems deleted. And it's just not – you're not tricking anyone. You're not convincing anyone with your your, your lies. Ugh. And then, of course, we've got Chewie getting his fucking medal. That's just like the worst. That's just – it's uh, – you know, you're just getting so meta with it. it. It really hurts. It hurts my head. It hurts my heart. The idea that, Chewie, we think you earned this. And it's like, here's this medal that was sitting right next to Luke Skywalker's lightsaber that I had in my bar. Remember when I told you I would tell you how I got Luke Skywalker's star, uh, lightsaber? Well, I never did. That little alien, you know what I'm talking about, the little alien with the butthole eyes. She's got, like, anuses for eyeballs. Um, she was, you know, what is she in this movie? What is she in any of these movies? I don't know. But, yeah, then we get to the final insult when Ray shows up to Luke's fucking moisture farm and just takes his home, takes his takes his uh his Jedi training, takes his uh last name, literally buries his and Leia's lightsaber, puts the, the Skywalkers into the ground, and then takes the Skywalker mantle as her own, uh taking all of his accomplishments as her own, taking all of his um all of his uh uh, the things he did, they all don't matter because Ray was there. Ray did it. It wasn't Anakin. It wasn't Luke. It was Ray. 
And then, yeah, she, the fact that she has the balls to say that her last name is Skywalker. Like, how about saying your name's Palpatine, and now I'm going to, like, bring honor to this name. Like, I'm going to be a good Palpatine. Like, I think that would have been better, right? I don't know. I guess, I don't know. I've, I've only been talking about this for four and a half hours. I don't know. But anyway, huh, I think we're done. I think we're done for now. We could We could pick this up some other time. Talk about some other stuff next time. But this was fun. I enjoyed this. If anyone else wants to come in and talk about whatever, uh, we could. But I feel like that's not going to happen. So I'm probably just going to leave. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave. But I probably will do this again. So this way I can just socialize with people and have a few cocktails and, you know, not even leave my couch. So that was fun. Uh, Britt. Vince, Max, Zach, uh, uh, Anshul. Am I saying your name right? Thank you guys for coming in here, keeping me company on this lonely Martin Luther King Monday. Uh, that's what we'll get in here next time. We'll, we, we should do a group chat with people who liked the movie. So I want to talk to Dominic. I want to talk to Grogan. I want to talk to Richard Grover. Uh... I want to talk to anyone who, who liked this movie. Uh, I need, I have questions. I have so many questions. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, hopefully I convinced you that the movie's trash. And yeah, Disney fucking ruined Star Wars. Good job, Disney. Like I said, the Baby Yoda toys are going to come out in May or April. Then they're going to push Baby Yoda down our throat at way too much. The Baby Yoda toys aren't going to look as good as the actual Baby Yoda. Uh, and then they're going to come out with a new series, The Mandalorian, and it's just going to not be... The, 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 the movie, the damage has been done, you know? But yeah, I am hoping that the next season of Mandalorian is good. Uh, I'm sure it will be. It's just a shame that this is the best we have for Disney Star Wars. Ah. <sighs> I guess tune in next time. I don't know when that'll be, but I think we'll either uh, talk about a different movie franchise. I would like to talk about Star Wars Ship Troopers and and uh, Robocop, Paul Verhoeven movies. What else did he make? He made Showgirls, <laughs> Total Recall. Uh, we can talk about the terrible remakes of those movies as well, Robocop and, Sir, and, uh, and uh, Total Recall. Do you guys even remember that they were remade recently? Right. Anyway. Or, yeah, next time we can have some uh, pro Disney Star Wars people in here and get some get some actual arguments in here. Get an actual, like, internet Jerry Springer fight where we can just call each other names. I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. Well, that was fun. The dork side. Uh, we'll try to do this again. Maybe. I don't know if I should do this on Facebook, or if I should start streaming on YouTube. I don't know. Go ahead and leave me some comments and what you thought. If you disagree, if you agree, what you think about this actual live streaming thing, if you'd be interested to come in uh, for a future episode. If you just want to have some drinks. You know, we also don't need to broadcast this either. We can always just chat in this chat room privately and not have, you know, all of Facebook to see it. So that's also an option. But, yeah, all in all, thanks to everybody who joined. Thanks to everybody who was popping in and watching. I understand if you're not going to sit here for the whole four and a half hours. But if you got some time this week, you know, feel free to, you know, listen to this while you're doing the dishes or working or whatever. Let me know if it's entertaining or if it's just stupid. 